some respect. Are you challenging me? <laughs> A tough nut to crack. Now, shall we fight? My turn! All right, here we go. Trust my shield! Fire away! Gotta try harder, huh? <laughs> Trust my shield! Stop right there! It's not over yet! Go to hell! Ha! Ha! Alright, here we go! Ha Welcome to Update 26.2, where you'll discover the new Crafter Pass, a new Team Deathmatch map, Strength and Anti-Cheat measures, and more. Here's a closer look at what's in store. Dive into the fresh Crafter Pass, Black Market 2023. Tackle missions, obtain rewards, and get busy crafting in the workshop. Keep an eye out for the special craftable rewards in this pass. The return of four progressive weapon skins available throughout the past duration, along with their unique chromas. There is much more depth to the Black Market 2023, so stay tuned for a detailed announcement coming your way. Next up, experience the newly unveiled map for Team Deathmatch, the Pillar Campout. This arena serves up distant combat avenues tailored for diverse gunplay preferences. Favor long to medium range battles? The main building is the choice for you. For those keen on close quarter encounters, the side buildings is the place to be. Plus, the inclusion of cleverly designed flank routes ensures thrilling challenges for everyone. Elevating our commitment to fair play, we're enhancing anti-cheat measures for ranked matches on Steam. Those flagged as potential cheaters will now face an added ARS verification step, linked to the phone number associated with their account. Ensure your information is updated by visiting PUBG support should there be any changes to your contact information. Lastly, we have a new penalty system for those leaving Blue Bomb Rush mid-match, refinements to the general plane flight route UI, and more. Update 26.2 has more to offer, so don't forget to read the patch notes, and we'll see you on the battlegrounds. Unleash my shopping spree. Duty free from big brands. At all King Power stores. And King Power Online. It's possible. Enjoy great selections, promotions, and privileges. The power of possibilities. King Power. Autobots forces have set up their barrier. They are waiting for sunrise before they release their guard. There it is. With my magic, the night will turn. Please beware, my era is coming for you. มันไม่ง่ายแต่ไม่ยากที่จะทําอืมแค่ต้องใจและสนุกกับมันเท่าแก่น้อยตอบโจทย์ทุกไลฟ์สไตล์แบรนด์สาหร่ายยอดขายอ
Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Wherever you're watching around the world, welcome back to Fantasy Focus, our second episode here at PGC 2023. As the grand finals approach, I've gathered our best fantasy experts to tell you a little bit more about who to pick and maybe who to avoid. My name's Toppies, I'm joined by Paper Thin. The name is Toby and Porosaurus to break down all your fantasy information for PGC 2023's grand final. All right, let's start out, Toby, as our reigning champion so far. How have you enjoyed the event so far? It's been good. It's a uh, first time for everything, I suppose, and fun to be in the top. I like that. I, I, a little bit of heat, you know, heat low key, because your performance has been absolutely insane, and it hurts me to say that. <laughs> now, Porosaurus, I gotta ask you, what player have you been the most impressed with when it comes to fantasy so far? Well, I mean, I think the obvious answer is, is Sol, but, uh, you know, he's sitting at the top. I think we were all expecting him to do really well coming into this. The one that's really impressed me, and I think that's impressed our whole panel, is Fex from FaZe. I think some of us may have been expecting him to do well, but I don't know if they were expecting him to do 7.5 something points per game well in 24 games. So he's been playing out of his mind. Uh, let's talk about who has let us down. And I think this is a pretty interesting conversation because not a lot of us expected such big letdowns early on. Paper thin? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, it was probably Perfectix. Okay. Up until the very last day of the last chance qualifiers, awesome. he was struggling. The whole team was struggling, to be honest. But usually, he's very consistent, at least yeah. putting up good amounts of damage. You know, Twisted Minds is often kind of getting into late games. We're not seeing any of that happening. It just seemed like everything wasn't really coming together for them until they really needed to. Until the Sonic started hot dropping them, all of a sudden, we saw Twisted Minds come right back into form. Boom or bust? As we look to grand finals, who's your big boom player? and who do you think has a chance of busting out? I'm gonna start with Toby. He has been dominating, he's gotta go first. I gotta go Pow Pow. I mean, we knew he had skill coming into this tournament, but still to the grand final standings, he is the player that has put up the most points compared to his price, and he continues regardless of whether you're in groups or winners, he still racks up points regardless of whether Tiamba gets circles or not. He's always up there dealing damage. So just a guaranteed, I should say, pick for a grand finals team. Who's your bust? As much as I was on the Shen and Tai Lu wagon throughout the previous PGS events, he just hasn't lived up to it this time around. And coming into the Grand Finals, I have my worries. Yes, he might have one or two good games, but the pop-off Shen that we've seen in the past, the pop-off Shen that now kind of puts him at the price that he is at, I don't think he's going to live up to it. All right, fair enough. Poro, who's your boom? Who is my boom, you ask? My boom is Fex. And, and mostly for all the reasons we talked about at the beginning of the show, right? Is the fact that he's putting up an insane amount of points per game, regardless of how FaZe does and regardless of what lobby it's been in. Both lobbies that they've played in, he's always he's still managed to put up just a, a crazy amount of numbers. Now, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is that they didn't really have the wins uh, to go along with the good numbers. So that might be something that keeps me from picking him for my main roster, okay, but uh, we'll see. Okay, uh, bust. It's gonna be PO. Gotta be PO. It, it's it's gonna be PO. Everybody was kind of expecting them to do mid uh, coming into this. I don't think anybody was really expecting PO and Gen G to come in here and light the world on fire, and uh, and they delivered exactly that during group phases. Now they had found their footing a little bit during the bracket stage, but it wasn't enough to to justify paying. What is it, 20,000 plus for for a guy that may or may not go off? You think he's a bit of a trap? It, it's it's a trap. You see the name PO, you think PUBG royalty, the god. It, it's been a long time since those days, man. Fair. All right, now, Paper, I couldn't help but notice you reacted when yeah. Poro said PO. Is he on your list and, and which side? He is. He is the same bust for me okay. as PO. I mean, unfortunately, I think his style of play which is very much um, early game isolated maneuvers yep. where he's trying to identify uh, maybe weaknesses in other mm -hmm. teams and punish that. That makes sense. It hasn't really been working this event. I think because teams are so spread out this event in terms of they're further out on the edge, usually PO is looking to go deeper mm -hmm. into the center uh, to find isolated players, right. not out on the edges. So a lot of times what I'm seeing is Gen G is actually the ones getting kind of picked apart on their edges instead, mm -hmm. and then they're not able to recover. So I think their play style just isn't really suiting it on top of maybe P.O. not having his best event. Okay, so he's your bust. Tell okay. me, who are you looking at to get you back in this thing? I'm actually gonna go with Tiggleton. I, nice. I think with the Sonics, you know, yeah, it's been a little bit up and down for them, uh, but with the way that they absolutely dominated the last chance qualifiers, Tiggleton is a player who usually shows up in big game moments. Mm -hmm. I really think that him and the Sonics are gonna have a great performance. He really started to come alive there in the last chance yep. qualifier. I started to see that incredible form, especially with the ARs, especially with the AUG that we're used to seeing from him. 
uh, across so many different events. All right. I like that. And I got to sort of agree with you on the Sonics thing, I think is important. So I'm going to go my boom player, PGS2. Sonics looked so good. I think they continue rolling forward. But I think Kickstart, the newest member of the team, he was slow at the start of this event to kind of get the system together. But in that last, in that sort of last chance qualifier, we saw him find his feet. And I think you're going to get a good price for a solid performance. Will he change the world and light on fire? Probably not. But for the price he's coming at, I think it's a strong pick for your team. My bust player is Ice Left. I just think Petrichor is going to struggle in this lobby. I think Ice Left is deeply overpriced because of the traverse through the loser's bracket, the last chance qualifier. He's got a lot of kills and damage against inferior skill levels. And I think that that's not going to reflect well in the winner's bracket. PGC 2023, this is it. The biggest show in the world. Dreams come true or get broken here. What are you excited about? Oh man, I mean, it's just the grand finals. 18 games of the best teams in the world, another super stacked lobby. Uh, it's hard to imagine that this isn't going to be just one of the best finishes we've ever had. It seems like most of the stages have been extremely close, coming right down to the wire. I don't think there's anything more to say than that. It's almost time for PGC 2023's grand finals. Don't forget to sign up so you too can play fantasy over at twire.gg. Down to just Zenith as Kia pulls through. He'll find at least one kill him as he tries to heal up. Zenith will figure him out though. He's gonna take out. Ooh, kill you got very, very low. He's gonna peek it. There you go, Zenith. Damage come over that mountain, getting hot shifted away from wasn't gonna be easy. They committed to it, didn't work out for them. Now in the meantime, the LMP! Gonna maybe make it his hill, but look at Shen. Wow. Oh, How no. They... Oh, <laughs> that spray was dirty. Oh. Now, the 7 1 to get involved moves pretty close to where Shin's going to be at. Uh, oh, tight. my Shin just shutting down everything. Okay. They can possibly find. Does butt out one. Now, PO putting some bad damage into the backside. A good push around the corner, and Genji <clears throat> cleans him out. 
so far. Sonics has not spotted this out. But here come the grenades already. They've got a little bit more utility, oh, just oh. like that. Gonna feed that information over to the rest of the boys. He's all. Not wasting any time will wipe the entirety of how. Don't 走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了走了
너무 재밌을 것 같아. 아직도 열댓 개 있을 것 같은데. 열일곱 개. 이거 먹으면 열일곱 개. 와. 박질까? 알 수가 없다. 진짜 진짜. 알도 어디 썼다 형? 이제 바로 빨리 생각해야 된다. 예? 다섯 개 남았어. 유패는 바로 해야. 몇개더 있어? 네 개. 아 아쉽네. 제 시체 잡을 거 봐야겠다. 저 앞에 단차지까지 가서. 단차지 어떻게 더 남았어? 여기서 더못갈 때 이제 두개 하나 남았어. 시체 하나 남았다. 형. 형 딜, 딜 쌓는다 느낌. 아, 쌓았어, 딜 쌓았어, 딜 쌓았어. 딜 쌓았어, 딜 쌓았어. 6등이야. 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 나이스 어떻게 뜨고. 나 배가 와서 누나 이렇게 많이 먹고 처음이야. 아예. P90, OP or what? 라! 조나조냐. 여기야. 나이스, 굿 파킹 잡. 스페인 파킹 잡. 홀리 파킹. 굿 잡. 예. 나이스! 나이스! 이겼어? 이겼어? 나이스! 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 
Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're watching around the world. Welcome back. It's time for the PUBG Global Championship 2023 Grand Finals from beautiful Bangkok. My name is Toffees. I'm joined by Avenger, and this is about to be three days of absolute PUBG chaos. It's going to be a lot of crazy action. It's going to mm -hmm. be from the get-go, and I'm super excited. Honestly, these teams of course, have fought so hard to get here yep. all through our brackets, and now it's time to show what they're made of. Absolutely. It's everyone's big goal to get to this stage, but you have to step up and you have to make it happen. And perhaps if you are sitting in an on to seat official gaming chair partner, the chair that elevates the gaming experience with ultimate comfort and exceptional performance. Choose on to seat, choose the seat of victors. We're also sponsored by the King Power Group, leader in the travel retail industry. King Power, the power of possibilities. Logo Pro Esports grade gaming gear created with a unique design. And as a world-leading gaming brand, MSI stands out as the most trusted brand in gaming and esports. MSI is the official gaming partner of the PUBG Global Championship 2023, providing PC hardware, monitors, and laptops as the designated hardware provider for this event. Talkanoi, live deliciously. And finally, the number one fast and reliable fiber internet brought to you by True Online. Reliability is an interesting topic to start this off with, Martin, because I think that that's what some of these teams are going to be looking for right out of the gate. We start with Miramar. They need to rely on a good, fast start. This is the big show with the best teams. You can't lag. No, for sure. And also, there's still some drops that are not 100% settled, right? Okay. Usually, we go into the grand finals there, like, everything is settled. There's been tons of scrims. The last set of scrims here for Miramar, a lot of teams didn't play it. Like, okay. You don't have to, so right. they're like, no, we don't need to. We're just going to come. We're going to see what's happening. So I'm super excited to get the first game start to see, you know, if everyone's settled. Because usually, you go out, it's 18 games. you got to make right. the best of it. You don't want to be hot dropping anyone unless it's, like, full-time revenge. It's just <laughs> the only your only goal here for grand final. We've seen plenty of globals where people seem to believe that the hot drop is some sort of, I don't know, show of strength. Uh, at this one, I hope that we don't see that because I want to see these teams step up and play to the best of their abilities. Now, we'll take a look back at the schedule to remind everyone of the journey that happened on the way here. It has been a long month of PUBG that started with the group stages, went to the loser's bracket, the winner's bracket, then the last chance qualifier, and after two days off for the team to sort of recollect and plan for the final, we land here. Three days of the best PUBG action in the world, starting today and wrapping up on Sunday, at which point there will be one survivor who gets to hoist the trophy. Yeah, one winner that's going to be grabbing the biggest chunk of those two mm -hmm. plus million dollars we're going to be having. Yeah, and of course, we sent some home early we sent some losers bracket home. They got eliminated. They got home early. And last chance, of course, mm. eight teams that didn't make it, they wish they were. And now, we, of course, we have the 16 best teams yep. in the world currently. It is. That last chance qualifier was tough. A lot of teams wish they wouldn't have been in there, but there was a chance to avoid it in the first place. Let's look at the result. I love this. Total point champion. They are the winners. So if you yep. know whoever has the most points, they get the win. It's going to start on Miramar and on Orangle. Yep. Uh, and these are the teams that will be taking the field. Yeah, so day one and day three is going to be the same, but we're going to be swapping. So we're making sure that they're kind of playing in, out in one. So you're starting when you're like you're playing four Miramars in a row, four Orangles in a row at that point. Of course, we're playing for $2 million Ooh, and the MVP wee. of $10,000 plus the crowdfunding that we're going to be having in yep. game two. Same point system as we have for a long time. 10, 10 points for win and one point for kill. Absolutely. And that does mean sometimes placement, you don't want to say you don't have to go for the kills if you can get the chicken. Right. But if you can't get a chicken, go for those kills. If you're joining us for the first time, that's the basics. Let's talk about participating teams. Wow. The top row came out of our winners bracket. These are the teams Stacked. that basically moved across the top. They probably played the least amount of games out of anybody. Yep. On the bottom, these are the grinders. Some of them, like Petrichor, have had to fight every single day. Some of them had to fight 36 games to get yep. here. You know, it's and the top. Yeah, they didn't play as many games, but they are definitely mentally prepared out there. And of course, our head-to-head -head here, two mm. players to watch throughout this grand finals. Little Ghost and Shrimshi from Sonic's and 17 Gaming. Love to see it. I love Little Ghost. Remember him last year? He was an absolute poltergeist when he came to PGC. Shrimzy I like seeing up here because often when we talk about the Sonics, we talk about their you know their superstars, quote unquote. And Shrimzy doesn't always get included in that conversation, but at this event, he has been. Let's look at teams to watch though. 17, new happy, but I want to start with Cerberus with you here, Martin. These guys don't seem to get first at PGC's internationals, but they put up a pretty good run. They are. Yeah, plus, they have, you know, this huge clutch potential on the team as well. You saw Tycon throughout yep. the stages too. Like, these guys have been popping off. Last year, him as was an absolute yep. menace. True. So, the question is really, are they going to have their kind of highest of the highs mm -hmm. once we get through the Grand Finals? Because they had a little bit of a slump. They had a little bit they of a, sl a slow start until we saw one of these situations here where Tycon absolutely clutched and put up an insane performance. 
So the question is really, are we going to see the full team kind of come together yeah. and do things, or are they going to have to rely on these individual performances again? I think they're a juxtaposition to who we're seeing with 17. Cerberus needs to start strong. They need to get that momentum going. Right. 17 just feels consistent. I don't care if it's the they start, are. the end, or the middle. They just are always on their game. Yeah, and they're all capable of fragging. Suju as well obviously popped off and an insane performance. Also, they have some insane drops. They're looting mm. Kato, Pachinki, uncontested. They have center drops on Vikendi and Takeo too. So it's looking really good for them. That's also why we have more than 55%, 57%, yeah. I think, plus are voting for them to be the, the champion inside the game too. Now, if you want to be the champion of your own, you can go to twire.gg. There's still time to get your fantasy team in for the grand finals. It's pretty simple scoring. If your player gets a kill, you get two points. If your player does 100 damage, well, you get a point. If they survive to the end game, you get five. And if they die before 10, that's minus three, which sounds way worse than it or is way worse than it sounds. All right, let's look at the most picked. Walk me through this. Any surprises? Uh, Ming Ming, of course, had a huge performance in mm -hmm. our last chance, but he had a bit of a slump in our arena, so he's up there with five. I think a lot of people are betting on they're going to be able to step it up in the last chance. I think they're going to have a harder time through the through the winners uh, from the, against the winners team. And here, my team against Poro and Paper. I'm currently not doing too good, but hopefully this team with Shabu Didi, Ionix, Tycon, and CYY is going to be popping off for me. You think Tiamo's going to go off? Day one, yes, and then potentially I'll be doing a little bit of swap Ah, because now you can drop a player day to day, so right. that's interesting. Uh, my strategy is simple. I think you got to pick teams that are slated to win. My picks to possibly win this, 17, Donawa, and Sonics are three of my favorites. I think Twisted Minds possibly as well, but they've been slow, and so I put Tycon on there. because since cheap. Well, and since Cerberus has joined the scene, they always at internationals are finishing in this eight and above. So you can right. guarantee point, points Plus out of a player like Tycon. Plus he does like a crazy man. Absolutely. And that kind of strategy is what's gotten me up to second and you into fifth, unfortunately. Uh, Toby, though, is dominating all of us. Toby has been uh, has been captaining one of the best players in yep. every single state, right? So it's doing well. Okay, so we actually have a little bit of an update here. We're dropping down to 56.16%. Okay. A lot of players out there in our in-game mm -hmm. fantasy pickings and voting challenges, they have been holding on to those votes. Yeah. And now they've been spreading out a little bit. The 8% that Perfect. are on Pero, 14 on Gen G, Sonic's on 5. Good to see Dano in there. Yeah, unfortunate yeah. Uh, situations if you pick some of the guys that are obviously not in the grand final. If you guys do have voting coupons, now is the time to use them. Obviously, that will close once the game starts, so get on and make sure those votes are in as fast as you can. Uh, I'm curious to see what all the Gen G, like the, that was a big percentage for a team that I hope does well. Right. But I do have some skepticism. We're starting on Miramar, just like we show you. Tego, Vakendi, and finishing up on Arangle. Uh, so it'll start a little more, I think, chaotic, good for some teams like perhaps Cerberus to start on that map yeah. and get their confidence running. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so too. And also, again, I'm looking at uh, Minas to see if Visa and Funpin and Luminosity is going to have some fun there. Okay. Also, now you guys want to have a little bit of fun. You got a chance to earn some G coin in the first match after the first blood. We'll have a code that is good for 400 G coin. And then in the fifth match after the first team is fully eliminated, we're going to have a code that can get you in here from 800 to 5,000 G coin. So make That's sure that the client's open. You want to get that in really fast. It's not a sort of write down and try again later. Uh, you need to get those fingers moving. Now let's talk about MVP vote. $10,000 award for the MVP. Right. We've, people have asked, how is this voted on? The talent, and it says caster, but it's really everybody who's working behind the scenes in that sort of job is going to be a massive portion of the vote because we've watched every game. Uh, we'd love to hear... Huge insights. Absolutely. Huge insights. And the production, who probably has watched even more games than us because they're here for every scrim all the time, is going to be putting in about 10%. Yeah. That's exciting. I like that. I like that. Yeah. It's also nice that, you know, now you know how the $10,000 is being given out. And also, like... We're going to be watching and we're going to be like, okay, this was an absolute yep. superstar move here. You're clutching or like, but it can also be, I like, can be, you can be in one. Yep. There's going to be someone that's going to like, okay, this guy single-handedly got, you know, 12 points yep. in that game. And uh, throughout the whole tournament was like top five on twire damage kills, whatever. Like there's so many things that we take into consideration Absolutely. too. So it's cool. And we're going to see everything. But I would also We're looking. I would also say tweet us your favorite place. Yeah. Show us your best stuff. Tag us and let us see it as well. This is going to be an amazing event. We've got three days of action, six day, six games each day. It is going to be a really amazing time. This is PGC 2023. I, I'm excited for this thing to get started, Martin. 100%. It's going to be crazy. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to meet the teams, see the trophy, and get this thing started.
versatility. She's going to get taken down, but those kills go over to FaZe, and that is massive. This is big for Daytrain. Going to make it easier. Tycon, 14 kills for his squad right now. They've got a Panzer Faust in hand. Tickle Tickle, five, two. Please welcome our PUBG Global Championship 2023 Grand Finals teams. Battling all the way from the loser's bracket to make the PGC Grand Finals, Petrico The PGC 2019 champions looking to make a resurgence back to the top. It's Gen G. <laughs> Qualifying for the finals in an epic final last chance match. It's V7 Fun Pin! The perennial powerhouse is out of EMEA! It's Twisted Mind! The rising stars out who made a splash at PGS2. It's Ty Lu. After being one point away from elimination, they stormed back to make the finals. Let's hear it for Space Station Gaming! PGC 2021 champions, back to challenge for the trophy again. It's new Happy Esports! Your winners of PGS2 and the top qualifier out of last chance, it's the Sonic! 
Knicks. Hometown heroes in the first of our winners bracket teams, Day Trade Gaming! Phase up for your top European finishers coming out of winners, it's FaZe Clan! The three-headed dog you do not want to meet in a firefight, it's Cerberus Esports! Here with a mission to prove their doubters wrong, it's Luminosity Gaming! Explosive team coming out of the PCL. It's Tian Ba. Bangkok, make some noise for your third. Place winners qualifier, Theraton Five. The Korean sensation looking for their first international title. It's Donawa Esports! <laughs> the PGC 2022 runners up, the PGS1 champions, and the first place finisher of the winner's bracket, it's 17 Gaming! ที่ไม่กี่อ่ะจะบอกว่าเรากรีดอยู่ข้างเวทีแบบดังมากคือวันนี้นะคะอย่าจะบอกว่าสําหรับที่สนามกรุงเทพมหานครประเทศไทยแ
รูปสเตจจากนั้นเนี่ยก็ได้มี8ทีมที่ได้กลับบ้านไปก่อนในรอบ loser bracket แล้วก็จะนัดอีก8ทีมค่ะก็ไม่ได้ไปต่อเช่นเดียวกันในรอบของ last chance ดังนั้นในวันนี้นะคะกับ16ทีมค่ะที่จะมาร่วมชิงชัยแล้วก็ต้องบอกว่าวันนี้เขากระหายมากๆกับช่วยรางวัลและศึกศักดิ์ศรีของแชมป์ในระดับโลกนะคะกับเกม PUBG eSport นั่นเองดังนั้นสำหรับในวันนี้ต้องบอกว่าสิ่งดีๆกำลังรอทุกคนอยู่ความน่าตื่นเต้นกำลังรอทุกคนอยู่อะใครผู้หนึ่งเข้ามานะเดี๋ยวในวันนี้เนี่ยเราจะได้มาสนุกสนานกันอย่างแน่นอนนะคะสำหรับเกมในครั้งนี้บอกว่าเราได้เห็นอะไรหลายอย่างมากๆมีต้องบอกว่ามีทีมที่ผิดหวังเนาะกับการที่ไม่ได้ไปต่อเพียงเพราะขาดเพียงแค่คะแนนเดียวหรือแม้แต่การล้มลองของบางทีมเพื่อให้ลุกขึ้นมาได้แข็งแกร่งมากยิ่งขึ้นหรือกลยุทธ์ของแต่ละทีมที่สามารถดำเนินการเล่นได้อย่างสมบูรณ์แบบนะเราได้เห็นหลากหลายรูปแบบมากๆแล้วก็รวมถึงการเล่นของผู้เล่นบางท่านที่น่าทึ่งมากๆจนแบบโอ้โหเราแบบจดจำไปได้ตลอดการเลยนะคะการแข่งขันของเราใน3วันนี้ค่ะเราจะแข่งขันรวมทั้งหมด18แมตช์ด้วยกันแล้วก็เดี๋ยวเราจะได้มาร่วมลุ้นแล้วก็ร่วมส่งกำลังใจนะคะให้กับทีมต่างๆกันค่ะกับการแข่งขันในรอบนี้ในรอบแกรนด์ไฟนอลส์นะคะต้องบอกว่าเดอะพิกเกมชาร์เนชเนี่ยอาจจะจบลงไปแล้วแต่ว่าทุกคนเนี่ยยังสามารถที่จะร่วมสมทบเงินรางวัลได้จากการซื้อสกินนะคะของ PGC 2023นั่นเองแล้วก็สำหรับตอนนี้ทุกคนพร้อมหรือยังทำอะไรกันอยู่ Everybody, once again, are you ready? ต้องเป็น international นะคะเอาล่ะ So if you guys are ready, เดี๋ยวเราไปพบกับตัวแรกและแมชชีนึงกันเลยค่ะพีจีเซ冠军一直是我们的梦想，这是我们的最后一步。如果可以的话，这次我会让梦想成真。tham gia BGC thì team mình càng dần càng hoàn thiện và mạnh hơn. Mùa giải BGC lần này sẽ là mùa giải của team mình. Đang có người hỏi Trung Quốc đội nào là đội bóng mạnh nhất, người dân có thể nhớ tới nhiều đội bóng. Nhưng sau trận đấu sau, mỗi người sẽ nói một lời cuối cùng. Hôm nay chúng ta sẽ chơi một trận đấu rất là vui. Tôi không nghĩ rằng sẽ có thể đạt được thành tích này. Với sự kiên trì và sự nỗ lực của mình. So we've worked really hard all year to be here, and truly, winning matters most. Win or lose, I want to have fun with my team. Success will follow. They are crushing the entire field. Oh, that was just a miss. The whole white bird. อดีตที่ผ่านมาแล้วเราก็จะปล่อยมันไปครับแล้วพวกเราจะไม่ยอมแพ้ครับพวกเกมของเราในชีวิตเองก็ต้องทำให้เราได้รับความสุขที่มีต่อกันและความสุขที่มีต่อกันนั้นคือสิ่งที่เราต้องการมากที่สุดที่เราจะต้องการที่สุดที่เราจะต้องการที่สุดที่เราจะต้องการที่สุดที่เราจะต้องการที่สุดที่เราจะต้องการที่สุดที่เราจะต้องการที่สุดที่เราจะต้อง With my boys, we will finally become the best team of all time in PUBG. Seventeen gaming. They were just so close to the trophy, but now it's gone. Last year, we were just a little bit close. 
，但是今年我们会有所不同。所有队伍在 PGC 这个舞台上同台竞技，但是只有一个队伍能享受这个舞台。我会在游戏中告诉你们为什么我们是强队。Seventeen Gaming has won a lot this year, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that they don't win PGC as well. 为了成为最强的选手，我想拿下第二个 PGC 的冠军。I want to play a fun game. Let's see who ends up on top. Good luck. PUBG fans and welcome to PGC 2023 Grand Finals. I'm Matram, joined by my boy Paper Thin, and we're going to be taking you through the first three rounds and the pace setting rounds, I'd like to say. Absolutely. This is going to be the beginning of the march towards destiny. This is where all of these teams have worked so hard in this year to become the PGC champions. So many storylines, so many teams want this, but only one can come through and be your PGC 2023 champion. As we've seen in these videos, this is a full year buildup in some cases, but in a lot of these cases, this is a multi-year journey to get to this stage. So much of the heart and soul just to fight to get to this point, and now, whenever it all comes down to it, can you do it in these last 18 games? As it's going to be very chaotic off the start to try to make sure you can get those foot rest, like get your foot in, get your positioning in a good spot, but then really just try to start assaulting the leaderboard, make sure that you get control. And that has been 17's name for victory so far. Absolutely, 17 has been really dominant so far this year. I mean, winning PGS1, winning PCL Summer, they certainly seem poised to finally come through with that PGC after coming up so short last year, second place. And and this may be the time. They look unstoppable at times. But there's so much to look at overall. I mean, Twisted Minds and the pathing that they had to take to get here, we started to see them get so much more reinvigorated, specifically in that lower bracket, and the hot drops that were happening with Sonics. So much attention is going to be kind of on the brew. How much did you manage to kick back in these two days, really study up and prepare for what is going to be essentially the greatest moment of your life or the biggest heartbreak? Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen Batulans more fired up than he was today. He has been pumped up with music, dancing around, tons of smiles on his face. Day trade here, a real big chance to do something historic as well as T5 to win in front of the hometown crowd. So far in the most recent PUBG Global events, an APAC team hasn't been able to really do better than six. You got Cerberus at six in PGC last year, uh, Day Trade, T5. They've all been in that area, but they've never been able to break through into that top five. Will this be that event? We saw a lot going on as people coming in, specifically like striking their poses. I but appreciate that. I would say that a big part of what we're seeing with these local teams is the energy. They are just feeding off of this crowd and exploiting it, and it is just so strong for them to see. But can they do it? Can they put up at this stage with the amount of firepower that's going to be coming at them? It is going to be hard. No, there's a ton of really good teams here, Matt. We get to kick things off on Miramar. All right, plane is up in the air, and here we go. Game number one of PGC is underway. Miramar, we are going to be a very northern plane path. Absolutely love to get things kicked off for the grand finals on Miramar. Will there be any hot drops? There may be one Ooh. around well, Minas Generales in the graveyard. That is the one that I have my eyes on. Everything else is kind of sort of normal. Sonics have moved over to Hacienda. Couldn't bully Twisted Minds out of the event. Couldn't take Power Grid. And they are very happy to take Hacienda, though. Another central location, something that they play very, very well out of. Keep eyes on these early drops. A couple of our more southern dropping teams might have to make some shifts on it, but nothing too crazy. Everybody, yes, wants to get some in them starting off of this one, but you really want to make sure that you land, get your loot situation. Hot drop right off the get-go is the way none of these teams want to start, but I don't know, a couple of them might have thought out some sneaky strategies. We'll see. V7 has been tough in their hot drops. They've done a pretty good job of dealing with Tai Lu on Erangel, but now you've got Luminosity Gaming, a very different squad in some ways. Tons of firepower, of course, just like you have on Tai Lu. So this is going to be a little bit tricky, but right on top of the containers, V7 is going to land first. It looks like Luminosity is going to split Split out to the west and already doing some damage is Gumin, but only a, just a shred on the mime. 
just about securing vehicle, right? That's what so much of that play was about, so that way you can deny any resources for anybody that you're going to be hot dropping with. This is an entirely different set of hot drop, though. LG is... <laughs> Okay, Ty Lu, let's be honest. These guys want to murder the world. They, ha they have a big faith inside of their firepower. You hot drop them, it's a matter of respect against it. LG is a lot more of a cerebral approach into this. You can see that it's like, nope, let's just go ahead and get the vehicle. Let's step away. Let's have Flood try to keep some eyes on what's going to be going on over there. We don't want to do a heavy commitment in. We want to make sure that we at least get ourselves prepared for a firefight. Exactly. And the positioning they're taking here on the outskirts of Minas give them a great view of the city itself. It's all on high ground. There's all those long warehouses that are on stilts that are up in the mm -hmm. air. And they've got great windows to give you vision into what uh, V7 is doing, how they're rotating, where they're moving, what vehicles they're going for. You can't see to the far east of Minas, of course, but you can see everything else. So I, I agree with you, Matt, that I think, uh, you know, for Luminosity Gaming, if you're going to have to split this drop, I like this position a little bit better in terms of if it is going to be contested. And it, it's just a more defendable position all in all. On top of that, we have seen the circle pops. Uh, it's going to be pretty much around that water treatment plant up into the north. That's uh, a little bit, I guess, north of center, but Sonic's Petrocore Road at T5, all in very favorable positions. Absolutely. Sonic's going to be tested a little bit here with their new drop spot, but I don't think it's that super different than Picado in some ways. It's a little bit uh, trickier to navigate some of the, you know, terrain, I guess, but other than that, it's, it's not super different in terms of some of the rotation paths. It's just you, you know, get a little bit less access to the southern part of the uh, map. And a reminder to everybody that whenever we tend to see the circle go over here, if it leans north, it stays around water treatment. The, the road across from water treatment is where we see a lot of these in-game circles kind of pop off at. There's several very strong compounds right now. Presently, almost that whole area being held down by T5, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see them regroup. How teams regroup and if they commit into a 2-2 split at this stage, most notably I would say like Sonics or T5, are going to be where I get a lot of my attention drawn into because... I mean, with them and Petrocor Road, and Petrocor Road, we have seen really doing a lot of 2-2 splits and getting control over areas. It is, it could be hazardous. It could pay off big. You could get a lot of territory control, but if somebody just rolls in four strong right on top of your duo, that is doomed. Yeah, I think in this lobby, you might be able to get away with it in the early part before people kind of really start reading maybe uh, how you want to play. I don't know if anybody's going to come out here with a really aggressive game plan. We'll see if somebody's going to try to pick apart some of these wide splits that teams tend to take, like T5. Uh, but T5 split makes a lot of sense with like, what you're talking about. The area near water treatment, a lot of it is very flat, very barren. So some of those compounds become what we refer to colloquially as god compounds yeah. because they're so powerful, they're so defendable. We saw it with 4 a.m. earlier in the event that once you have that compound on lockdown, you are not unbeatable. Looking around to see if we have any emergency pickup potential. Uh, we do have a storm that is over in the west, and that is going to be uh, Tiamba as well as Gen G trying to cut through that one. 17, though, just going to lead right out of Picado, take that road up to the northeast, and they're just going to bypass a lot of what's going to be going on. Runs right into Hacienda and a very strong fortified point. Yeah, Hacienda gives you a pretty decent pivot point. It is a little bit crashable. It's a, it's a pretty large compound mm -hmm. uh, to kind of lock down. But when it comes to moving in and around of it, there's a fair amount of hills, a fair amount of space to work with. You can gatekeep the teams uh, potentially that are coming to your south or to your east pretty well. So it is a pretty good spot for them to start. And this is Sonics. Looks like it's going to be 2-2 two -two split here at one of the God Compounds-ish uh, that's right next to Water Treatment and then just to the southeast of it as well, that, that compound that's nestled right up on the hillside. Well, this is the other, I guess, more regular ending point, right, is that crossroad section that's just to the east of those God Compounds that we're talking about. Getting a firm foothold over here is a good position to try to hold down. Specifically, it gets you control of a lot of the rotations, specifically around Hacienda, those types of things, so that way you can really harass out. Uh, not a lot of very long wraps coming into play so far. Uh, whenever we look at this, it's mostly just going to be phase day trade up into the north. Everybody else in the southern half of the circle. Oh, and Shen already finding a headshot onto Himas there with the bolt. Shen not typically a bolter, so going for something a little bit unorthodox. Maybe the loot wasn't it, quite there for Tai Lu. Has he been storing this one in his pocket? Because Dude, if so, please. if Shin is like secretly a bolter, I am going to be so ridiculously excited. I am going to be thrilled. I'm going to have the most fun watching his team. I already have a ton of fun watching Shen and Tai Lu, but it would be quite <laughs> quite an entertainment uh, that they would put on as High Saki now keeping track of V7 underneath. Tiamba Going to roll in underneath Genji's nose. Genji loves to get high ground early, loves to get information, loves to play on the edge of the circle uh, for as long as they can. Just try to watch for openings and take advantage of it, see if they're given those opportunities. So far for, in this tournament, it, it, it really hasn't 
you know, the circles really haven't afforded Genji that opportunity. The teams in the bigger, yeah. the bigger part of it, the teams haven't afforded Genji those opportunities. We've been talking a lot that this is a very centralized meta. Teams move in very early. They want to get control over those territories. So, like, whenever you're playing along the edge and you're just trying to pick up those kills, it's so much more difficult to try to, like, oh specifically get those flushes because it feels like you're having three or four teams just instantly spin on any knock that you get on the edge and just robbing it, just taking it away from you. No, it, it, that has been the problem. But the good news, I would say, for Gen G is now in this particular lobby, there aren't a ton of edge heavy teams left. This is true. So you, you've got New Happy, which is edge ish, uh, Space Station kind of, but. I'd say Gen G is probably going to be one of those, one of the few teams that wants to flank out, wants to take space early, and try to win games that way by kind of outplacing you, outmaneuvering you, and outpositioning you. So we'll see if they can make it work. It's been a struggle. They frankly barely got here to the grand finals, but they are here, and you never know with a player like Pia on your team what they can pull off. Narrowly got here, to say the least. It is. It is just by the skin of their teeth. Uh, looking out, not a lot of, not, no emergency pickups used at this stage as teams are leaning into more of the, we're going to go ahead and scout with our eyes on feet, go ahead and get into position. We don't want to just risk hot dropping into something in a later stage of this game. Uh, looking at phase, they are running a 2-1-1 split, kind of all the way from water treatment to just south of Cruda Valle, so a lot of control inside the circle. I would say that they've carved out almost like a quarter of it if you look at the pie. Yes, okay. So happy that we got to see that. Sharp has been really good with the AWM so far this event. I saw that yeah. uh, SSG was rotating past a crate that dropped. He's going to pick it up again. Sharp Shot's been absolutely disgusting with it. Let's see if he can have some more highlight reel moments with that gun. He specifically told me before, <laughs> before the last chance qualifiers, he's like, if I get an AWM, you watch out. Dude, if you name yourself Sharp Shot, how can you not run bolties? That's Fair. just like a requirement, and he has been... Okay, this goes back into the gun meta and the discussions that goes on that there's, yes, there's always like the quote unquote best that you can use, but also playing into just what feels best for you and your play style might be its own independent meta. It goes back into the way that PUBG and the competitive level can be played in so many different ways. We see passive teams, we see aggressive teams, central teams, we see edge teams. There's so many different variables that you can look at. So if this is something that is a core component for their success, I love the fact that they're just leaning into it. No, I agree. I, I mean, it's a it's such a game-changing gun sometimes. It can really yeah. uh, completely turn a fight on its head instantaneously with how powerful it is, uh, just depending on you know the player whose hands it's in. Donawa, another team we should absolutely be talking about as potential favorites to win this event now they're going to be coming up underneath Tianba 7-7 seven, seven here making a little bit of noise I think posturing since he's on his own to try to see if he could convince Donawa to back off and it looks like that is mission accomplished Soul is going to stick around though got up above him puts a few shots in his direction just to let him know that he's there so the kind of this is kind of that, that jockeying for positions that teams do a lot in the early part of the game. Mm -hmm. There might not be a lot of damage done, but it's more just showing your strength, you know, f fluffing out those feathers to see who can gain more space. The attrition war, really trying to burn off meds, armor, all that other good, good for that later. Too, yeah. There's a lot of factors really looking in, and just like we were talking about beforehand, you specifically talked about like how some of these teams that really have been leaning into edge and trying to control that, Donovan steps up, gets some scouting, doesn't find much, and has to continue on their path. Yeah, and Tiamba is a team that will play a little bit of edge early. They're, they're perfectly happy to it. Ty Lu likes to be edge and quiet, though. They're not mm -hmm. very explosive on the edges, um, right. like we've seen with New Happy. Where are we going? Is, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it lean into the yeah. center. And so there you go. Remember those compounds that we were talking about across the street from Water Treatment Plant to the south? Well, they just became real freaking popular. Yeah, absolutely. So T5 has a big decision to make in the middle of all of this because you would have to think that almost certainly one of those is going to get crashed if a team can identify that team. T5 is as spread out in some of those, again, what we call god compounds in the center. But here we go. Oh, V7. We're seeing a lot of those 2-2 two -two splits having to regroup at this stage. It's going to be Sonics. They're taking shots into V7 as V7 is going to be rolling by two different sides of Sonics. LG's already going to be spotting out what's going to be going on with Cerberus up in front of them. Hisaki is going to go down and get flushed. First blood of PGC now taken care of. Oh, Luminosity feeling pretty confident now. Looking for that second point. Snakers already getting one for his squad. The grenades are hitting. They're not knocking. He must trying to play keep away with the rest of LG and doing some decent damage with that spray. Oh, what is that? There you go. You get some retaliation for it. It's a more of a moral victory than it is anything else, though, right? It's going to give you some time to maybe reset, get your teammate back up, 
But, I mean, 17 Gaming now being involved, shocker, right? This is uh, this is squad, every single time a firefight breaks out, they are involved somehow. And this is what I was talking about, Hacienda, some of the power positions you control to your east. That's where they're looking right now, towards this fight on the road between Cerberus and Luminosity Gaming. You have a lot of control uh, to poke at this fight between these two guys and maybe steal a point or two. Some utility coming out on both sides, but it looks like we've kind of decided how this is going to lay for right now. Um, meanwhile, LG is going to have to make a bit of a reposition. They do have NH that is going to have some high ground just playing the foothills south of San Martin. Might be able to spot out, as well as 17 Gaming. So when you're one of the few squads that really has to make a bit more of a, a hefty move, this is going to be quite punishable, as I don't really know the best pathing for LG to take in this situation. There's the replay. Snakers gets him on the drive-by with the headshot. Some help from his friends. Mime going to find that second knock, but Cerberus able to get Solalzi back up and running. And this has been a problem for Cerberus in some of these international events, Matrim, is mm -mm. They're, they're a slow to start, and yeah. they, they lose players early. It's not until the end of the event where they really start to pick things up, and that's what I'm concerned about. Teams like Cerberus, teams like V7 Fun Pin that need that win to seem to get that confidence going. I'm terrified for SSG and LG and how they're going to try to navigate. Latecomers into this circle, you can see that pathing over here, it looks like they can kind of move into that San Martin hillside. Uh, they're at least going to be able to get into a, pl a position for now, but it's not going to be the strongest. They're going to have to pray that the circle leans south. Absolutely. Well, they're at least going to be able to get up and get information. If they can keep these vehicles alive, they can make a move maybe towards the hills uh, to the outside or into San Martin, at least if this does, which it is most likely to, to shift north. Uh, they can make a play off of that. That's a pretty good shot from Paige, December 12th, and New Happy really spread out, though, in this area. So huh. not much room for Space space Station Gaming to get information just yet. Yeah, NH didn't really defend that road of approach, and that's kind of surprising. You would expect that somebody might try to bisect into this area, and so instead, just a couple shots coming out from December 12th, he's going to go ahead and retreat, and now SSG has a path into the circle that they probably shouldn't have had. No, you're absolutely right. I think typically at least from what we saw in recent history with NH, uh, is that they'll fight you early yeah. if they feel like they have an advantage. But this looks to be a little bit more cautious. Again, this is what I was kind of alluding to earlier, is that I think a lot of teams, yep, there Ooh. we go. The expected shift happens right where we kind of all predicted. And Okay, T5. T5 they yeah, gotta go you for, here? you got to go to Pot and Bong, I would think. Well, yep, looks like they're all going to go ahead and make that run quite early. Luckily, 17 Gaming is going to be distracted. Then it all is going to have the hardest rotation out of them, as it is going to be Twisted Minds Lou that's going to be getting pretty close to him. Day Trade is going to go ahead and regroup just to the north of that position. Gen.G is kind of off to the northwest of this, so we'll have to keep an eye on them. A Cerberus is going to be doing a long wrap. Looks like they might be kind of approaching that water treatment plant. Potentially, I don't know. They might wrap a bit more into the north as there is some of that hillside in play, but it's either going to be Phase or Tai Lu that they're going to have to contend with. Yeah, there's enough of the hill to the east of the water treatment that's in that they can hide behind it for now. But like you said, eventually they're going to have to try to make their way through water treatment, which anybody who's watched some PUBG sports knows that's not an easy task. It's really difficult to get through there. Now, if you can, a lot of times you can get that second, third place finish mm -hmm. with a decent amount of kills by controlling that hillside uh, across the road to the west of water treatment, uh, kind of near where they across the street from the gas station. That can be a really powerful spot if you're not gifted one of those compounds that's in the middle of the circle. And you can see that FaZe is already playing into that. They've got the 2-2 split that they're being set up with right now. And 17 Gaming, they're just going to go ahead and be bold about this win. And man, this is a hazardous rotation. They think that there's going to be something to be had, and it's going to be right at T5's position. They want something. They're going to go and go this dip right here, stop it off, and that could have been way worse than just one. Almost about to have a second one knocked, but instead going to stop off here. I'm very concerned about throwables at this point. Yeah, if somebody reaches out a little bit and finds the angle, they're going to be okay for another circle or two. Uh, but after that, it's going to be very, very tricky. There we go. Oh. I was curious if anybody was going to hold on to uh, some of those Emergency pickups, but sharp shot. No, not like this. He's got the AWM. Not like this. Well, uh, this was a quick reposition into water treatment itself. So three members do land. And given the fact that we still had 62 alive at the time, it's a miracle that it was just one lost on that. But there are only two members for SSG and water treatment plant right now, as FaZe did extricate themselves from it and moved a bit more to the south. That said, Page is kind of lost on by himself off of that drop, and he is very, very close to Jinji, Day Trade, as well as Tai Lu. Yeah, Cerberus losing Tycon potentially. We'll see if there's going to be a flush. Non going to take Flood out. Luminosity now down to three players trying to come up underneath a very strong Petrichor Road position. Petrichor Road 
I think, pretty aware of it based on where I'm seeing them looking. They have to at least suspect that something's awry, but no, they're backing oh, off of this. Oh, man. Here comes the breach. Mime, does he read it? Spots one, goes in, gets knocked. It's going to be Chewy to get knocked and flushed very early in this firefight. They never heard him coming. A great oh, job. Summer. Oh, Snakers gets cut down. Rello as well. One more to go. Mine keeping things going. Eggs left. The hero for the squad coming back, trying to see if he can spot him out, and does narrowly keeps his squad in this one. Woo. Good recovery here from Petrichor Road. A great start for LG. A good oh, move. But in H. Oh my gosh, here they come. They're going to slam right in. They're trying to take advantage of this. Realizing there's an opportunity in front of them, they are just full on sending it into position. X left yet again going to try to hold up for his squad. He's Does nuts. get the knock on a one. Everything that he can get at this stage is going to be massive. Ming as well, trying to do something, but he's cut down by Nan. Above him is Aix left, and it is actually going to be Petricor Road going down. Xiao Bei from that position we saw 17 dive into gets revenge onto Aix left. The dominoes are starting to fall. No follow-up is going to be happening down into the south, but with the circle pop, that means the fact that we are moving yet again into that very strong compound that's just going to be to the southwest of water treatment. That means that Tianba, Jinji, Daily Trade, Tailu all going to have to make some moves. Yeah, Tianba able to find an angle onto an onyx as the anchor for Donawa out there. Page under pressure. Page, can he get the tool? Oh, he does! Big play coming up from Page. Going to go ahead and secure that one. Realize the fact that, okay, okay, what else is going to be going on around me? Tailu now going to be gatekeeping him out, but the the other two members of SSG are back behind those other two Tyloo members. But that's a huge play here for Paige. He opens up so much space for himself, and now they've got Tyloo potentially pinched. Here comes Gen G. Late rotation, been playing very edge, as we suspected, but great shots from Pow Pow. Almost Ooh. taking them out. Oh, there we go. Just going to go ahead and follow in Gen G. Not a lot of options for them to work with high ground. It's going to be Tiamba that's going to be harassing in. Even if they do manage to creep a bit more into the circle, that's just going to be Donovan that's going to be in front of them. Jin is just getting ripped apart over here. Yeah, making these 5-5 DMR sing. Paige is going to find another of Ty Lu. If he can find that second one, he's going to get the solo wipe of Ty Lu by himself. Genji trying to scramble, get the smokes out so they can make the recovery over to their fallen comrades. Let's see if they can get DG over there. No, they cannot. They're just too good right now. Tiamba, pinpoint accuracy. Now aggressively moving into their position, it's going to be Pow Pow just right down that hillside. You can see it's going to be Song Jong. Going to go ahead and have to hop inside of a vehicle of his own, move away from that hillside, but that's going to open up to day trade as well. I don't know where he can even go. He's just going to have to send it through all of this as Tiamba's just walking through and mopping up the knocks. That's just crazy good shooting for Tianba, and Genji pays the price. Sung Jong going to try to find anything he can in this next circle, and there is not much. There's shacks, there's buildings. He's going to opt enough. for the shack. Yeah, that'll do. Well, no, it won't. it was good enough. No smokes to cover. Now Tianba on the warpath, trying to get it, get it done against Donawa as well. Okay, Donovan having left that compound, realizing that they've got the control point to play from. They're going to go ahead and shift in, get high ground advantage as well. So it's going to be up there, but it's going to make it a bit Ooh. more complicated. The bounce on that nade was almost catastrophic. Oh, now he's caught out in the open, though. A few smokes to help him a little bit. Now they're going to try to return the favor. Let's see if Tiamba's nades are on point. Day trade is just to the north of this, not getting too involved just yet. But day, it does look like Belmont might be creeping in back behind what's going to be going on with Tiamba. So, Donawa might get a reprieve in just one moment. Off position, new circle does pop. It stays pretty much centered up. So, we'll have to keep an eye on how the next set of repositions are going to be coming into play. Now, then, it's going to be Tiamba lined in and multiple members coming up. Day trade right back behind him. They do get spotted down. It's going to be Linchu that gets it up. Man, Tianba is on fire already. Coming out the gate strong, just like they did at the beginning of the tournament. But a return grenade from Flash keeps Tianba at bay. Tianba's having to space out, very afraid of those nades right up against the blue zone. There's also going to be some T5 shots that are coming in. But Donawa isn't aggressing on the back side of this one just quite yet. They needed a moment to reset. So it's going to be 7-7 seven, seven off on the side oh. angle, just putting in some work. Absolutely disgusting sprays. As now they're going to come in, get a few flushes, pow pow. Dangerously close to bleeding out ZYY on his knees as well. Five kills already for Tiamba. Oh, it's going to be a problem, though. Here it comes. Danawa on the high ground. So Luke's going to go ahead and flush out. Pow, pow. And the control on angle is so big right now for Danawa. They can really just kind of pop their way down inside this one, do as much damage as they want to. But it looks like they might be eyeing a bit more of the circle. Instead, let this firefight happen and instead just go ahead, position up, and wait for them to come to them. And I really like this move from Day Trade. Even though it didn't work out for them, they don't have great options into this next circle. So they need to go for points. They tried to third party a fight. Fair play. Yeah, they go down 
down, but it's, in my opinion, absolutely the right move. Tianba's just too good right now. You just have to be proactive. There is no other option. If there's a fight happening, you need to exploit. You cannot make these rotations cleanly if you're not making sure to clear the area around you as much as humanly possible. But that does lead to a lot of these three-way fights that we've been seeing be just so dramatic. Oh, that need right on top of CC. Yeah, really good stuff here from 17. The first barrage a little bit off. Now here comes Twisted Minds with a barrage of their own. Non under pressure, has to prone down, trying to go for the heal. Perfectix, a rainbow. It's going to go a bit too far. Man, this dip that 17 Gaming is playing from is buying them the space that they need. There's also a crossfire going down into the NH and Twisted Mind positioning. That is going to be V7 as well as T5 just taking harassing shots at every single person that steps up onto this angle and stalled out everything. It's going to be NH trying to move more aggressively <laughs> in their defense. Heaven going to go ahead and get involved in what's going, going on the edge with Kickstart. This is just a multi-tiered fight. I love the backup driving there, but a good headshot from Shao Bay with the SLR. Going to find Batulins looking for one more and he's going to get it. Just trying to defend the line right now. That dip for 17 Gaming providing some sight lines for them to work with. Simper 12 9, the last one's up. Trying to see how they can maneuver through this one. And it is just getting scarier by the moment. Meanwhile, Twisted Minds just dropped down the belly. is crawling forward. Trying to navigate the smokes and just dropping any utility on anything that moves around them. V7 trying to keep Sonics off this fight as well. On the other side, New Happy. Nan still trying to poke around the smoke. Spiral, is he going to recognize that he's got a player right up above him? So far, hasn't been able to see it. Got to be careful. I think he's finally spotted out. Going to go for the spray in between. And Ooh. there we go. Spyro does manage to get that kill. Now, what do you do with it? You still have 17 Gaming in front of you as the circle is now shifted directly into that hillside you were talking about, Paper. Yeah, and FaZe might be able to take full control of it if they can keep Sonics and Cerberus off their backs. Sonic still dusting it up with V7. A grenade to the face of Gumin. Going to back him off momentarily. The circle going to make it a little bit more difficult here for V7. They're going to have to go uphill, potentially into the sight lines of 17 and Twisted Minds to try to get into this next circle. V7's pathing just isn't really much to work with. Cerberus going to give them some assistance, though, and go ahead and get the knock onto H1, and now that's going to open up some pathing that seven, uh, V7 can exploit. Uh, V7, though, you can see getting harassed by way too many different angles. That's going to be 17 Gaming as well as Twisted Minds getting the crossfire into this one. Tickleton's just hopped inside of a vehicle, and he's just sending it right down into phase, and that's not going to work too well. Sonics are going to get eliminated. Yeah, Donawa as well couldn't find any purchase in this circle, so they go down early in eighth place. Can at least get a placement point there. The blue zones Ooh. are out here. The return fire just comes up short, nicely cooked, but Twisted Minds too wise to the plans of 17. A knock and a flush for Rossita Jr., the veteran player for Theraton 5. This is why this compound is so ridiculously strong. Look, it just controls everything that is up on top of this hill. Ross is going to go ahead and get the knock in yet again, and it's going to be Twisted Mind seeing if they, maybe they can pick something up. Xiaowu's not going to let too much more of that happen, so he does manage to fend for the time being, but he's going to have to walk right into T5 sightlines, man. V7 able to get their reses, so they're all four up. All this fighting on the backside, but Ooh. such good shooting from Xiaowu, able to get the drop shot headshot. Just defending line, realizing he's probably going to go down. How many members of V7 can he potentially take with him? Even that, though, he is stalling out V7 from making the rotation oh, that they want to go they for shot right out here. Of the air. They shot the molly out of the air. Great awareness there from V7. Okay, a pace kind of resituating. T5 providing some support. Jawu's like, thanks, I'll go ahead and get, take that point. I appreciate it. Two kills, five overall for 17 Gaming, and they're presently in first place. But, man, this is about to pop off any second now. He's disgusting. He's hitting heads like every time with these sprays. Finally, Tosi with the Dragonov going to send him out. But what a nice piece of work there for Shawu. V7 is going to be limping into the circle where T5's already got just such a dominant position. You can see what the top of that hillside is going to be set from across the circle. And now, Cerberus, you are inside the zone, but James is playing low inside of that shack, waiting to see if anybody moves in. And like you were talking about, this line, positioning that FaZe is playing from is going to be so strong. And V7 wants to try to exploit, but it is going to be scary. Yeah, there's a little bit of a ridge on the side of this that you might be able to keep yourself obscured from FaZe. The problem is, is Cerberus is still up and running, and they might opt to just go for V7 to take points off of you. And I think V7 aware of it. They need to deal with Cerberus first, then they can worry about trying to get further into this game. Patiently waiting out. Circle is going to pop away from T5's compound, and now FaZe has near on infinite control of the situation. Cerberus going to go ahead and finish themselves out. Nobody takes down Cerberus except for Cerberus, and now V7. <laughs> what, oh, what are you going to do, man? Only Cerberus puts Cerberus in a corner. That's, That's right. <laughs>
I, I mean, that's the, the smart play here for Cerberus. They can't get down off that hill. They don't have a vehicle. There's no way in heck. I'm sure they're very low on smokes. Now, the real question for me here into this late game is going to be, what does FaZe's utility look like? Because we take a real quick look back uh, at the, the shots from Hemos. Going to get Sol and Donawa eventually falling there on the edge. Not much, much, not much else they could do. That shack is a death trap. There is a recess in the hillside that T5 can try to lean into that gets them some space away from B7 as well as getting them a sight line into what's going to be going in the lower section of the hill where FaZe is going to be positioned up at. And yet, yeah, now they're starting to exploit that position pretty efficiently. FaZe, though, realizing it, realizing the crossfire. V7 wants to use this opportunity to see if they can get a kill of their own. V7 could also try to crest up the hill, move this one, but Vex is going to be moving high ground and is going to be defending this one up. Well, FaZe wisely kind of cut off this angle on the hill mm -hmm. that would have allowed V7 to maybe get in. Instead, they're going to have to fight tooth and nail and hope that T5 maybe helps them out a little bit so they can get pretty deep. Tosi already in the boo, heaven down. Uh, there's just nothing left for V7 to do. And this is why James is back here. It's just an open angle for him to try to exploit. Problem is, man, he is just getting harassed from so many different areas. Every single time he goes for something, it's going to be somebody that goes up and goes for a peek onto him. But Vex, though, he wants to open up this game. He wants this first round to be in FaZe's favor. T5 going to reposition away from it, shift in 2-2 split, as it is a straight-up 4v4. But this is huge. FaZe has bought themselves a lot of space. And they've got the better side of the circle. Daraton 5 is going to have to regroup, kind of get their bearings, maybe pick up a little bit of extra utility, smoke the edges of the hillside to make sure that FaZe doesn't have easy peaks up and over. Doesn't matter. FaZe still finding damage. Hatsawat taking a headshot up on top of that house. Eventually, he's going to have to leave the safety of this structure. Oh, and Corexi still has five nades going into this stage. Good luck, T5. This is going to be just absolutely nuts if you can make this one happen. But Bath and Pong is going to hop inside of a vehicle. Looks like he's just going to go and crest very far over the other side. Thanagol takes down Corexi. Nades now gone on that. Path and Pong's new angle really going to open up this hillside. Gustav Fex have to be very, very careful as T5 has the numbers advantage. That's a huge angle to open up, though, for T5. It gives them a lot more breathing room and not only the man advantage here. Now the nades start to rain. Jeems on the anchor point trying to lock things down, keep T5 from being able to push over that hill comfortably. So much of this is going to be what can James do from that position. He has to be there to provide support for his teammates, feeding that information over Ooh. the moment. They step over, and there you go, James. You knock on Rosted. That is going to slow this one back down. As Thandall does look like he might be leaning that direction, but I don't even know. Maybe just pick up some of the meds utility that might be sitting on him at this point instead. Looks like they, you know what? Are they going to commit it to a res on that one? Surely not. I think they're going to try for it. Fex wants to do something about it. And what better player to have on this angle but Hatsuwa going to get Gustav. Jeems can't do anything about it. Just finding the vulnerabilities. That's all T5 is trying to do. They're shifting into new positions, forcing 1v2s, and just exploiting time and time again. Fex needs to make something happen in retaliation. It's going to be so much information being fed over from Jeems. But Fex is going to get spotted out. He's going to go down. Now it's just Jeems, and you can see T5 feels it. They're sending it down the hill. They have got to be careful. They don't want to line in 1v1. Path and Pong wants to get the knock onto this one, finish out the game. But you can see Jeems got the nade prepped. It's going to go out. Not going to do enough damage. You get the knock. Can he make the miracle happen? It's going to be Path and Pong. Already ready to go for the spray. T5 takes the first game. And in front of the hometown crowd, T5 takes game number one of the grand finals here at PGC. Oh, man. And let's be honest, T5, that was a dangerous game for them. There was nothing really down that hillside that was working in their favor. Just leaning in, clinical plays, making sure to separate out FaZe's defense. Really smart stuff. And, and FaZe played it as well as they could. It's just yeah. T5 was really, really smart about their timings, about their groupings, about their spacing. They never gave FaZe any opportunities to punish any of the knocks they went and over. I'm scared. T5 now has a points advantage off the start. Lord only knows how they're going to try to exploit that one. Let's go ahead and throw it over to our analyst desk to move into the next set of games.
The energy in the stadium is electric as the hometown heroes come away with the first chicken dinner. It's Theraton 5. Let's take a look back at the highlights. Yeah, beautiful. And of course, T5, because they're the fifth guy mm. is the home crowd yeah, cheering true, for them, right? Yeah, they were, of course, fantastic. It popped off. But also, when they had that northern circle pop, and they had to get out of the compound. I yeah. was like, what's gonna happen here? Like, are they actually gonna gonna get held up by face? But they had some amazing peaks. They played the two versus ones fantastically there. And yeah, team, not much teams could do in the end. He was the anchor. He was supposed to be making sure that once they got over the ridge, then they're gonna get popped. But they just took the, the peaks earlier. And of course, it's a super hard circle to play. Yes. This, the whole kind of water treatment canyon or whatever yep. you want to put it where, you're, you're, it's just, it's hell. It's You have to drive through an absolute nightmare yep. of compounds that are just so hard to crash. I mean, if you've ever driven through upstate Texas, like it's just a long strip. I'm sure most of the viewers have. Nothing, right? my, my point is, it's just it's just a rough area. There's nothing to see. There's no cover. Uh, and there it's on five. They got a circle. It worked out for them. They got there and met and grabbed it early. It was in, it was a good play and buffed by the audience. No way around it. Welcome back to the studio. My name is Toppies. I'm joined here by Avenger at the desk. And uh, over there are a lot of T5 fans. And yeah. I will say, it was almost like every time we started to see them stopping, uh, 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 getting a knock on someone or getting even damaged, they would just go bananas. And I think that... I mean, how can that not pump you up as a player, right? For sure. For, and also, we have to remember, though, this is uh, the, they're looting around here, water True. treatment and all the... Home circle, side. as you say. Home circle, yeah. But also, they were on a, in an extremely greedy split, right? Yeah. They had a 1-1-2, one, one, where they had the kind of so the southern cigar compound. They mm -hmm. had the west high ground compound as well. So they were able to really close this one out here. And yeah. then they're able to just kind of decide, okay, let's go with the best compound of the next circle pop. You have some teams that are backfilling. But yeah, of course, coming in here, eight kills. Eight kills is a decent amount, considering that you are in a situation where you have, you like, you have to get out of the compound. They were stealing a few kills. You saw always 17 gaming. They've mm -hmm. got a few knocks, but they're able to, to close this out. Phase to another side. Like when you are in this canyon of nightmare, you're not going to be able to get more kills than those that are actually going to be trying to drive through things. Then, although it's going to be popping up with three, Ross of the Junior, 642 damage for him. So, yeah, let's see who's going to be the man on the map. I mean, Hatsawa puts out a good amount of damage as well. But Thompong did a great job of playing that anchor in that role, got sure. two kills. He was sort of finishing what his, other, what his teammates were starting. I mean, they had good communication. They held against the couple of pushes oh. and Thanadol will be officially the man of the match in the first game of the PGC 2023 Grand Final. And nice. in an interview before the game started today, they asked T5, how do you, what's your plan for the final? And he said, we didn't expect to get here. We oh. have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what to do now. Now look at these guys. They came into this thing. It's awesome to be playing at home. We don't expect the grand final. Now winning the first chicken dinner of the grand final. Oh, it's got to be incredible. Yeah, that feeling is just like winning in front of your like family, friends, mm -hmm. home to hometown. It's just, yeah, it's crazy. Let's see what they can do with it, though. These are the kind of circles where, and the, the kind of games where we're yeah. always like, okay, this is the game you're supposed to win. I want to see you winning the games you're not supposed to win, where you're fighting against the curveballs, yeah. or fighting against all the hardships that are going to be sent you through with, with the with hot circles and what can happen well, through the RNG of the game. It's true, because this circle, I, I think it was an anomaly. It's, it's almost an anomaly for Miramar. When we talk about starting on Miramar, it's right. great because there's all these folds and places for teams to find places to hide or work out of there wasn't any of that here it was a very orangle-esque feel for sure for phase though a game like this they're like yeah. this is our game to win the, and this True. is where you have to stand strong like this is where your mental gets changed a little bit right because if the sure if the circle go into the compound it's hard right. it's like hard to fight this went to them they're they're 100 the comps in that team is going to be like guys this is a free win we have to close this one out but when you have a team that are you, like you're winning, yeah. you're you're losing all your run versus one. Like that's where your mental has to really be strong for sure. Another thing about standing strong, uh, Veronica Seven and Luminosity Hot Drop. They didn't really lose anybody. No. Do you think this happens again? And did it cost them anything? I, I think so. Yeah, it cost them time. It cost them loot. It's it's uh, a rough situation to all here because you want me as you're on yourself, and right. also they in a situation where Luminosity they kind of want to push Serpera south of Cantara. They want to make sure they have a lot of space, have a lot of cars, and yeah, interesting if they're gonna do it again or if they're just gonna be ending up sharing. Min and, and graveyard kind of east-west split that would be well, somewhat bad loot but well let's see let's yep. see where the plane goes we got a lot of miramar matches let's see if the hot drops continue or what chaos is in store it's our second match on the dusty dunes of miramar let's get it underway 
more Miramar, more better, as the plane path is definitely way, way better. We're going to be coming in just south of Resort and then cutting up around Oasis. So instead of a much more northern lean, this is a, a pretty fair plane path. Yeah, this is pretty nice for Miramar. This is absolutely something nobody's going to complain about too, too much. There's no drop spot uh, that isn't really available on this for your main ones. So even like El Pozo for Gen G shouldn't be a problem as no one else likely to be dropping in that direction is SSG already out of the plane heading towards Impala. Yeah, certainly my eyes are towards Minas Generales uh, as Hadesco was alluding to because there could be some dust ups there, but it seems like for now they've sort of drawn a line in the sand on that road in between the graveyard side and the Minas side. Yeah, the issue is as we see this continue to develop, one of these teams is going to start needing some points. And just a matter of how much do you want to go ahead and enforce that will is audience definitely vibing on what happened inside the last game uh, I'm yes I had a great time with that one I mean T5 they're able to really utilize their high ground very nicely uh, recover from some potential nice knocks and I mean you know again you have like a player like James on anchor there and we saw that he's very clean with those mm -hmm. shots very steady hand the player with the most LAN experience in this lobby is James. He has played at every single global event that we've ever had in PUBG Esports, so certainly he's a player you want in that situation, but T5, again, using their, their priority positioning to perfection. This time, Vengeance goes in the way of V7. They're going to go ahead and pick themselves up the car and deny it from LG. Circle goes yet again very far north. Uh, this time around, though, keep your eyes on specifically the crater fields, that factory area, and the hillside, because that really vertical section, we see a lot of teams like Emergency pick up there, get some information, and really just harass down on their opponents. Yep, that's going to be kind of a, a key component to the early part of this game, definitely, Matt. And we'll see exactly where the circle goes. I don't what expect it to, like, hard shift down towards that same area. This. Yeah, yeah, what, what, what? Uh, P.O. and Chewy uh -huh. sharing a compound is... Yeah. I don't think that P.O. likes to share, though. No, he does not. I, that is the least P.O. thing I can think of, is sharing any section of this but map. But this is, yeah, and this is pretty early, so I don't think this is, like, typical P.O. things, you know, like where he's out there trying to hunt someone down, but he's still going to find it. I I'm sub I thought maybe Chewie would have seen this or figured it out, but somehow P.O. snuck underneath him and got the better of him, and it is, in fact, P.O. things. Okay, so... Picks up the kill, also gets some more territory control for his teammates as they are still over in Pozo itself. Reinforcements are going to come over. I believe it is going to be, yep, Song Zhong. So he's going to go ahead and have some friends just in case there is some retaliation. But I don't see that as happening anytime soon. No, 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 no. There, uh, there's really nothing Petrocore Road can do about this uh, in the near future. Maybe in a couple minutes they'll find the opportunity to strike back, but... We'll I'm see. shocked by that stat, given the fact Which that Group one? A was ridiculously stacked. That was yeah, it was a treat to watch. It was a group of death. I mean, it was essentially a mini grand final. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That that the Group A was, I think, by most people's reckoning, the stronger of the two groups, and it it, it did come out that way. Uh, but you never know. Sometimes teams' forms aren't necessarily what we would expect. But at this point in PUBG esports, mm -hmm. I mean. We've got pretty decent reads on everybody. And speaking of decent reads, Tanadol might have one on the day trade here. T5, but this is Thailand versus Thailand, Matt. But this is low economy. I didn't see a vest. Uh, I mean, he's rocking an AK. Not a lot really else that he can do. Full reinforcements now coming in for day trade is, uh, yeah, there are a couple of T5 members over here, but how much support can you really get out of it? You can see the day trade is sniffing this out on the opposing side as well. Nurens, who yet again has his family here with him, is cheering him on as going to try to see if they can take a stab at the squad that just won that last round. Yeah, Tanadol out there messing with sound cues and day trade here not biting on any of the bait that he's trying to set up. And that might be better uh, for T5 in this case because I don't know if they've realized that the full force of day trade is already here. Hatsawat inside of that shack just proning down, waiting things out. And that grenade was close enough that they either heard or saw him get in here. And now... You know, this is this is dangerous, but he's got that AK. A butterfly flaps its wings in day trade, and now you can see that we have had to have T5 move up aggress and try to make sure to defend their teammates. This opened up more space for Petrocore Road to try to exploit, though, as they're going to be coming in just south back behind where we see T5 position at. And so just really walking around over there bought a lot more information and space for these other teams that really didn't have a good opportunity due to T5's positioning. Yeah, this is huge for T5, man. Well, we can talk a lot about what's going on with T5, but let's go ahead and listen in what they've got going on themselves. I don't understand the work that we've done. We still have a lot of work. We still have to keep the information and keep the house in the Grand Final. I feel like I'm excited. As much as I'm a part of the APEC. If 
ถ้าไม่มีอะไรผิดพลาดมันจะเกิดขึ้นในปีนี้ครับเพื่อนร่วมทีมครับขอแค่มีความเชื่อมั่นครับ Small problem with if you believe in your teammates is everybody here is trying to believe in their teammates. And I like some anime and the power of friendship, but you also got to make sure that you're bringing your A game with that skill. No doubt, and they're going to get a gift here that they're able to convince Daytrade to back off because the the guns and the Akutrama onto those guns was severely lacking for T5. You know, we didn't even see any sight as we see Twisted Minds getting sight in the Genji, but we didn't see any sight. Uh, on one of those Mark 12s, there was an ump in the mix, so clearly the loot was lacking for T5. Yeah. And I'm shocked. Who, who would have, seen this would have thought Petulans is up on top of a giant rock on Miramar in the north, really just poking teams around him, getting information, feeding it over to his team. I, I don't think I've ever seen this before, Paper Thin. No, never. No, no, no. We, did, we haven't nicknamed him the Mountain Goat for a reason, and he uses those motorcycles to perfection. Yeah. He's got great angles and a crash here onto Aix left. Based off the information being provided, and you can see Aix left making sure that he can try to get into a new point. He needs to defend up something. Nothing really happening just quite yet for him. Ming gonna go ahead, approach in, but Ming is gonna go down. Spyro is gonna go ahead and find this one, get the flush in. Now Aix left in a lot of trouble. He is firmly surrounded, but we know he can make some big plays. Listening into the footsteps, knows where the positioning is coming out from. Look at this, playing back away from it. Those footsteps are gonna get read by the opponents. Good for some shots and doesn't quite get the knock and Exlev now going to start dancing around making sure that he can keep a couple of buildings some cover to work with but cannot find the revealed angle just quite yet has to step away one more time flash no vision to be had oh! does get the knock that was wild I can't believe he turned on that I thought he was dead to rights now they are going to finish him off it's a nice play here by Exlev to try to buy time but the rest of Petricor Road not really able to get involved. You can see Summers holding on to a Mark 16. So again, some of these teams trying to take positioning early, trying to get ahead of the curve, are suffering with their loop because of it, and they really aren't going to be confident to get involved in these fights. And we're getting that carryover from the loser's bracket with Twisted Minds. This is more of that aggressive play style, believing the fact that their numbers advantage and the information set over from Batulans will buy them what they so desperately want. LG didn't have the best first game, let's be honest off of it. Did manage to pick up a couple of kills, but this time around going to be right next to a very weakened Petrocore Road. Yeah, LG, though, this could be a pretty good position, yeah. depending on this next circle. We'll see exactly what it does. Uh, a lot of the teams still making their way through. A lot of our uh, more edge-heavy teams, like Gen G, Tyloo, New Happy, all coming in a little bit late to the party. I mean, Aix left doing what he can here. That, that's just, just muscle memory. Man. I don't know. Yeah, he's he's crazy accurate. He's crazy good. He, his, his reflexes, his instincts are next level. Uh, but just, no, again, no one there to help him, so he's on his own and has to make a miracle play, and, and Twisted Minds is just too smart for that. Yeah, uh, again, so much of that counter movement that he was trying to make was getting fed over, probably from that high ground advantage. A lot to be seen there is a more settled circle right now is what we're going to be looking at. Ty Lu going to need to make their way into the zone, but it looks like they're coming in that Pozo line. And H pretty much inside the zone now. It's just going to be December 12th, actually just now crossing. Is Donald going for a very northern wrap and maybe moving into that Oasis line? We'll have to keep an eye on this one, but also the area that they're at over in the northwest, very strong, provides a lot of information, is there's a lot of verticality inside the circle. Yeah, absolutely. So Donald is going to have quite a bit of space to work with, at least initially, so they're not going to be harassed and, and kind of bullied in the early parts of the game. NH now pulling up towards V7 as Space Station just... Uh, given some parting shots to Cerberus as they drive by. Kind of curious if New Happy is going to dust it up uh, with this 2-2 split that V7 has set up around the water treatment. Uh, but otherwise, maybe a little bit of contestion here between Tianba and Daytrade. Just jockeying for that high ground. And this positioning means the fact that Daytrade in that high ground position not really being able to uh, assert authority on some of these other teams rotating. And 17 Gaming, Donovo are both exploiting that. They're really just wrapping around the other side of Quaria, just dodging pretty much anything that can kind of be brewing outside this one. So unofficially, both teams thanking Lin Shu and what he's doing and just kind of peeking up over this hillside and forcing Daytrade to play the other side. And an interesting kind of uh, utility setup there for Lin Shu. Three frags, one molly, no smokes. So he's looking to find a pick and get a kill and kind of get the ball rolling again early for Tianba. That seems to be the name of the game for them. Start, start hot and then try to ride that into the late game. Just like we saw, again, with them in the group stage, they were on fire all throughout, winning three games in the first day. They are absolutely 
a force to be reckoned with, especially with that young gun ZYY popping off like he did on day one. So 17 moving into Oasis, which I like, because, you know, I'll take me an Oasis game. Thank you very much. New Circle is about to pop. Where are we going? At? Ooh, Cabraria. Ooh. We got Factory. We got Oasis. We got that position that T5 is playing pretty centered up. This is a very fun circle. Yeah, this is great. We, we are guaranteed a very different circle here. So that's, first of all, awesome. Second of all, this is a lot of. there's a lot of playable stuff in here. There's a lot yeah. of hills. There's a lot of compounds. Uh, so there's a lot to work with for these teams. So early on, uh, you aren't going to see maybe that mid-game heavy edge fighting. Maybe it's going to be a little bit more uh, contestion for some of these power positions early. Sonic's already trying to get up on top of this hill and secure this compound. But this is where the death funnel is going to be at. Petrichor Road over here. LG, Sonic's T5, B7, NH, potentially even and Gen G all pathing right in back behind each other, but they're all scouting, realizing, okay, the squad's moved forward. We can kind of shift over just a bit on this other territory. You can see that's why LG's navigating this the way that they are. They're trying to play this valley in between two very strong points, but that also does mean the fact that they're really denying themselves a lot of information. Absolutely. V7, though, going to have to, I think, rethink this spot potentially. Yeah, okay, good. They are going to back off down the hill a little bit. They were pretty close to the Sonics territory. The Sonics were absolutely not going to have any of it. We still Pio. have the watching what's going on with, uh, I believe, Pio now directly below Batulins, and that could be... That's uh, two people that really like to play by themselves and having to become friends. <laughs> I mean... Uh, I'm not sure who I favor in that battle. That's a, that's a pretty close one. Both very, very intelligent players. Uh, you know, about a similar amount of experience between the two of them. Sure, Pio has a title. Nautix finding a knock on Shen. Donawa does not want to share this rail yard too much if possible. Plus, it's a 2-2 split. So, these two players here, Salutin and Onyx, need to really strut their stuff and try to keep Tai Lu at bay because Tai Lu... Again, they usually don't like to fight early, but man, once they do fight, they're a force to be reckoned with. We didn't get to see it on screen in the last game, mm -hmm. Matt, but Shen ended up wiping the three last members of SSG by himself. Well, this is the point, chat, where you get to decide, are you a good person or are you a bad person? Whoa. If you're a good person, you want the circle to go to the southeast and you want the players to be able to have their high ground advantages. If you're a mean, evil person, you want this to go really hard shifted up into the north because it oh. is only really Dino and Space Station Gaming that are going to be up there. And right now, I'm not going to lie, I'm leaning towards that dark side of the force. Oh, I'm a, I'm with you. Uh, just uh, fear, anger, hate, I'll take all of it right now. If it means that that circle goes north, absolutely would love it. Batuans, very aware of Gen G's position underneath him, but not a lot he can do from here. I mean, he has one frag grenade. He's got the opportunity to maybe... Uh, get a double knock if he's really, really good with it, really well placed, really well timed. But the issue is, is that if it isn't, well, they are just going to drive off. So well, now it's not a concern. I want to point out that while we see Jinji regrouping with their other duo, Batulans has actually had oversight on the other part of this duo for a long time. And that's the benefit of this position. Look at how far Pio is moving. And this is still technically Twisted Minds controlled territory. Yep. And, and this allows Twisted Minds to kind of be... The, they have the initiative here. They can decide what to do because they have a much better idea of where Gen G is versus where Twisted Minds are. Yeah, they know where Batuans is. And the other three members, maybe they have a decent idea that they're in that compound. But, you know, this gives Twisted Minds the ability to kind of decide, do we want to punish this 2-2 split? How do we want to do it? We did it, baby. We did it. We go north. We lose Oasis, but we keep Cabraria. Cabraria actually has a lot of really cool walls. And like you were talking about that train station a second ago, that's still going to be in play up into the north of this one. Is Okay, Death Bundle, I don't even know. I'm going to guess it's this area to the southeast. But we have V7, LG, Sonics, T5, Petrichor, Rhodes, Remnants, Gen G, Twisted Minds, NH, Cerberus, all having to make some type of rotation. And FaZe just says, you know what? Easiest way to do this, just cut right through the middle before anybody else. Yeah, they're trying to get through, and they are going to find a split apart Tianba ZYY kind of understanding where players are but Fex Thanks. on the cu cutoff angle takes him down scoops up the point barely keeping jeans alive this is the punishment on positioning for how we see Tiamba and the way that they're set up, right? This is a 2-1-1 one, one, technically, and just as fast as that circle pop, yeah, you get territory control for the time being, but the moment that circle pops, you need to regroup. Elsewise, FaZe is going to exploit that in a second. Yeah, great identification there by FaZe the, that there was a really, really 
lightly defended compound there as V7 is going to take to the sky to try to find something. Good opportunity here for some space. The other team I have a concern about, Matt, is Space Station Gaming with their spread. <laughs> they are really spread out right now as Hatsawat is going to go down. Snaker's going to find that. Petulin's here. Still watching Genji. Genji shifted directions. Now they're out in the open because that vehicle's oh, gonna blow. Oh my god. So much popping off over there. Now, back into this position. You can see that 17 Gaming was trying to make rotation pretty close into where T5 is gonna be at. V7 is gonna be up on top of Denoa as their approach is gonna be getting picked apart on their landing. So emergency pickups being their own set of problems as Heaven does land right in front, but good exchange between the two. Yeah, Donawa. Trying to defend, trying to keep Anonix alive. Tosi going to do what he can. Salute can't quite find the, enough of the spray. He took some damage from Fex in the back. Actually going to be the one to find the knock in the flesh. Tosi trying to punish this. Going to put a grenade around the corner. You can see Anonix trying to scoot out of the way, but I don't think he can get out of the way of that. Oh, actually, it bounced around the side. But right now, Loki and Soul don't feel comfortable to try to get over to save the IGL of Donawa. All right, now Loki making the push in. He wants to see if he can secure a bit more positioning, but Tosi is going to go ahead and take down Anonix, and that's the end of that adventure. And SSG punishing Donawa here. So V7 went for a risk, and speaking of risks, Tianba uh -oh. still maintaining a wide split and still getting punished for it. That in ended just in time for Sonics as Day Trade was cresting the hill back behind them, so that was going to be pounced on in just one second. You can see Puchil's just right back behind Sonics in the way that they're lying into this one. Um, now, getting a bit more spicy in some couple of areas here. We did see 17 Gaming that was stacked up with T5 just a moment ago. LG is going to be back behind them over into the east. We have Gen G that's going to be limping in over into the west in that area just next to Cabraria. Oddly enough, Tai Lu, the only team that really committed in a Cobraria being pretty rewarded for that. Absolutely. Twisted Minds on the move. Day Trade backing off the initial grenades, not Ooh. taking much damage here as we just continue <laughs> to go north. Right along this road, some hills, some things to work with, uh, but the space between the warehouses where SSG is and where Donawa is is generally pretty flat. There's a little bit to work with on the hillside to the east of it, but not much. This is just about getting kills for a lot of these teams now. They realize that uh, there's not a lot of territory to control inside of this one. So Faye is being a lot more aggressive inside. Diamba is going to get eliminated. Gustav's going to go ahead and make sure to polish that one off. She'll be able to res Corexi depending on how much time that they want to spend on it. Actually already committed into the res. But this area down to the south is where I've really drawn my eye. Sonic's to the north of Day Trade, and it's going to be Twisted Minds in the south. Twisted Minds not going to be probably sticking around for this one. Hopping in a vehicle, they're going to cut in the west. Go back into Cobraria itself. Sonics, though, are getting harassed for day trade. None of these teams committing into a mutually assured destruction stage. Instead, it's just about trying to get control over territory. But meanwhile, we do have LG in H and some oh. 17 members all up on top of each other. A ridiculous spray from CC108. Taking two members of LG down. Flood trying to do what he can. A little bit of a pop flash there from December the 12th. Now he's going to try to wrap around Flood, who is in a very, very dangerous spot as he's out there and he's dealt with really nicely handled here by NH Esports. Just way back in the distance over there is going to be Snakers and not a lot that he can do. Uh, actually, we do also have uh, Suju that's going to be back behind him for 17 gaming. They're going to make his life a bit more interesting and have to contend with. Meanwhile, 17 Gaming does have T5 that's going to be creeping up back behind them. Another solo in Petrichor Road is going to be coming up back behind Suju. This is the party position right now. This is where everybody feels like they're getting kind of pulled the direction of. And this is really interesting. Lil Ghost has an M249. He usually doesn't rock the machine gun. He's not known for it, but he's got one. And Snakers may be about to find out the hard way. But Snakers going to identify Lil Ghost first. So thinking about the grenade, but that's going to wise up Lil Ghost to where Snakers is. Back over to Donawa. Soul has been knocked, so just Loki left. Soul on the outside of the God Compound. I don't know if Loki can get to him necessarily, or at least feels comfortable to do so. So we have Sonics that are going to be crashing in just to the south of this compound where Tyloo is trying to recover, and at roughly the same time that FaZe is going to be over to the west trying to get some high ground to look into what's going to be happening over here. Then it's going to go down. Remember that sneaky solo from Petrichor Road? He manages to pick up something. Twisted Minds going to be wrapping it back behind Day Trade, which is just to the west of where FaZe is going to be positioned up at. T5 is going to spot out Jalbe. Go ahead and take him down. This is just going to be a firefight cascade. Yeah, Pot and Pong trying to do what he can here to salvage some points. There's really no hope of him getting too deep into this game. So the best thing he can do is make life a nightmare for the rest of these teams that are on this eastern edge. I love the fact that everybody on the outskirts of this compound was like, wait a minute, we really don't like day trade. We don't like FaZe's positioning. We want to get rid of them. Twisted Mind's going to backstab back behind all of this, though, and going to be heavily rewarded for it, picking up several kills. Already got a knock. 
they're going to follow it through and now just flash the last one up. I mean, it's the other members for Twisted are still back behind this with different firing lines in. I don't know how FaZe or even Daytrade oh. can recoup off this. I thought Genji might try to third party this fight, but Twisted Minds is just doing it too cleanly. It's not really a great entry into this and a oh. great <laughs> Molly catches Flash. I don't think there's enough time. Yeah. No, sir. Batulin's doing a great job here. Twisted Minds working but this edge to perfection. Here comes Genji like you were talking about. Esther, you're going to be cresting up the hill right up next to him, but it's already been red. Batulin's just using all of his brain power right now. It is just 500 IQ for this guy, making sure to read every movement that's happening on circle. He's still got to win the firefights up and close, though, as Esther got the nades prepped. Corexi is going to get the knock on the backside with Spyro. Here comes nades coming in. Does hit, but doesn't get a knock just quite yet. Utility on both sides going to be raining out, and it's going to be Twisted Minds. going to have to be very, very careful. Yeah, FaZe is hitting him like you were talking about, and now DG sees the shield, gets the shot. Can he get the transfer? Not Ooh. quite. Now just on to Esther, creeping forward. That shield putting in some work right now for Twisted. Utility coming out. Can they get the blind onto this one? Going to go ahead, step around. Thinks the fact that he's got the timing for it, but just can't find the angle. That shield putting Boom! it along, but finally finds it, and Twisted Mind's going to go down. The veteran presence of Esther able to just barely best Perfectix. Perfectix reading that situation really, really well. Guess the angle of Esther, but Esther was just a little bit better with his shots. All right, down into the southeast, we've got FaZe, we've got Sonics, we've got Donawa, and we've got Ty Lou. Summer's not going to be long for this world. He's going to go ahead and get taken out by Snakers, as revealed a moment ago. Snakers, though, mm, you're probably going to go down to the blue where one of these other four teams that are going to be taking some pot shots is. Uh, also, SSG has spotted him out, and you can see the Tracer's coming out from that compound as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he just feeds this one over. It's time to play the heel game like we yeah. saw with the Nonics earlier. Just try to survive as long as you can. There's no getting down that hill without forking over a point to another team. So certainly for Snakers, uh, unless he has a million smokes in the bag somehow, uh, he's just going to have to stay put. And now Cerberus knows that Esther's back here. And Esther, a little bit of the circle to work with, but I'm not sure if there's much this safety. Play. This play is so good. FaZe jumped from their hillside, moved down, and are now trying to control this. But Tongmu's not going to go ahead and relent this position just quite yet. That means that the other duo for FaZe now has to come and provide some support. Tyloo is going to have to be very, very careful as this positioning is getting surrendered quite quickly. But good nade yet again. Tongmu just making sure to hold this position with all of his might. Those nades are just on point. Yeah, this is really good coordination here for Tai Lu. Great communication to make sure that these grenades Again? are being put in. That's a really good Molly keeping <laughs> off there and also catches him trying to close the door. So that's the knock for Jeans. He's going to come back and attempt this res. NH also has spotted this out and they're getting some shots in just on I guess the flank of FaZe, so luckily the walls are going to buy some time for him. Now, Sonic's going to be positioning back behind where we see Ty Lu, but let's not forget that Loki and Danawa are also over here just up on top of this. I don't know how the heck Danawa is still kicking. I mean, everybody has been fighting for this compound, and these two have been able to keep themselves oh. alive across the street in the God compound as we're going to shift FaZe. in towards SSG. Yeah, FaZe wants to finish the fight here. They know that they have him weak, and Jeems finds the perfect timing, Ooh. but the, the sawed off from Zhao Yang gets him. Great job on holding that. Are we going to see Sonics also collapse on the other side, realizing the opportunity is there. Gustav dancing around the outside of this one. Molotov does slow back down the pace of everything. Trying to commit in on the res. Let's see. I don't know how that throwable came out off of it, so we'll have to see in just one moment. Sonics, though, not making a big move. Donawa also not moving yet. But New Happy is playing Arbiter on this fight yeah. between these three teams. Every time Sonics tries to go out, tries to capitalize on these knocks, they get shot at instantly by New Happy. So this is a really tough position for them. Space Station Gaming can just be quiet. They can lock down their compound, make sure Cerberus or somebody doesn't find an angle to try to push you and play for the late game, play for that win. They've got a decent opportunity here. This is just a very tense section of the firefight, and here comes the X Factor in Danawa. Are they going to move into the north? Looks like they do have a vehicle that they work with. They might just opt to go straight out into the west, but that's going to reveal them into Cerberus at any given second. So, Looks like they are going to go ahead and hop in their vehicle. Oh, They're going to get out of this position. They want nothing to do with the, what's going to be happening over here and are going to be rewarded with at least finding a shack that's going to open up a new crossfire angle that everybody that's down in this walled compound is really going to have to deal with. I don't even know if this compound has a name yet. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's a crates, I guess. So that's what it looks like to me is what I would call it. But Cerberus here going to be very aware of Donawa's position because of that Bronco. So not a lot for 
Donawa to do except to stay put and hope that everybody cannibalizes each other out here on the edges. I, was that a micro Uzi I just saw in somebody's hands? I'm not sure. Guns are being swapped here by the Sonics uh, in the background looking to potentially take close quarters fights as Cerberus has lined up along this hillside and just like we saw with NHG Sports, they also oh, uh, want to wait. gain control over this territory. There's a Panzerfaust I think that Sonics have in their hands. There's somebody over there between them and Tyloo does. That is going to be something we're going to need to keep a very close eye on where you might see somebody just go ahead and kamikaze it themselves into this one as Sonics look like they do want to go ahead and go after it. It's going to be, I believe, Shrimzy. Yeah, shrimzy has got himself the Panzerfaust waiting. He's going to go for this peek. If he can time this one right, he can put in some work. Instead, slowly playing around. Shot going to come out. Does connect onto a taunt move. And now Shrimzy just going to follow up. Good spray. Sonics do have a path into the circle. What a play from Shrimzy there. Put in that Panzerfaust to good use. The blue zones to try to flush Donawa out of this, but still enough heals to get through it safely. Car is going to blow up and not in a favorable angle here for Donawa currently. It moves away from the door, so it makes it that much more difficult for them to be safe from the angles of Cerberus. Cerberus knows it. They're going to try to find crossfires inside of here to just cut Donawa apart. So we got FaZe with one member up. Then we have Sonics with two. On top of that, we have Donawa technically with two, but not really. One of them is knocked at the time. The, everybody else sitting on four members. How much control can you get on these hillsides? That's what Cerberus is trying to exploit right now. They know that they have a couple of numbers advantages. They're trying to play into the southern area. They know. They've been paying attention to the kill feed. They're going to try to exploit good toss oh. on that. Narrowly gets knocked away. Soul is going to go down. It's going to be high Moss. It's going to be going after Loki. And really, just everybody that steps into this pathing is getting ripped to pieces. Yeah, that frag had to go in here for Hemos if he's going to be able to finish Donawa off. Loki, the trickster god, so well known for his ability to be KG, but Hisaki's just going to try to drive in, finish the job. Hemos gets the flush onto Soul because of it. Hisaki around the edge, trying to find the angle, trying to see if he can get this grenade in. He is going to do so, and yeah. because he's blocked the door, that should be Loki. That'll bring out the window. Loki's still alive. He, how is he alive? How Finally. is this happening? Oh, my God. How did that happen? He managed to juke that one at just the right moment. That was almost a massive play. Play. He's got uncanny instincts for those kind of plays, Matt. He does it time and time again where sometimes he pulls it off, sometimes he doesn't. This is Shrimsy just being brilliant with that control of that utility, finding that great angle to f use the Panzer. Can they find more, though, is the problem. They still need to creep in. Cerberus is now taking control of the area down to the south, but Aizaki has gone down. Keep in mind, we also do have Gustav that's just going to be the north of this one. Cerberus is going to be playing this outer wall for the time being. NH getting some control over the north and really trying to exploit it. No, oh, yep, Solzy, I don't blame you getting a little bit nervous about that one. Is That one almost scared me. <laughs> Tricky game you have to play here because these smokes are only going to last so long to keep NH's mm -hmm. angle cut off. And you can see as soon as you step out, someone's looking. This time it's actually Gustav from FaZe that catches a little bit of damage in a kickstart, but kickstart quick to retreat back into the safety of the smokes. But Amali hits Gustav and a grenade from kick is going to finish him off. Now NH wants points. Ming Ming good on the opener on to Shrimzy. Kick on very low health, but the grenade's not quite finding the mark. A lot of smokes down over here, so should be some time to work with. Meanwhile, you can see NH just asserting control. SSG over on a different angle doesn't have the cleanest sight line into this one yet, so don't be surprised if they start moving out. And finally, they do. It's going to be Paige also opening up onto this one. So CC on one side of this one. The other member is for NH moving closer by the second. Sonic's just trying to cling to life right now. And let's not forget about Cerberus just now down to two. Is they're still inside that shack. Oh, and this blue zone, so difficult to just re-knock. really good timing from Ming Ming. Reads that res perfectly, forces the heal out of kickstart. And the good news here for Sonics, a couple more smokes in the bag for kick. So he should have enough space here to get him alive. But there's a battle brewing between Roth and December the 12th. Potentially, whoever comes out of that could be the potential winner. Yeah, this could reset everything down from the south. If we see these two squads up to the north really start to battle it out, suddenly now we're going to have some more opportunities. Raw does read this one, gets the shots into December 12th, but not as much as he wants to. Now Throwable is going to be coming out on this side of it, repaint, kind of resetting the pace. We are going to see CC hold this angle. Now reinforcements for NH moving in. This provides an opportunity for Sonics to now maybe reposition, try to find something that they can work with. Paige going to go and shut down Isaki as this is starting to be more and more open control angles for SSG to work with. And SSG wants to bait New Happy into this fight because of that M249 that Pixel has on the flank. They want them to push, but so far, New Epi Esports isn't biting. They're taking their time. They want to clean up all of these kills on the south first and then go for the win. Really maximize their value out of this game. Who's been knocked more, Hisaki or Shrimzy at this point? Because every single time one of them gets rezzed, they just get knocked again, man. They can't even stay alive for a half a second. I love it, man. Here come the blue zones from Pixel. 
trying to soften New Happy up. Now SSG decides maybe we should potentially just take the fight to them. They've got control of a really good ridge. Again, decent damage from Roth, but because of these smokes, they really can't find good angles. Now that's a good grenade from Sharp. Finds the summer of this 12th. Now the bombardment begins a little bit here for Space Station, but they're being very, very cautious. They don't want to overextend into it, but they have got to be careful. Molotov's going to be down, slowing down different angles that they want to play. Pixel's got himself a way to ruin a squad, though. Just got an LMG in his hands. Keep in mind, Paige also not involved in this firefight, and it's one of the reasons why we're probably not going to see SSG make too big of a play in this one, because they have to make sure the numbers advantage is firmly in their favor before they step over. Cerberus is playing the other side of this hill, and a lot of their attention keeps eyeing back in the direction of NH, but they just can't find a good like line of sight to exploit. The good news for them is that Hemos has a pretty good angle onto some members of NH, and here we go. Oh, Pixel. Let this M249 sing, Pixel. See if you can take more members of NH down. They are completely pinned, but I'm not seeing any frags, anything to really take advantage of this for SSG. It's going to have to be done with the guns. So much smoke down over here right now. And Cerberus, IMS wants to make something, but he just cannot do it. Roth tries to go for some shots, but so much utility just coming on the way of it. Super 12 does manage to take down Roth. Sharp Shot wants to get something out of it, but it's going to be Pixel absolutely unloading. Down. Can he get more? No! New Happy manages to close it. Uh, New Happy, how do they recover from this? They took two knocks. One from Hemos, one from Sharpshot, I would believe, with a nade. And now it is all Hemos. Does he Can have he do a it? little Tycon in him here? Can he do it? He wants to exploit it. He realized that there's multiple knocks. He wants to get in before it kicks off. But no! It is going to be NH Esports that picks up the second round. Perfectly controlled here for NH on the north side. That gives them the win. It was a little bit dicey there towards the end, but they're able to stabilize and come through. SSG might be kicking themselves a little bit, Matt. They had a good opportunity. Yeah, it was right there on the point for it, but they just couldn't get the sprays into the smokes to go the way that they wanted. And I mean, even then, we're still in the earlier sections. Just making it to the top four at least gives you some breathing room to work with. So all the squads that managed to fight their way through that one. Specifically, I want to give a shout out to Cerberus as well as Sonics. Yep. They should have Donald died like five Donald lived yeah. way longer than I thought they would. There is so much to look at inside of that one as I cannot wait to see how the leaderboard is shaking up. So we're going to go ahead and send it over to our analyst desk to walk you through moving into Taco. Game two is done and the dunes are done and dusted, but New Happy or NH Esports comes out with a chicken dinner. Let's take a look at how they got there. It's highlights time. Yeah, and what a crazy Northern Circle, right? We're in a situation here where it's just like all the teams had to move multiple times. There are some teams obviously getting dropped on and it's hard to defend like some of these bigger compounds like the car park compound here, the Danawa, they lost a few players. Yeah. And then, of course, Space Station Gaming, super greedy 2-2 split, manages to get all like four I... players on that northern compound. That's actually the last good one. And then NHG Sports just pops off and absolutely destroys them once they have the opening on it. Of course, insane amount of action on the southern yeah. side because all the teams are like, when we have such a northern circle, there's so many teams that are trying to like yeah. scrape in and salvage their games into the southern side. You gotta assume that shift's gonna come back down, and then right. you got the salvage grouping. So up here at the top, everything seems, seems free. Here we go. Shremzy came through with the uh, noob tube, if you will, but it worked out. Him and Kickstart survived as long as they possibly could. Then we get to the end game, where you know Shremzy again putting in some work, enjoying a lot of time, crawling around as well as they tried to stay in this one. Here's the point, though. SSG, I think, could have pushed New Happy over the top of the hill. They seemed like they were being very. What's the word I'm looking for? Passive, scared, hesitant. Hesitant. It, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. It was no, just no. the the smokes and the and the mollies. It felt like they just didn't want to commit to new happy. So like obviously the stunts are coming out. They're trying to delay the push from there. But right. I would ra much rather see a a aggressive push on the back of those stunts. Mm -hmm. And like they're obviously trying to hurt them towards that side. But like if if new happy gets an opening, if him has gets right. an opening, like if there's some knocks coming on, it's just down to the number straight, but there's also like Roth actually hit quite a lot on that yeah. VX uh, Ox spray, 
he potentially like could have had one or two more knocks and that would have completely turned around that whole Makes game. Sense. But yeah, they, they could have got more out of this, I feel like. It's, uh, so it's a good circle for them. Maybe though. less stop stuns and more, you know, push stuns, right? Yeah, this I like idea. To, I, I, obviously, the way there's multiple styles of trying to play that, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at the top four teams, though, before going to that top. First place here, of course, Energy Sports 10 kills. Four only for server is kind of impressive, though, but they had that Western side, they had some rough fights. Sonic 6 and uh, Base Station there, with only three that's rough in a situation where they actually have those two center compounds. CC 108. I feel like he's really stepped up to the case here after, especially them having only 14 points in winner bracket and having like a struggle here that effectively now they've already had a better run in our grand final that they had in the 12 games of winners. So <laughs> it's impressive to see here from NHG Sports. Of course, the man of match, man of the match is going to be CC108. My question is really, are they going to be able to continue this? Because this right. is arguably a harder lobby than the winner's bracket. And yeah, it, it didn't look good for them there. I mean, I'll say both of our Miramar circles were a bit of anomalies. They were outside right, of our yeah, unique yeah, training sure. phase. 100%. So a lot of the teams, I think, were playing that adjustment game, sort of thinking on their toes. The good news is there's 18 games in the grand final. So if you feel like you had a little bit of a struggle in these first two Miramar matches, there's a lot of runway to get right, your feet right. back under you. New Happy is going to walk away with 20 points off the back of that game. Cerberus, this might, I don't know if this is the confidence buff we wait for them to get, uh, because it felt like they were being a little slower paced in this one. That said, they're at 16. They're in fourth place. They'll have some confidence exactly. to make some moves. Super New Happy still. Esports takes the lead position at 23. T5 falls to two. And FaZe, up there in third place, going to be enjoying that right now. Yeah, for sure. Unfortunately for Day Trade, only zero points so far after two games. Mm. Not this, this start that they're hoping for, of course, especially with this circle. But yeah, it's close. It's yeah. up for anyone. Still, nobody's running away with things. It's not like we've seen the back-to-back the -back openings like we saw in many of our days here at PTC 23. So I'm kind of happy for that. But they're going to get, as you said, anomalies in terms of our circles. And it's been a little bit shifty. So, yeah. I feel like... The I like that. I actually like the curveballs. Yes. Like, you want to see the hardest games played in our grand finals, right? Because right. then that's how you find the best team in the world currently. I don't want to see sponges at don't this see. stage. I want to see it as spread out as it can be so that when we get to the final day, it is an absolute fisticuff race to the big finale. For so sure. let's see if it continues that. Let's see if we get some crazy circles. We're headed to Tago next, which anything can happen. Uh, so that, I think, is the story. How do teams adjust? How do they bounce back? We'll find out as we head over to our next match. It's Tago. Do not go anywhere. Unleash my shopping spree. Duty free from big brands. At all King Power stores. And King Power Online. It's possible. Enjoy great selections, promotions, and privileges. The power of possibilities. King Power. Autobots forces have set up their barrier. They are waiting for sunrise before they release their guard. With my magic, the night will turn. Enemies beware, my era is coming for you. มันไม่ง่ายแต่ไม่ยากที่จะทำเท่าแก่น้อยต้องโจทย์ทุกไลฟ์สไตล์แบรนด์สาหร่ายยอดขายอันดับหนึ่งถ้าสาหร่ายต
We were enemies in battle. It was an honorable kill, an honorable death. Why didn't you take him out? I will kill him when the time is right. It's time for you to die. Miramar is in the past, and now we make our way over to Tego as it is going to be about making sure you can keep your points per game up. And I know a lot of our squads right now really having to deal with like some suffrage and a couple like solo players. Petrichor Road, I think that had Summer over there, Snakers for LG. Hopefully they managed to put up some work because that was a very difficult circle to navigate. Yeah, and games like that really are what gain you positions in the later stages of the event when you can squeak out points and spots where mm -hmm. it's challenging to do so. And that's what makes the great teams great, is they're able to really navigate those situations uh, very well. FaZe Clan, Sonics uh, in particular in that last game, Donoma as yeah. well, had a really rough go of it inside that container compound and were eventually able to scoop up a decent amount of points out of it, uh, putting themselves pretty high up on the leaderboard. Yeah, that was a... A measure in heart, I would like to say, because you had to make sure that you were just, you had to keep your mental up in a situation where it felt like you were just constantly getting a nade dropped on your head time and time again. But all of our players, mental fortitude is absolutely massive as we're also going to have to see how SSG bounced back from that last game as we make our way over to Tego, plane path over Shipyard, ending up really over there just to the west of Song Ah. Yeah, so this isn't a great plane path for Tego based on where teams like to drop on this map. So most teams looking for the western side of the map because of the prevalence of compounds over there. Uh, and then the fact that the shipyard and the airport themselves, uh, teams don't like to drop there. They're a little bit challenging. They're campable. Uh, the rotation paths in and out of them aren't great, especially shipyard. It's really actually pretty difficult uh, to rotate through because the closest bridge is a broken one uh, and you have to go in a very different direction. Now that being said, uh, I can already see teams Wait. dropping in those ge general directions because the plane path is this way. Yeah, I was going to say, Denoa looks like they were kind of gatekeeping this one out just with bodies and parachutes. So Force T5 a bit more into that eastern area. SSG is going to make the position for that airport. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see if we're going to see a committal into going after that northwestern island and go dock. But with the plane path, I would feel that this is going to stay on like the landmass proper. Yeah, we'll see. It just depends. Tego can 
not commit that way, right? <laughs> it can. It just depends. It's just you never know. Uh, so it because like it just has to kind of sneak over there. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty unlikely. It should be somewhere you would think on the main landmass uh, of this, but we'll just see exactly where it goes. I don't see anything super spicy off the rip. Like I said, uh, you know, teams have to take their alternate drop spots based on this plane path. But yeah, yeah. okay. So kind of where uh, you would expect. And, okay, whenever we're looking at this, there's two major key components that we need to be looking at. There is the river, a.k.a. creek, that cuts in just south of Shipyard and is really bisecting a decent chunk of the circle itself. If you're familiar with the Erangel and the, the Georgia Pole River that cuts out over into the east, it's kind of similar to that, but you don't have to swim across it. It's... <laughs> It's shallow enough that you can cross by foot. The problem with it is, is it's just like an interstate. There is nothing for cover there. Once you make your way down in that lower section, you can just get eaten to pieces. On top of that, just to the west of that position and to the south, there's these very wide open fields. So this has got a lot more unplayable than you really think that it does. Yeah, the field's at least a little bit more forgiving uh, in this. Uh, there's some of those really thick bushes as well in those th fields that offer actually a surprising amount of cover. Uh, you may not realize it, but the bushes over there are really oh, good. But Pio. well, okay, Pio got out PO'd here by Gustav. And he was, Pio was way out there. And this time around, not yeah. able to sneak underneath the nose of an opponent. What, about a kilometer away from the squad? I mean, that's just, you live and you die by the PO lifestyle, yep. right? It, sometimes it works, last game. Other times it doesn't work, this game. So uh, we'll have to see how we see the rest of Gen G counterbalance around that as uh, they're presently on the edge, but looks like they're already making a position for a hillside that's just going to be to the south of where we see 17 Gaming at. That Sonic's going to be dropping Kang Nung. Uh, on the eastern side and splitting out into an early 2-2 as you're seeing the western most of the 2-2 trying to gain control over that creek you were talking about, trying to make sure that they have rotation paths across it. Uh, you could drive cars over it. That's the good news about the creek. Even though it is flat, even though it is a little bit dangerous to cross, at least there's paths to do it. Summer getting a lot of damage into Roth. Roth completely isolated. He got out way ahead to do some scouting for SSG and might pay the price. Yeah, they've already got Chewy back behind him as well. Trying to get the meds into a better position. He does manage to do that. Summer not finding the exploitable angle just yet. And that's a good reposition coming out from Roth. He's already separated out. He's going to go ahead and play into that northern area. That means the fact that SSG is going to go ahead and collapse back behind him. Good reposition coming up from Roth. Very heads up. Now Petrichor Road has to re-engage this one much closer with a lot more reinforcements. So will we see Petrichor Road kind of counter move into that? Yeah, Aix left now cutting in from the west. Decent damage to Roth once again already. His, his vests and potentially helmet have to be super beat up. And yeah, SSG yeah. doesn't like it. In fact, getting the knock by Paige from the anchor position in summer should be resible though as SSG is peeling off. I think we also do have I, Sonics taking a couple of shots into this at range. So that might have been the discouraging factor is, man, third, fourth parties have just been the name of the game. You just pounce whatever is weak next to you and no fear in your eyes. So instead, shift away, use the knock as an opportunity to get positioning, and they're back into a 2-2 split. SSG just doing SSG things, man. And they, oh, Pio is driving at this, and he just gets caught on the road, kind of took a bit of a... We found Pio's kryptonite. Uh, yeah. If he's inside of a car, then he doesn't then get a chance easy. to shoot back. That's true, that's true. <laughs> nice little setup there for Gustav. Good angle to take, and Pio is going to pay the price. Day trade, no points yet, Matt, for day trade just yet. It's Ooh. been quiet compared to T5. Uh, the other Thai team in this grand finals who's up in second place after their win on Miramar. Back down here in this position, we can see the day trade is going to be getting pretty close to phase. Uh, tai Lu's going to be coming up back behind them. LG back behind Tai Lu. 17 Gaming, very strong position to play inside the circle. Very centered, high ground, lots of different angles of aggress that they can really deal with. Their heart's content. A couple of teams still hanging out on the outside of this one. Maybe emergency pickups could be a factor that we could be eyeing for them. Donawa being one of those very far up in the north, running a split across shipyard. Yep, Donawa, uh, I think looking to take control of the flat top mountain. Uh, that's to the north of where Petrichor Road and SSG were just having a little bit of a scuffle. Uh, but it's really going to be interesting to see. You know, there's going to be teams that are going to want to maybe take that ahead of them. Snakers with a Groza, absolutely a wonderful find for him. He's already putting up pretty good numbers for mm -hmm. LG, even though they're down in 13th. Uh, you know, he's been able to, like we saw in the last game, squeak out some points. He's gotten a couple kills. So, so far, even though things haven't gone the way that LG would like, uh, he's been a bright spot for them. 
This is a really a, a come up game for a couple of these if they have the potential to make it happen. 17 Gaming, pretty defendable center. Petrocore Road, Gen G. Sonic's already in a decent spot on the leaderboard, but also just to the south of that with FaZe. So FaZe presently in that third place position off of a really good set of Miramar. Now then, see if Day Trade is going to get any knocks out of it. Nope, just going to get some damage on the vehicle, and Ty Lu is just going to stay. Uh, be kind of content with that one, but whoa, Day Trade just denies that one. Belmont says, no, you don't come after me again, but the exchange, retaliation. Shin's going to find him, get the knock. A lot harder to flush, though. Yeah, it's tough to control the angles in Buxansa. There's a lot of opportunities to find counter angles, and Shen... Probably likes to drop here a lot on his own when he's playing because he found a really good one. Belmoth had a straight shot down uh, as they kind of flushed Zhao Ying out there. Now continuing the harassment is Nurin's poking some damage down, and that's going to put Tai Lu on the back foot momentarily. Shen thinks he's got an opportunity for a grenade. I really love the way we saw Nurin's play that one. He realized where they were probably going to approach from, lined in, got behind the rock, waited, made sure the fact that he can at least take some poke shots over at him right now. Gonna continue it. You can see just shutting down anything that Tylee wants to try to make happen. Belmoth is still bleeding out right now, so looks like they are gonna go ahead and get some smokes down and make sure to not allow this to get flushed entirely. Poochil's gonna be the guy that's gonna have to make the mad dash. Yeah, so the name of the game here is play defense to keep Ty Lu from punishing this res. And so far, like you mentioned, Nuren's found a great angle to do so. So really cutting off uh, some of those larger structures that are in the middle of this, uh, some of the larger temple buildings. And that seems to have kept and Tai Lu off of them for now. And look, this is just the way it's going to be. All of this PGC, a couple of shots, you see a knock. Suddenly that third team is off to the side like, ooh, I kind of want a piece of that. LG realizing the fight's kind of de-escalating, so they're going to go ahead and de-escalate themselves as well. Shift back down. They are the southernmost team that we have. Meanwhile, we're going to cut over here with Tiamba. They are their, our kind of most northern team, as uh, they are going to have Donovan that's going to be right in front of them, keeping a bit. Oh, boy. That's actually a little bit dangerous for Anonix. All of Tiamba there in a firing line, trying to see if yeah. they could prevent him, but it was pretty far, so. I don't think that they liked that, though, as now all of Donovan was getting ready to leave, with Tiamba taking those shots, now all of Donna was turning back around, and suddenly this is going to be just full-on gate-kept, as NH does have control of the area just to the south. Tiamba's going to go ahead and cut across that bridge, and you can see the reinforcements now starting to come out. Oh, Loki's low prepping up the nade. Oh, my God. How well Do is it. it cooked? Man, they are all stacked up on top of each other coming out of that one. Got to be careful. They're going to go across the hillside, roll right up over here. That's going to deny Salute and Soul's positioning. They're going to go ahead and stop as well. ZYY looks like he wants a piece of this. Yeah, and Dono, I think, very wisely backing off. They would have been in an odd numbers fight on this hill. And the, the defensive line for the back two players at Soul and Salute. Salute out in the open, though. These guys do not miss these shots, but fortunately ooh, for him, Soul ooh, ooh, ooh. just as good in the return fire. Soul saving lives right there with those shots is now it looks like we are going to be able to reset away. Uh, Loki is still trying to fend up for the squad just in case anybody comes after that one, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's kind of where we see that one tail off and die. Uh, we have Saki just the south of Songjong, but uh, the other members kind of lined in taking some shots at Saki. It looks like Songjong is going to go ahead and try to regroup with the rest of his squad, is not liking the fact that he is very disadvantaged here. Yeah, this is kind of similar here, what Gen G is doing to what we saw LG do earlier in the tournament where they kind of dived into the fields mm -hmm. early, try to use whatever covers in there to try to, you know, squeak out a late game positioning. It worked well for LG. They were able to get very, very deep uh, in that game, but Gen G committing to it much earlier than LG did. LG kind of did it as a mad dash. I think it was around like phase three or four. Tosi, oops, probably looking at the map. That's trying okay. to push those damage numbers up. Doesn't work that way. <laughs> okay, new circle about to pop, and there's a plethora of options, and it is going to go down wow. into the southwest. Wow. Ty Lu, Day Trade, both in good positions. Cerberus as well. LG going to try to regroup as fast as possible. Meanwhile, our teams up in the north, such as Tiamba and Donawa, we were looking at, going to have themselves some interesting rotations ahead of them. Yeah, I think Donawa, Tiamba are going to probably opt for wide wraps here. Try to go all the way around the edges. Server, it's already in that direction. Pixel again with the M249 taking a ton of damage from H left. H left already has one for the double here for Sharp, and Pixel is huge. Comes up in a big way, but it is going to be quickly retaliated on. Ming oh, going to go oh, ahead and oh, continue oh. to push you out of that one. It's just him and Summer. Space Station Gaming had an opportunity, but it was quickly shut down. Oh, uh, just the. The fanning out here by Petrocore Road, able to surround and get better angles. Faye's in trouble. Daytrade needs points. Even with a P90, Jeems can't do much other than find one. 
and that's going to be a really powerful gun going over to Day Trade if they can get oh, it. Smokes but, are coming down. But Jinji wanted a piece of this from behind, and they rolled right into where Tylee was at, and this is a continuation of that firefight that we were looking at just a second ago on Books and Saw. Now then, Gustav reading this one, trying to go for a couple of flushes, gonna get spotted, he's gonna go down, Day Trade at five. But we full on pub gaming it here around Buxansa. So many teams in the vicinity of this compound. There's so much playable terrain, so many trees. It's going to obscure a lot of teams. And everybody on the bottom of that leaderboard is hungry oh, for points. Oh, man. Esther, I, I, I feel for you right now is I don't know what you can really do. You got Tyloo behind you, Day Trade in front of you. LG is looking like they might approach over here and could distract a bit more of what's going on with Tyloo, but Esther going to hope dip with that flush out. Maybe Esther can sneak away from this one. I don't know. I mean, the thing about Buxansa is there's so many of these temple buildings that mm -hmm. maybe Esther can find one to just hide in. Just prone it out, see if he can scrape through a couple points, just catching a team that's rotating in through here, but he might get spotted. I don't oh. think Belma saw him. Just a second saving his life right there. As you can see, bouncing around is going to find himself. As you're talking about kind of ratting it out, finding yourself a little hidey hole in this one, this is very, very centered. So this is, a, this is the best of bad situation. Yeah, no, no, no. The, Esther should absolutely just plop down Tiamba? and wait this out as long as he can. The emergency pickup right what? on top of LG. Rello's all alone, though. He has to win this fight, and he can't. Just going to get knocked right out of that one. Can anybody else really provide any more support? I think that Twisted Minds are taking some really long-range shots at the back of LG and stopping any form of movement. Shin's going to go and get the knock on a flood. Now then, Ty Lu, what can you try to do? Or look like everybody is just going after any bit of damage, any, any kill you can find, as there are so many squads already stacked up over here. And this is the risk in these lobbies, that mm -hmm. when you run a player solo, and if you get, let's just say, unlucky, I suppose, as Rello was, that somebody drops on top of you, uh, you know, maybe Tianba was able to spot that out in the air and, uh, and punish it. But Staker still has that grow so that he picked up earlier. Could be really powerful if he doesn't get knocked by these grenades. Should be good. And it's a pretty open inside of there as well, so you have to be careful with the nades that come in. T5 is going to go and spot out ZYY, as that is a pretty decent chunk. What is that? Almost like 400, 300 meters? Okay, T5. They're pretty far away. Yeah, I mean, look at this range on this one. They're just taking shots in. Maybe something lucky will land in ZYY. Let's see if they can get some resins. Blue Zone Nade going to come out. Is, oh, ho, 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 Flood cooked that one perfect. Great grenade here for Flood. Luminosity, if they can deal a death blow to Tianba, mm -hmm. can keep this part of the compound underneath their control. And for now, Tiamba down to two players. Has to just kind of hold it out in this shack for now. Yeah, there's a lot of smokes. There's a blue zone over there, but I think it came up a bit short. Otherwise, they had blue bags. I didn't see anybody's health ticking down for Tianba. So doing a good job here. Esther, well, he's going to try to find some points. I mean, Esther's seeing those kills in the kill feed, and he's thinking what everybody else is. If there's somebody knocked in underneath my scopes, I'm going to go for it. I mean... There are so many squads already positioned up over here. Any shot coming out from him is just going to be so scary. Flood is going to spot out Shin. Flood starting to find some success and really get LG into this game. Can't get the flush onto it, but it is going to be LZ that probably going to be able to get the res. I don't think that LG really wants to move too far aggressively into Ooh. this one. Is uh, smoking zone. that one out so that we know further range shots can come in. Blue no, Zone Blue is going to go out as well, and yep. <laughs> Snaker is actually getting pow pow. So Tianba, only one player who's not in the knock status. And actually, it is going to be Day Trade that finds LZ in the long run. So Tai Lu has been eliminated. So great recovery here for LG from what looked like might be a really tricky position. They're able to fight their way through it. And it's great grenades and great shooting that get the job done. Okay, updates on the rest of the circle. You can see the Sonics are going to need to regroup as, oh, oh no, we don't get to do that yet. Snakers has got a goal, and it's getting more control over this area. They have left the positioning around Buxansa that they were at, shifted down. Snakers really wanted to push into that, realized the fact that the timing just wasn't quite there. Pow Pow did hear it. Going to go ahead and nade out just to be safe. No, I, I don't fault him at this one at all. No, no, no. He should do that. He has to be better safe than sorry in that situation. He heard those footsteps. He didn't realize that, you know, Snakers had ran away. And he has to try to make sure that they're, especially if he heard that Groza and they know they have it, he doesn't want to have to deal with that up close and personal. This is the second time in a row we've seen Summer, the last one up for Petrichor Road, just trying to cling to life. Uh, 17 Gaming getting some control over the northern area. The teams next to them are going to be Sonics over into the east. NH also trying to get control over the southwest of this position, as it is going to be NH taking some shots into Donawa. And that is going to be Petrichor Road's Summer getting eliminated. So Petrichor Road now out. Yeah, the aggressive nature of Petrichor Road 
can be a bit of, thor uh, of a, a thorn in their side for sure. Tiggleton and Shao Wu, two players with a lot of history in PUBG Esports, but Sonics gets the info and says, okay, not right now. Let's uh, regroup, rethink. We're in the circle. We don't have to overaggress. Now they're on the edge of a hill. They're on a mm -hmm. precipice where if they suffer a knock, somebody like Twisted Minds from the other side who do have a compound might actually try to reach out. I can already see Perfectix on the edge of the wall. Uh, so if there's a knock on a Sonics, they're going to maybe get squeezed and pinched. They have to be really, what? really cautious. Twisted Minds looking for an opportunity to pounce in back behind Sonics if a knock's going to happen. Thought. Yeah, oh, no big shock on this one. We pretty much assumed that this is going to continue to center up. We might be getting, I don't know, is this technically an urban ending whenever it ends in Buksansa? Buksansa? It it's like a rural ending? Kind of, I guess. <laughs> it, it, it's a... I don't even know. I mean, it, yes, there are a lot of buildings there, but it's also really not an urban ending at the same time because a lot of those buildings are very small and like it's a world <laughs> world heritage cultural site ending. I, yeah, okay. so like a all war these crime ending <laughs> is what you're saying. <laughs> no, no, roughly? no, no, no. All these temples in Korea are like world cultural heritage sites. So, so I was just like trying to come up with something. Out in the open is Ming Ming Belmoth. Only going to get him down to a little less than half. Donawa making their move. They're just going to cut across uh, this, the southern end of Buksansa, maybe find a dip here right on the edge. I'm sure they've got to know that there's a lot of chaos going, in, going on inside of the temple itself. And yeah, they're just going to drive right by it. Now, Cerberus just to their west. they got to be pretty careful. I'm very curious to see how Cerberus responds to this one as they should have the sound cues to realize what's going to be going on. Uh, Xiaowu is going to get the knock onto Tig and Shocker, Twisted Minds now moving in over yep. in the east. It looks like they just want to get a piece of whatever gets knocked. Yep, this is exactly what everybody should be doing. Trying to punish this. A great angle for grenades as well. Shrimzy trying to seat swap, but the car's on fire. It's going to blow up here. Momentarily able to avoid disaster so far. But the grenade mm. follow-up from Lil Ghost is perfect. A molly to boot, and it just falls short of Shrimzy. Nothing to be done here. The other duo not going to find any success. H1 going to go ahead and get spotted as well. Perfectix going to go ahead and take him down. Just kickstart the last one up, and he's got Zhao Wu that's going to be in front of him, and this is going to be a very difficult rotation to try to navigate. Even if we do see 17 man just squeaking ahead of them, he's just kind of hoping that they'll cut a path for him and maybe he can squeak in back behind. And this is just 17 gaming in a nutshell. They're so good out in the open at finding these first knocks and then really punishing you. Now, T5 actually has an angle into that from those fields way down to the south. Again, really long range for T5. Just doing a great job her, uh, just poking at these teams that are down that are to their north. Twisted Minds, hmm. still that AWM for Perfectix. Looking to see if he can find any damage with it, but 17 right now doesn't really seem keen to take this fight. I think they're keen on trying to track down the remainder of Sonics. NH leaning into the edge right now. They're going to be following it through and could bump into Cerberus. It's going to be Tycon that spots that and actually instantly stops that. Kickstart also gets spotted out. Good toss on that nade to go ahead and finish out. Little Ghost now, I believe, sitting on three kills. He's so clean with those grenades, Matt. He is just absolutely on point and doing a great job for 17. Nice light up sign for 17, too. That I is know, really I saw that slick. Earlier. It's is, both sides, man. That is just that, that is, is nice. so good. Whoever made that, like, tip of the cap, that is an awesome sign. Cerberus, I think, watching a little bit of New Happy. Is New Happy Ooh. now going to try to go north? Circle, though, going to go east. So everybody on that eastern edge of Buksansa still in. Donawa actually snuck into Buksansa themselves. Lil Ghost, though, going to watch Twisted Minds. Lou's going to get out. Early shots with this mini not really connecting. So Twisted Minds wants that res onto Perfectix. Got to keep that AWM up and running. Uh, yeah, but 17 can kind of cut in just to the south if they want to and get control over that hill. It will be slightly problematic for Twisted Mind's positioning in that lower point. I'm kind of curious to see how LG is going to respond to the circle as they do have a compound that's presently under their control, but they also know that there's a weakened Tiamba just to the south of them playing that compound. We saw Snakers kind of step over there just a moment ago. Are they going to try to exploit that, or are they just going to be comfortable where they're at? Good question. I'm curious to see what they want to do. I'm seeing a mortar out from 17. I think 17 wants to kick Twisted Minds out of that spot. That is a much better position than trying to play that edge of Buksansa. Mm -hmm. There's just too many teams in Buksansa, and they've got to know it based on the sound cues and the kill feed, uh, that, they, that they really can't play too close to that edge safely. So instead, they're going to try Whoa. to use the mortars to set up uh, the cross, actually, trying to keep Twisted Minds pinned while the other players drive ahead. And with this, there's so much information that's going to get fed back over. How are they going to land? And 
just a bit short, enough to make Lou have to reposition away from that one. But if this one is shifted into a better point, I didn't see a big shift come out from the mortar onto it, but it is very focused in on Lou's position. They want to get this solo real bad. Absolutely. I mean, they've got Twisted Minds out in the open. Still, though, not able to coordinate uh, these mortars as well as I thought they would. Spyro's looking up at them. Can you shoot mortars out of the air? I don't think so, but Panzers can be shot out of the air. That one's it's getting scarier. It's got coming up short, but now they're under pressure from other teams. It's actually New Happy who gets on top of the Bellmouth, has no idea, struck in the back. NH was waiting for this one for so long. Day Trade now in some trouble. They have got to be very careful. The opposing side of it is going to be LG getting some spray into this one. Flood is going to get the knock onto Nurens. We did also see Danoa do a long wrap. They moved into the southern area of Bunsa and now are kind of looking up into the north. It's going to be Anonix that's actually moving aggressively into that position for NH. Absolutely. Flash, the only one alive here for Day Trade. Gets a good headshot. Trying to keep. NH at bay as best as he can, uh, and he's just, again, trying to stay alive, LG. but LG out in the open, flood, huge play, takes down 17. Exploits that one perfectly, and that was so well read coming up from LG, realizing the fact that there was a big opportunity, all of 17 gaming focused down onto Twisted Minds. Now, T5 going to be south of Twisted Minds, see how they handle that one, but with the shift out and the firefighting means that NH really wants to move into Day Trade's positioning. A great punishment of 17's position there. They couldn't displace Twisted. They couldn't get ahead of them. They got stuck on that hillside and Flood and others took advantage of it. No one wants to see them in this lobby any longer. 17 so good. Day Trade continues to struggle here a little bit. And Circle is going to shift right on top of Tiamba there. V7, look at their position. They've got a lot of circle control. Esther is still alive right oh, in yeah. the thick of Donawa. No, he's, he's doing a great job. Esther's doing everything he should be doing here. And these are, you know, veteran plays from veteran players who understand their situation, understand the terrain, understand what they do, need to do to get points. And he should be potentially good for at least uh, some placement points here for Genji, who now find themselves at the bottom of the leaderboard. Uh, Donna, where the gate kept position right now, they do have to be very careful moving out of Buxansa uh, to the north of it with NH right back behind them. Meanwhile, in the fields, you can see the Twisted Minds is going to have to move into T5's positioning. We've been kind of talking about it quite a bit that V7's got a very strong point to play from. Oh my god, if a firefight breaks out here, Esther could absolutely destroy Donawa. Yeah, they have no idea. Again, it's so tough to check inside of all of these buildings. There's just so many of them. Again, headshots being found by LG. Luminosity's Flood having a phenomenal game. Six kills, Twisted Minds just mm. waiting with open arms for New Happy. Yeah, just played that one real slow out. Twisted Minds gonna be rewarded, but now they have to make a move that's gonna be very, very similar. That's what already in position T5, waiting for this one to go through. Ooh. Donawa is looking forward into that LG positioning and still just the snake back behind them waiting to pounce. Yeah, so far now to make matters worse, Cerberus found a knock onto Anonix. I mean, Soul's just out here doing what he can. Esther doesn't want to fire yet. Esther can wait for quite a while. Uh, he doesn't actually need to really fight. If he can kind of sneak behind Donawa and just keep kind of backfilling their positions, he might be able to get pretty deep into this game. That might be his thought process right now because he had Soul dead to rights. Yeah, and now Donawa is going to be creeping forward. There is a, like a bit of an area they can play some rocks and whatnot, but it is going to be Tiamba in that very solid defended position. Now, it's going to be Twisted Minds moving into the T5 line. T5 going to be repositioning. They do have Rusted Jr. way down to the south of this one. Looks like not going to have the cleanest support lines on it. Mm. Blue Zone nade, as well as a follow-up nade, going to be very, very scary. But Tulin's going to go ahead and throw that one up the hillside. I don't think it's going to bounce the direction that he's going to be wanting it to, though. I love the way Twisted Minds uses these folding shields to set up, cut off angles, even keep potentially grenades from bouncing uh, into spots that might be a little bit tricky for them to navigate out of. That grenade, though, bounces just a bit too far. Still, though, Theraton 5 continuing this bombardment. They want them gone, and Batulins goes up and over and pays the price. You can see just patience right now. T5 is going to have some throwables come back over into Thanadol, but not going to take him down just yet. Three members for Twisted Minds still just dancing around this and seeing if they can get some. Finally, do God to want, but don't have a clean path to really exploit. Thanadol is going to go ahead and flush that one out. Make sure to secure. Rusted Jr. is going to throw down some smokes to try to stall out, but notice there's a Panzerfaust in the hands of Perfectix on the opposing side. If he crests up that hill and he just shoots into the smoke, it could be absolute catastrophe for T5. Yep, here he goes. He's got the Panzer. He sees Spotted. one. He's Got him. Tanadol down. Rossiter Jr. able to respond in kind. Lou alive for Twisted Minds. Can he get anything else done? 
V7, what are you going to do? Are you going to make any more moves out of it? Is there is just a ton of crates over here to the north, and that's going to be what LG is going to be trying to exploit. Diamba is going to get eliminated. Donovan is going to be back behind this one. You can see Soul going to be creeping up back, seeing maybe he can get a nade into the position. That would be so great for them. It's going to bounce oh. away, rejected by the crate. Yeah, that crate line there just causing enough problems. Now, they're able to flush Snakers. However, LG, 12 kills in mm -hmm. this game so far. Absolutely disgusting performance from them, holding down a tricky position extremely well. And such a big part of that is Flood, man. He has been so on point in this city fighting, urban fighting, I don't know, temple fighting, whatever you want to call it, as LG is going to get that compound under their control. Only two members up, though, is finally it is going to be V7. They realized that what was going on with Twisted Minds has finally calmed down, starting to stretch this hillside just a bit more and might find themselves on a revealed angle. You know, I'm glad we get to see the heartbeat sensor on Mime to know that he's not a robot. <laughs> 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 he's he's really pumped up right now, and rightly so. He's got three kills. He's having a phenomenal game. V7 springing to action. Lou already knocked. Now looking to finish off Spyro. Flood is actually going to be the one to get it. Seven kills for the Aussie. Absolutely amazing performance coming up from LG. We also still have Hamas that's going to be down just to the south of where Donna was going to be trying to position. And Nonix going to be leading the way, but it looks like LG has already read this one back. Smoke's going to be down with shots coming up from Soul. Oh. Surprise! It's Mime just with a headshot to open it. Yeah, close range Dragonov. All you need is a headshot to get that knock. Oh, an Onyx. Uh, that grenade really close to an Onyx. I think he just barely skirted damage from it. Hemos, not a lot to do here. I don't know if he has enough time. To, is this yeah, a first aid? He's done. Yeah, right? Well, oh, he's got the blue zone bag. Okay, he's okay for a little bit. Enough to at least creep okay, forward yet mind. again. Now he's going to go down. It's going to be V7 who are just going to try to feast on the outskirts of this one and pick up as much as they can. But LG, even with Flood down right now, have had themselves a stellar, stellar game. Donoa trying to creep in. Mime, you can see, realizing the fact that he's about to be collapsed on. It's going to be Anonix running up right into his face. Weakened, steps around the corner, finishes that one out, comes at a pretty decent cost, though. Is now V7. Looks like they're going to aggress. And they've got the opening knock. Loki is down. Anonix, the only one left. He gets the first aid off, so he is okay to try to make a fight. Anonix takes a head shot that's the grenade that's the finish v7 fun pin finding a win early here in the grand finals and shot up that leaderboard patience and control in the cell we didn't see them a lot due to all the craziness that was going on in temple and with twisted minds but they were very very active in making sure to shut down any approach on that hill and these are the games that tend to catapult v7's momentum it's that one win and all of a sudden the confidence is there and they start playing really really well i mean no disrespect to anybody though but that felt like flood man flood yes, has that was flood. so many just key moments to keep his squad back in there we saw him trying to go for reses multiple times where there were positions that they just shouldn't have been able to fight their way through but Crazy lg game. clung to life as we are now going to get everything set up to move into the next round Three games down and another new chicken dinner winner. It's V7 Fun Pin who takes that one home. Let's look back at how it happened. It's highlights. And it's another extremely rare circle it's here, rare. right? South like diamonds. East of Buxanza. Like there's so many teams, obviously, they know this area so well. It's a very kind of known, famous hot drop position. All the teams they play that, but still, home oh. turf. Team yep. eliminated early, face clan out, and that's just rough. Like when you get one of those circles, you're hoping for a lot of points, but Definitely a big game for Flot. He popped off. Good to see LG doing well like that. And he had a lot of good nades, good utility, yeah. but also he had some insane shots coming in. So it's good to see LG turn on for this case. I think LG was the definition of hustle on this map. Oh, they, yeah, yeah. they lost, they survived, they they persevered, they backstabbed, and they did everything they could to go deep. And that's one of those oh. situations, you know you're not going to win oh. this, so you got to get as many kills as you can. And uh, there it is, a nice little play here, Twisted Minds. Batulin, I think, is just playing absolutely out of his mind. We saw a couple of plays in this game and the last one that his gun skills 
yeah, seem like they've just. I think that they've grown significantly this year. Yeah, he's he's definitely been uh, been way more of an impactful player and just outside being the IGL, of course. He's been getting a lot more of the kills, been getting a lot more of the impactful clutches, so it's good to see. But V7 Fonpin is able to jump up yeah. and, and take this one here. It's a it's a hard circle, but they're able to control that southern side for a very, very long time, yeah. right? And stay four guys alive is crucial too. And that is the key. You got to come away with those four alive. That gives you the push at the end game. We saw that uh, they were able to just dominate and run down the last two teams because everybody came limping in. So congratulations to V7 Fun Pin. Welcome back to the desk. My name is Toffees. I'm joined by Avenger as we break down the action. We are halfway through day one of the grand finals. That means that the time to get comfortable has come to an end. When we're right. only 18 games to play, we've seen how close it has been in every single stage of this event so far. For sure. And in Overall, right? You're yeah. coming in. You're coming into this case. They're like, okay, these teams are going to be competing. They're going to yep. become extremely tight on the leaderboards. They're going to be having some hard games. Of course, LG. That's impressive. But that's actually Visa and Funpin that won it. Yep. Danawa had a, had a hustle as well, as you said here. In this case, for for me, it's like, okay, you're holding on to the west yeah. side. They're able to get a good amount of placement points, get a good amount, of kind of squeeze out some of those kills because they were on the back foot for mm. a lot of the the match throughout, right? And of course, Twisted Minds with some kills also puts them in there. Absolutely. Twisted Minds a lot closer to home. Donald had 31,000 kilometers to travel in that one. V7 Fun Pin is going to be the WWCD team stat leader here. Uh, and now with a shy kill count, they came out with five, six, seven, seven kills <laughs> and a pretty good damage. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> a pretty good damage count. I'm not great at math. Let's talk about the man of the match, though. Okay, remember, for those of you who might be joining us for the first time, Man of the Match comes from the winning, the chicken dinner right. team. Uh, I think I would take nothing away from Gilman's play. Right. Flood, for me, was like my personal Man of the Match. Yeah, yeah, so outside the winning team, I would definitely give an honorary Man of the Match. Or you can say, now this is a Man of the Match, but the MVP the, for that. Ah, you know, right, ooh, I like yeah. that. So yeah. my personal MVP going to Flood there. Yeah, Let's take a look at Master sure. And the reason for that is this. LG did not win the chicken dinner. In fact, they only got five placement points, and yet they walked away with 19. That's called making lemon. Aid from lemons. <laughs> so they're squeezing out all, all the points that they could right. possibly right? They really points, juiced it. Three teams on double digits, still two teams on 17, 19, super top heavy. That's going to put them up there and actually going to put V7 Fun Pin in the, in the leader in the yellow shirt jersey mm. if you're doing a Tour de France. But mm. still very close here. And we're able to yeah. get some. Uh, some yeah, it's, it's, it's good. a lead switch. Yeah, but also we have it's super tight from that's first true. to seventh. Only seven points difference. That's kind of neat. And some of our favorites at the start of the day, Sonic 17, uh, not on the left side of the leaderboard. Not going to be happy with how they started these first nope. three games. They got to clean it up. The good news is we're going to the snowy slopes of Akendi next. True, but also this is also the this is the reason why we've seen you know 17 gaming mm. in a situation where like. The circles are so far away from right. the center spots they're looting, right? So they actually have to go pretty far. They're not getting any prior in the compounds. All right, let's check in if I can. And we got a surprise for you, a change of the voices. It's going to be Porosaurus, and the name is Toby taking over for the second half of our day. Let's check it out. Well, hello there, everyone. It is I, Porosaurus, and it's he, Toby, and we are coming fresh off the finish at Buxung Sa, where we saw Veronica 7 get a much needed victory to put oh, them yeah. somehow, Toby, into first place. I mean, everything's so close. Yeah, sure is, sure is. We always talk about how in the first couple of matches of new brackets, that's the chance for those teams that might not live to see the distance to really get something going early. And well, Veronica 7, that's exactly how they wanted to start the day. Yes, indeed. And uh, I know Toffee's said it, and I, I think we were watching in backstage. I would say that, that, that Flood was maybe my man of the match, too. Oh, yeah. It's a very hard call for sure, you know, what with all the kills, damage, murder, death, and destruction he was doing. But, uh, you know, again, LG, uh, fantastic position holding the edge of that uh, mm. the little city, which, again, I, I gotta, I guess like, the argument is not really a city ending. No. We're not going with that, We, we right? call it hot, going, hot drop ending, we're spicy ending. We're calling a very late hot drop. Yeah, yeah, right? I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. I will say, though, as you kind of let into, outside of, of course, game one ending on the, uh, well, we call it the kind of magnet compound for a reason at Wrangle. Yes. Taking two games to follow, very, very alternative compared to what we used to see. Yes, we still went down towards yes. South Ontago, but as you said, up towards Books on South, so maybe that's going to give us even more spiciness coming <laughs> into Vikendi. I'm going to be all for it. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, well, we get to find out very, very soon once we get into Vikendi, but there you go, Space Station Gaming. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about it. Well, that was a little bit of a throw there on Miramar, in my opinion, but we are going to Vikendi now and where polar bears run rampant mm -hmm. and the snows are white and uh, the hills to the south are verdant. 
And uh, I don't know. I don't got anything else. I, uh, what do we got? We got Dino Land. <laughs> we sure do. We sure do. And arguably the most northern plane you can possibly get <laughs> on this map. So for all the southern endings we've had so far, I'm pretty sure I can safely say that this won't be one of those. So maybe already now, we're guaranteed to get a little bit of variety. Who knows, maybe a Cosmodrome end thing? That'd be kind of cool. Don't get weird with me, sir. That'd be cool. Cosmodrome? Yeah, yeah. it would be cool. But it would be weird. I but I like would. weird. Definitely I'm would. down with weird. You know what? If there's one thing that has been proven time and time again throughout the years of PUBG Esports, if you think you've seen crazy throughout the year, just wait for grand finals yeah, of the Global true. Championship. That's usually when the ultimate crazy comes out and uh, shows up, whether it be in the shape of circle shifts, whether it be in the shape of uh, just players living up to the hype and showing off what they're capable of. Oh, yeah. No, this is, uh, this is the time. If you're going to make any uh, dramatic plays, make highlight reels, for yourself, yeah. this is this is where PO became PO. Is it PGC? Essentially, you know. I mean, this is where uh, Tig became Tig. You know, it, it's the 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 what you do in the biggest possible moments presented to you. Keeping an eye on this map and seeing if there are any hot drops. Now we do have a lot of action going on towards the center, but it doesn't look like anybody falling right on top of each other and uh, okay no north but we will go west you know what i said cosmo draw mending for reasons unknown to me i didn't dino even land. think about it a dino, dino land, land dino finish land. can we get some uh, some 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 i don't even know what you say in the chat but just anything that has to do with please let it be dino land you know what i think there's a dinosaur emote do we on have twitch a dinosaur emote? i think there's a dinosaur emote for everyone on twitch just spam that thing let's get a dino land finish on the first grand finals for candy now that would be something i'd write home about oh I'd love it. I'd absolutely love it. Well, Ming Ming and the rest of the new happy boys, a very uh, decent start so far. 24 Definitely. points good in fourth place. Uh, they will be now having to make that rotation four deep in the vehicle, which is always a dangerous prospect. And for New Happy in particular, I mean, their journey has been as hit or miss as they come. They yeah. finish out in the top of the groups, then they absolutely zero out 14 points 14 in 12 points. games in winner's bracket. They stomp their way through uh, the, the, the last chance. And then I think coming into this, people were like, Oh, do we dare? Like, do we dare <laughs> put our money on New Happy again? We just saw them stumble their way through Winner's Bracket, which is essentially a lot of the same teams we have here in the Grand Finals. Do we dare up to bet on them again? But as you said, I mean, if these first couple of games is anything to go by, I think they're definitely here to play. Sure, and uh, if, if fantasy picks are any indication of oh, yeah. your belief oh, in a team, yeah. uh, you, you got Ming Ming, and I think I you sure might have been the only person that still had faith in New Happy. We'll see how they end up doing here as we check in on LG. Unreal performance there from oh, yeah. the east side of BSS, what I'm going to call it now, <laughs> as uh, as it was just, it was the flood show. Yeah, really. Because books on size is just way too long of a word it to is. say, so we got to show it Look, down. Look, we, we alliterate everything that here. Is PGS, true. That PGC, is true. it's now BSS. Yeah, okay. even, your, even the country you're from is an alliteration. USM, so yeah, I, I, get yes, I get it, I get it, I get it. No, I think, I mean, if we were to, and kind of playing into why I think uh, New Happy is having the success that they are. Mm. If we look at the first couple of games on this lobby as a whole, we talked about it when we watched the first couple of games unfold as well. A lot of the edge teams, a lot of the very edge teams that we've yeah. had in this tournament so far, part of the reason why Group B was so insanely edge heavy, have been eliminated from the tournament. So yeah. that has opened up space for those teams that still commit edge. We're talking about Gen G, talking about New Happy, talking about Twisted Minds and other teams as well. There's only like three, four of them where in previous lobbies, both in group stage, winners, losers, there's been at least six or seven. So the edge teams have struggled to, you know, spread out, take control of those edges. But here we're seeing New Happy be able to do just that. I think Tego was a bit of an off game just because of where the well, circle went. But yeah. outside of that, they have been able to play much more to their kind of own liking mm -hmm. than uh, than what they've been able to previously. Okay, well, now we get to check in with 17 game. A little bit of a slow start for them yeah. so far, but uh, they managed to climb a little bit more in that last game. Now we'll see if they get more points in this one as we wait now to see what our interview is going to be. The grand Finals, we usually are really stressed about performing well. So the fact that we're able to make Grand Finals on our first try is really good for us. Uh, Mime's joining the team, he's added a lot of value, he has all the experience on Sonics, he's a winner and he has a great mentality and he's really helping our calling and macro, so we're really really happy that we have him on our team and we're looking forward to seeing him in his first grand final. I think we're going to prepare by reviewing other teams' playstyles, reviewing our playstyle and doing some uh, 
personal review of the map, especially Vincendi and Tego. I think our mindset is that we need to not overthink. I think we need to play PUBG as simple as it comes and just do what, what we can to play our best every game. And there you have it. Yep, the addition of Mime, I, I got to say, you know, somebody who knows these guys, you know, for years now, and, uh, and seeing Mime, and it, it, one of the most uh, unlikely friendships that I think I, I would have predicted, but Snakers and Mime are like, uh, they're, uh, yeah, they're like neck and neck, man. They're, they're brothers. They are, yep. they are attached at the hip. Everywhere you go, uh, you see them both together, and they're hanging out together. And the team itself is just really, really gelling right now, as you said. Mm. Uh, you see them at breakfast down there. Everybody's really happy. Everybody's exactly. feeling confident as uh, we get to see a little bit of those previous match highlights there. Petrocore Road taking care of Space Station Gaming in the wide open. Ugh. And what we see there in that game in particular is like a combination of two things. A, there are still some of these teams that prior to this match haven't played against each other before. So there yep. are rotation pathings that are just going to be off time by a second. In your region, you know exactly when and where every team is going to go. But here globally, especially with teams now well, having alt drops as well, you can't predict well, yeah. it all. And exactly when you then add on top of it that we were playing Tago and had a really tricky phase two shift in that previous one, teams are going to be running into each other. It's simply unavoidable. Um, so far, this game seems a little cleaner again as I alluded to earlier for those of you guys who are watching the map stream exclamation mark map in the twitch chat for those of you guys who want to get an eye on that you can see that there still are or is plenty of space on the edges here and that's considering the fact that the entire west edge is water like a good yeah. fourth of the circle is literally unplayable unless if you want to swim around and uh, die of hibernation in the ocean I suppose hibernation uh, huh isn't that what it's called <laughs> oh, did you do hypothermia? hypothermia? God close damn enough. It. I was so close. close so enough. close. English, man. <laughs> <laughs> English. Hey, I try. I look, really go out of my way to try, and then I get it wrong. At anyway. least this is the English is like your what second or third language, and it's the only one I speak, we'll and I barely so. yeah, speak it yeah. very well at all. So yeah, that was the one. It's good. It's close enough. So I mean, that's because I was thinking about the polar bears and hibernating yeah, and stuff like no, that. It, just, look, it, got it makes to perfect me. sense. It got honestly, to me. it got to me. You can hibernate out on those islands too if that's what you want to do. But uh, <laughs> what I was going to say with it is for those edge teams. Where normally, because we have them, they're going to spread east and west. And as we see here, Hatsawat's smart parking Ooh. of his vehicle is yeah, so should allow for him to get away. That, my friends, is why you always think twice about how you park your car. Mm -hmm. um, where normally we'd see, if we see a northern or southern hard shift here, teams wrap on both sides. They're going to be like pretty much limited to one. So expect to see edge teams fighting early game should we get a hard shift following this phase one. Yeah, worth noting that uh, T5, they've been doing these very, very wide splits. They've been getting a lot of circle luck right off the bat. Uh, they, they keep finding themselves dead center. Uh, but they're also doing these wide splits, these info gathering splits, and they've been able to do it pretty successfully so far. They haven't really lost anybody that early on. So we'll see if they can uh, convert that into a few more points. I mean, right now they're sitting in second place. Everything's looking pretty good, yeah. but it could be always a little bit better as LG going into the south side of Dino Land. T5 already have two there. I mean, flood two tires pop, the other two almost fallen off. Not sure how we made it there alive, nice. but Fine. they all get there. Almost full HP as well, but again, I mean, a very early commit from LG, who usually takes their time, scout out what's available, what's free. But of course, knowing that when you have a place like Dino Land in the circle center, you're really limited in your options because everything around there, there ain't a lot of compounds right around the middle. And of course, they know as well as we do that what is available center is already taken. And cutting back to what Flood was saying in his interview, Right? He was talking about how they don't want to overthink things, just yeah. react. Yeah. React, react, and that's, that's, I mean, that's basically what he was saying oh, yeah. right there. Envisioned as we see Tosi now ducking, dodging, diving, dipping, and avoiding the shots from CC108. Ooh. Twisted Minds, they're going to find SSG pulling right up on it. Perfectix. Shot coming through, but no knocks to be found. And this is again Edge Team scouting, trying to maneuver a little bit uh -oh. closer, but now that they know that there's more space to maneuver, they will run into one another. Perfectix from up high, able to find Roth, but you'd have to imagine SSG is just going to be able to back off, off of this, get back in the car, leave this, go back east. You knew there was space. Go out, get the rest through, and play it safe. Oops, that's uh -oh. a. Yep, that'll, Parachute that'll and be a knock. Nope. That's okay. It's That's okay. They will now Spiro is on the run right now, trying to see if they can <laughs> land the grenade onto the knocked Roth. The smoke wall is down. Will it be enough to keep them alive? It looks like it shall be. And actually, Pixel... Just going to put Roth in the back of the whip and just dip on out. And that's probably the smartest play. Got scary for a second with Roth getting the re -knock, But uh, good thing for Space Station Gaming. They were able to react on the fly and, and get back to safety. Again, they knew they had space in the east. And now they're going to go there. Circle up 
towards the north. Frozen We've River. been up here before, up towards where Tailu is currently set in Tian, but remember that the Frozen River does not get shifted away from in Phase 4, as it is playable terrain with cars, whatever you name it, and uh, and yeah, this could cause for some very interesting late game circles. Indeed it should, and it's, uh, as we saw previously, this is a very interesting area to play around as the Frozen River, there's a lot of open space oh, yeah. around oh, yeah. some uh, very limited hard cover, so we'll see if the circle keeps favoring that position. Checking in with Day Trade on the south side, they are just ahead of New Happy, and it looks like they uh, New Happy not going to be too terribly interested in backfilling them as they run right on through. Now, there are two more teams down to the south, Toby, mm. that still have to make their way down here. Exactly. If you guys, again, who are looking at the map, kind of split the map south to north, there's only three teams in the northern half. There yeah. are so many teams that have to figure out how to maneuver through, and I think Cerberus is realizing that now they're doing a wide wrap towards the eastern side, not in a hurry to be part of that essentially traffic jam on the southern side, because they know if the next circle goes anywhere north, there's not going to be space to make that wide wrap, and we'll just get caught in the middle of everyone else. So make the smart wide rotations now while the circles don't do as much damage and while you actually have to the room to maneuver. Yeah, smart play from Cerberus as we see this is what's going on just ahead of them. Petrichor Road and SSG making that same rotation but they get a little bit close to each other a little bit of damage traded back mm. and forth between the two. It looks like they should be pulling off just now but this is Cerberus still way way farther east as uh, they are, I mean, they, they shouldn't actually run into Petrichor or Space Station, I would imagine. You maybe. say that, but I'm curious to see if they're going to opt to wrap east around Nauros or not. If shots are fired, you'd have to imagine that they continue their rotation. But again, Cerberus also a team that really, like, you give them a third-party opportunity, they'll wipe out both the teams that were about to start fighting. So it could be what they would opt to do. In the meantime, down towards the southwestern side, again, teams looking to go the other direction, but more limited in their space, of course, because of the ocean, is a new heavy sky outing forward and then Gen G out in the middle of the icy river is uh is the boys from Korea way, just it? set up here scouting forward? Yes, they do have players up north again. Both uh, DG98 and Esther set up there, kind of make, make, trying to make sure that no one is backfilling them. Again, I, that's something we see not done so well in Bikendi mm -hmm. and Tango mm -hmm. yet because teams just don't know the maps as well. Understand what is the weak point of the position you're in and make sure that if you're split, that your other two players are set in the position that would be the worst place to have an opposing team because right. that way you deny your, like anyone to take advantage of your compound's weakness. Right, a lot of 2-2 two -two splits, a lot of real estate being taken up right now. Still 64 alive at 12 minutes in. Twisted Minds, they're just going to find a compound on the south side of this zone and uh, and I guess play it, play it safe Chilly. and just wait and see where this next circle shifts. I mean, if it goes hard north, you already know you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. No reason mm -hmm. really to try to overextend your bounds right now. And I think that's why everyone on the southern side is playing it as safe as they are. They know that there is teams all around them. They all are well aware that they are, are on the more busy side of the mm -hmm, circle mm -hmm. simply because of how the circles have maneuvered. So that's why everyone is holding back from taking fights to say, if we're going to take a fight, it's got to be a four man up, full uh, like full aggro play. We can't do it right now just losing one on the fly because that's going to be us down before placement points. Interesting to know we were, I was just looking at, okay, there we go, hard shift. Back English. towards Dino Land. <laughs> Love to see it. But uh, I was noticing a two-two split with Petrichor Road right there. Yeah, they were they were hanging around that uh, that what do we call gondola? it? The, the, the gondola. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. you had Gen G on the far side as well. So uh, I was kind of looking to see if maybe Petrichor Road was thinking about it, but no, uh, not going to have to worry about that now. As the circle is going to shift away from them. Space Station made that long, long wrap mm -hmm. all the way up to the north now, just to have to cut back down, and they've got a storm around them as well. Cerberus just going to eat the blue. I mean, we're headed into terrain where Dino Land is comfort, but. Outside of that, it's just a Sonic's position that is a compound to play from. It's going to be very limited what people can work with, and that's why now the cluster that we talked about, teams wanting to avoid before the teams that didn't manage to get away from those are going right into them now. Unfortunately for FaZe, Jimbo going to get picked out by the sniper rifle, and uh, Petrichor Road will pick up one for Ike's left. But uh, that being said, FaZe does have a compound. is right on the edge of circle, and they can kind of play safe for now. And we'll see if Petrichor Road really wants any of this as Tosi Gonna spot the man way up in the air. That's new happy. You see, <laughs> yeah. Nah. I respect the scouting. Just, just press F as soon as you jump out of the thing and hope <laughs> that no one noticed you. But oh, the Dino Land teams are set very comfortably with no reason to look next to them. They'll gladly look into the sky for a second. There. Well, and I'm wondering now, V7. They, they just saw. 
what happened when there was a guy yep. in the sky and they're about to do the exact same thing. That seems a little dangerous. Well, see what they decide to do here as we see the beautiful train running on by Petrichor Road. Ooh, Just going to wait for it to pass as we get to see this bolty shot from Iceland. Oh, oh, oh. Nasty stuff that we've gotten used to seeing from the man. I mean, it's 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 phenomenal what these guys are able to pull off, and especially when there's so much on the line in tournaments oh, like these. Yeah. We are seeing the uh, we are seeing the heart heart rates like their 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 steady level has gone from 70 to somewhere around 105. So there's definitely a good understanding from the players too the amount of like what is on the line in the grand yeah. finals like this. There's a. Uh there's very limited time to be found in these games where you're not feeling under pressure. Yep. So we'll see what Space Station decides to do as they're kind of backed up against the blue right now. They've got Tiamba trying to make a rotation in on their north, but they are concerned with Tai Lu inside the Frozen River. Yep. FaZe, though, is just staring them down. And now Petrichor Road, they've got to make their way anyway. Trying to figure out how to get into Dino Land here, but Twisted Mind's already staring in that direction. Got to deny the entry here. Got to find at least one as Summer comes rushing on forward. Perfect X. Nope. Swings back from the nade as he allows the vehicle to drive on past. He was only the bait, though, as Spiro and Lewis set up further in. Okay. Peril Summer going to send it right in. Spiro already set and ready to go, but the, oh, the smoke. What? The smoke from the vehicle. The drift. Going to protect him as now Petrichor Road has managed to get everybody inside the park under the watchful eyes of Twisted Minds. That is insane, the fact that they actually managed to make that rotation, and oh, little boy. do they know, it was with no reward. The circle will swing towards the north, and we're going wide out into the open. 17 looking like geniuses right now. They send it to the river right off the bat, and they're going to get a little bit of favor here. Salute finds some... Shots there onto Gen G. Cerberus, well, that's going to be it for Tycon. That's going to be it for the squad. As now Gen G turning their attention back over towards the south side here. They, they got to try to. Uh, it's it's Donald Reed, and Gen G just all getting third partied here by 17. Huge play from Loki. They were the team to start denying them the access point here. And Loki knew exactly where they were going to go off of that rotation. Issue is he's here alone right now. He oh, needs help. Yeah. And the help is not here. He's going to fall to DG98. And the kill feed is just lighting up right now as there are numerous teams fighting on the edge of this zone. All the teams that were trying to make their way in on that last circle that yep. got pinned to the edge now had nowhere else to go. LG is taking it right to Flash and the rest of the Day trade Boyd, but Day Trade is coming out ahead. But now the trade's coming back as Petricor has found an angle on the Day Trade. It's a rainbow of team colors on the southern side. This is the brawl that teams wanted to avoid, but some teams are forced into. And again, as you say, Day Trade, right now the victors of this traffic jam trying to hold off, trying to defend, knowing there's no one on their northwestern side. They can sit backs free and just look towards Steinle and try and make sure that no one is able to get past him. So many teams trying to escape Dino Land. Twisted Minds, the last ones left on the south. They could stand a benefit from this as Day Trade trying to come in here and see if they can maybe flush off these kills, get a few reses off, maybe get back to somewhat uh, in good standing. But Veronica 7, they're coming in from the southwest. You've still got two members of LG off to the east and Day Trade, Petrichor Road all right on top of each other. Ming will find the grenade. Yes, he will. <laughs> two down. Perfectly locked in there. Finds the flush and one Pujols down as well. It's going to grant them more space to maneuver forward. Remember, they still have a knock player. They could potentially get back up on their feet on this. Belmont has something to say what? about it! And indeed he does! What a shot with the AUG! Unfortunate there for Ming, as Summer now the last player alive for Petrichor Road. Pushus is getting revived by Day Trade. It looks like they should get away with this as long as V7 doesn't get there, but unfortunately for them, Twisted Minds has found Glaz. Extremely calculated plays coming through for Twisted Minds. They knew the action was taking place in front of them, but they didn't want to make plays before they had all the invotes go off. They wrap where they don't want to be in this city, they want to limit the angles, but now they have to deal with human. He has a perfect angle, you can see here, even spraying through the smoke, just doing so much damage, and his molly is going to find Perfectix. Cuban doing the absolute most here for Veronica 7. Four kills in the bag for them right now, as they just hold the line, try to survive a little bit longer. Now they have Day Trade back on their feet, off to their north, and then they're starting to come back behind them, and Flash will find heaven. Solid sprays coming through as they do more damage, a little bit of help coming through for Twisted Minds as well, seeing that Veronica Seven are taking casualties, but it's again human. He has to fend off. He has to deny Twisted Minds from pushing further forward. Human, just hiding, staying alive. There you go, Batulans 
Grenade will be the one that finds him. And now Twisted Minds continue to make their way forward. LG has decided to strike and backstab into Day Trade. No knocks to be found just yet, but a lot of damage coming through. Twisted Minds actually slowing down a little bit here. And this is picture perfect how Twisted Minds likes to play. Get Whether it be in open fields on Wrangler or Miramar, or whether it be in a compressed situation like here in Dinoland, they want to have the blue on their back. They only want to worry about what's in front of them and then fight on through. Mime falls down. Pushels again just does not want to go down. He does not, but the Snakers Molotov will finish off Flash. And now it's Belmov and Pushus versus Snakers. Twisted Minds starting to creep over there, trying to get involved. The Mime, the Blue Zone Grenade actually going to find Pushus. And now Batulins is going to get spotted out by Snakers. What a great awareness on the part of LG's Fragger. Great push on forward, but even better utility usage here from the team starting to fend from up high. So difficult to try and focus on Twisted Minds while you're also looking at the teams next to you. And now Face creeping on in with their two remaining players trying to get a piece of this, and indeed they will. Corexi finds Summer. The south side of this circle has been an absolute train wreck. Yep. As so many teams, so many deaths. As now Perfectix wanted to try to go for the res on a spear, but had to pull away, and now Fex and FaZe is getting shot in the back by third on five. And that's them having to commit to this fight. They know now that the angle that they came up from themselves, they are not able to use anymore. Third on five has cleared the southeast side of the circle. Fex and FaZe has to make a play here, but they're oh. against an entirety of Twisted Minds who just took out Day Trade. Give them their eighth kill now as Twisted Minds continues to make their way through. They haven't been able to get the revive on the Spiro just yet, but there's only so many players left alive. There you go. Spiro back on his feet Ooh. will narrowly avoid a grenade from FaZe. I'm seeing a jammer pack on him. I'm not sure if there's anything left in it. You can see Lou now starting to tank the blue. It hurts like hell in this area from Mavis. Tiggleton finds Perfectix again. Sonics haven't had a chance to engage on this so far, but now they're getting angles. Snaker's still alive for LG. He's going to sneak one away from FaZe before going down to the blue, and Tiggleton will also finish off Perfectix. It's now down to Spiro and Batulins. Corexi in the blue himself as all three teams it's it's just madness toby everybody that ever made their way into dino land is paying the price yep correct he wanted to go for the heal realizing he's not got time for it goes for the spray instead finds batulins just before he falls and i don't think there's any rest coming through for the igl here either so spiro will be the last one left alive for twisted minds but again they were the team furthest behind they were the team that had to fight their way through a five-way fight and still get eight kills and come out on top unbelievable stuff from twisted minds we'll see if Spiro can maybe find something. He's looking around. There's enough boxes and crates around there, Toby. <laughs> he may be able to find enough heals to get himself out. Yeah. We'll see. The new circle has popped off to the north. So while all this action was occurring right around Dino Land, we have a number of teams still just taking positions around that uh, that ridge line, around the river, around the frozen river. 17 four still, uh, four still up. Tyloo mm. still four up. Uh, T5 still have a compound. New Happy still looking good. Sonic's still four up, but they've got to make their way up north. Sonics only has three kills, but they've been very successful in forcing New Happy off their angle. New Happy tried to take the fight to 17, but they too had to leave. So the way that Sonics been able to really deny a backstab because they were worried about uh, Dino Land as well. Very solid place. We didn't get to see it on the main people. We could kind of keep track of it on the map while it was going on. But this fight is going to be absolutely clutch for them. If they win this fight, they might just be able to rev into the circle. A lot of patience shown for the boys in baby blue, and now New Happy in a little bit of trouble as they are starting to make their way north, but 17 has an angle on that. Shots coming into their backs. You can see the damage coming through. Now throwables being trying, uh, being sent over into Sonic's direction. Nothing finding the mark just yet. The return ones from Sonic's. Will they find none? The damage comes through, but it's more 17 gaming that's the problem exactly. for New Happy. 17 gaming is making it so much easier for Sonic's. The way they're literally just forcing New Happy to stay on the hillside and allowing for Sonic's now to peek on over. Get the double that kicks that solid peek, solid spray down. And Sonic's ain't done just yet. Xiao Bei found. Maybe that's going to open up an angle. That's a big knock from H Win there. He won't be able to flush it, but there are vehicles up here for Sonics to use. They are getting shot at from the east side here by T5. Somehow found an angle onto it. We'll see where Sonics decide to take this ride. They've got two vehicles left H-Win behind on foot. They're just going to hard push this knock that H-Win found. They saw him run off with the rest. They saw there's been no chance to get the rest confirmed just yet. And they know that 17 is playing a far northern position in this one. Look at the amount of terrain. Sonics has just secured themselves off of this. I know they're not inside the circle yet, but this is a one step at the time type of situation. The circle is moving in slowly that allows them to creep and force Sonics, uh, sorry, 17 further towards the north.
17 had to retreat, but they do get their knocked player back down there. He should be able to be revived. They should be back up to four strong shortly. They have the low ground to play around, and they have that ridge line to play around. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot of real estate that they can really work with. The only one left up there watching is Xiao Yang from Tai Lu. Meanwhile, Sonic's still trying to keep T5 honest. They have left their compound, and they find themselves in the wide open. Oh, one will place Nade over the top here. Could spell the downfall for at least two of the Sonic's players. We'll see if it connects. It's going to be close. Will it get anything? No. Oh, Sonic's able to wrap up before it comes through. Oh, Sonic's on the move once again, and they're going to find themselves arriving at the perfect time as Atom Mu has managed to get two knocks. Kickstart will flush Ooh. out Tom Mu, and now Sonic's might have to turn their attention back over towards T5 as the return utility coming through. You can see all of them very, very damaged right now. Thanatol is in the smoke, and he just smokes. saw Tick shoot towards him. I'm not sure, though, if that was just a kind of a spray and a prayer, hoping that there was one there, but... We'll see now, though, if he's going to be able to get something done. Four up and alive still at field, though. Even if the knock does come through, they should be able to reset. But Thanatol prone right next to pretty much the entirety of Sonics. Yeah, all of Sonics knows he's there, though. They, they know somebody's hiding inside that smoke. I'm pretty sure they do. If you've been watching the kill feed, that is uh, one of the things that they are very yeah. good at. But uh, a lot of stuff was happening all at one time right there. And unfortunately for them, the circle will shift up to the north. That's going to favor 17 Gaming in a big way. Oh, yeah. Sure will. Sure will. Then it all. Flash in hand. This is the time to make a play. You might get two people flashed off. And we know these flashes can last for a long time. Peeks on over. Finds the first one. Goes for the second. Not going to get it. But we'll see now if that's enough damage done. Shrimsy instantly falls to his after. Oh, Shen found Shrimsy through the smoke. And Tai Lu now looking over here, but they're not, they can't push it any harder. Uh, it looks like Shen might be the one to do it. He's gonna have a grenade in hand. Will it fall short? It will. That's not gonna be nearly long enough as actually Xiao Bei, that was 17's grenade. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. Tai Lu. 17 coming here as well. So both Chinese teams now putting the uh, screws onto Sonics. There's two plays to try to make here. Either A, get the kills in the end. They will deny two of them. Tick and Kick will go down to the blue. But either A, you get the kills or you force them to go towards the opponents. You want to set up third party opportunities here in the late game. Smart, engaged by both sides. In the end, they will fall. And then we have 7-7 seven, seven from Xiang, but still, still seven, in the middle. Seven. It's a Chinese win guaranteed. But will it be 17? Tai Lu will potentially the sneaky snake in 7-7. Seven, seven. That's going to come out on top. Well, Tai Lu has their trigger fingers all warmed up. Eight kills right now. Little ghost creeping up. Oh, that's going to be a good flash from his teammate, but does not pull the trigger on it just yet. They are keeping Tai Lu blind, but no peaks coming in just yet. This is mostly just to keep them from pushing yeah. into them, really. Trying to isolate the angles, trying to get a perfect idea of exactly where everyone is. And also, with four alive on both sides, they're all seeing nine alive in the kill feed. They yep. know that somewhere there's a guy well, that can be the snake. reason you don't win this game. If 7-7 seven, seven peaks up and over, finds one knock and just half damage on the second, that could easily be game over for either of these teams. So no one wants to take any risks before they find the snake. No, indeed. We are at phase seven as our uh, Vikendi games have been going very, very quickly uh, throughout this tournament. The circle does pop, and it is going to center up uh, right on that coastline, right on Tai Lu. 17 will have a little bit more work to do, but not terribly much. I mean, they can still, they still have a lot of room to maneuver oh, yeah. around, it seems. No, I mean, the, the main thing here is do not give the other teams access to the riverbank. Do not allow them to wrap around on that shoreline. That is, I mean, instantly a downfall. So right now, both of them playing defense mode, waiting, of course, for the final circle to pop to guarantee whether or not... Sorry, this is the final circle. Never mind, it's going to end right in between them. So that's why they're holding as much defensively as they are. Wait for the snake to mm -hmm. be dealt with and then get a perfect understanding of exactly where your opponents are. They know that one team is east, one team is west, but where is that solo? Yeah, they are being very, very careful about utility conservation at this point, which is exactly what they need to do. But they, as you said, that, that solo player, that snake player, everybody has that top of mind. Oh, now he's on. Yeah, no, I think me. he um, maybe has I an mean, idea. there's only so many places he can be at this point. Yeah, they pretty really. much scouted the entire thing. And, uh, well, solos do like trees, cars, bushes, you name it. If there's a bit of cover, you'll go for it. And I think that's maybe what Sushi is starting to realize. There's one tree left that we haven't cleared. Oh, look He's at this. He's got to be over there. The smoke's out into the frozen river. Maybe Tai Lu going for a little bit of play here. Yeah, yep, Xiao yep, Yang yep. actually going out for to try to find a little bit of a different angle. We'll take a few shots over towards his direction, but no knocks coming through. Very, very low, though. And Xiao Wu and Xiao Bei combine. 
but don't get the knock. Yeah, we talk so often about how Shin is the highlight player on the team. We saw through PTS2 and in this tournament too, how Xiao Yang is the enabler of oh, the team, the man. guy that sets up the rest of the players for success, and here he does it again. He peeks out wide, Xiao Wu goes for the spray, but instantly that allows for l to peek on over. You do have that snake vision <gasps> in the PIP. Picture in picture down there, you can see 77 just waiting for his time to strike. Xiao Wu won't, does not look like he's going to be able to get rezzed here. Actually, no, Xiao Bei will find no him. They have no clue. They both think he's on the wrong side. Shen is right on top of l -Set. If I mean, if 7-7 peeks on over now, that's a double kill confirmed. 77 playing it very close to the vest here. Xiao Yang, another angle here. Shen actually comes, he will find 77, so that lets them know that that snake is gone, but the trade comes through. Lil goes down, Shen down, both flushed immediately. Solid flank around the side, we'll see if they get to reap the rolls from it. Asushu peeks on over, finds one instantly traded down, and Xiao Bei with the final one will bring home the win for 17 Gaming. 17 gaming showing once again why they are the favorites to win this tournament. They clutch out better than anybody else in the world. They're 180 to have to go for 7-7. Seven, seven. They knew they had one second to make a play. We talk about it often, Poro, how teams are given chances to make winning plays but don't dare go aggressive to claim them. Here, once they saw they saw like once they saw they got the kill behind them, they instantly push and they reap the rewards. Beautiful stuff from 17 Gaming and a great game from Ty Lu as well. They oh, yeah. managed to oh, collect yeah. a nice set of points for themselves. So let's throw it over to the desk and see what they have to say about this game on McKendy. Welcome back. It is yet another different team that takes home the chicken dinner as 17 Gaming gets the chicken on the candy. Let's take a look back at the journey. It's highlights. Yeah, and these highlights are just highlights of sending shivers down my mm. back while I saw this circle. That is one of the roughest circles I've ever seen. Right. And also, of course, you have to just say these, I mean, these teams that sent it into Dinoland, it was Hail Marys. But yeah. It's like a city. You don't go into the city unless you know it's going to end there, and it just was absolute murder. <laughs> Crazy scenes, nice nades, nice utility, and overall, but the team's not used to fighting here. You know, you're not used to trying to get out of Dinoland. You're used to fighting someone in, in more of the opens here. So, yeah, super cool ending, though, and super well executed by 17 in the ending. They, yeah. they poked the teams. They heard the teams. They made sure that they got into the right spots, and they were able to clutch it up. Towards, and then the Tailu, we have to say, that was fantastic play by them. They managed to stay strong throughout the game. Absolutely. Side note, if you see a game called Jungle Jam at the next uh, theme park you go to, do not enter that kiosk. <laughs> that was absolutely wild. And the end game comes down to this Tyloo 17. You know, I, I thought when they set when they sent their player out to the rock to sort of find that flanking position, they got that knock that it was going to open the door for Tyloo. But 17 just feel, I mean, let's go back to for a second. Welcome back to the desk, by the way, Toppy's Avenger. Uh, let's go back to that Sonic's moment where Sonic right. sort of started to push them. They got that opening knock and then they came in their cars around 17 had the presence of mind to leave the anchor. Right. Lil Ghost didn't push. He set a smoke wall and defended while they picked up and carried. And then uh, I want to go. Yeah, I want to go so well. Yeah, but I want to go. Yeah, I mean, they picked up and carried. I, I want to go deeper, right? Okay. Do you think the right play would have been because we were like discussing it? H when they were like, okay, he sees the pickup, right? right? So he's not on the res immediately. That means it's going to be at least you know 20 right. more seconds until the player gets up and full HP. Plus the time that it times to travel there, Sonic decided to go on the rock and and make a a squeeze salvage game rather yeah. than potentially go for the win there. Do you think there is the right play? I think that speaks to the power of 17 game. Right. Yeah. The I respect. think if it wasn't 17, that might have played differently. But when I see 17 with already what they've done at the start of this, like these guys are out of control top four take a look at it and we're already talking about them we'll keep rolling down this pipeline it's 17 gaming i mean these are the guys just as a reminder pgc 2022 runners up pgs1 champions first place finisher in the winner's bracket and the list would go on if we were willing to go far enough back to talk about it that is what is scary and not even that like little ghost i don't feel like is it his full strength right now in fact the man of the match is going to go to suju 400 Good points 300 kills but they this game was more about 
space management and placement, I think, than anything. For sure. Location, terrain yep. management, everything. And they actually did that super well. They executed it perf to perfection here. And s another game where we have 17 gaming getting 17 points. Mm. Isn't that OCD inducing for you guys? It, you know, it also just feels like a sign. Like, if I was also in a top heavy. Look at that. The right. drop-offs from fourth to fifth is five points. Well, like that's because the, the end game didn't have a sure. lot of options, yeah, right? Yeah. So you kind of had to go out there. We did see those teams that came out of the fight at Dino right, did right. put up these massive Whoa. kill counts. V7 will oh hold on to the lead at 31. Oh my. It's 11 tell me, points tell me. from first to 12th. It's 11 points wow. difference, Toffees. That's I've never a seen a, t a tighter leaderboard after four games. Well, there's in no a grand sponges. Finals especially. There's no sponges. There's no sponges. Yet. Now, yep. what I would hate to be is the teams in the bottom four because you know that conversation at the end of today is going to be like, oh, everybody else is so close. Yeah, you but know? Gingy goes out and get a you know, 10 kill chicken dinner, then 27th, they mm. go into top eight quite fast. So, yeah, it's, it's close. Two more games. Yeah, and you got to make the most because I think SSG at 13 is our best example of a team that I thought had the chance. And they didn't quite right, capitalize right. it uh, in that Miramar game. Face Clan, 23 points. They had books on sale. Absolutely. All right, so I think you have to master, you have to go with what you see, with the opportunities as they arise. Now, the opportunities are going to be there. We're headed to a wrangle next. Yeah. We saw what SSG did in a wrangle last week. Now, they did catch some circles, but this is a chance to bounce back. Right. I think Gen G as well, uh, PO's sort of floating style maybe works better I, on this map. I think map. the Wrangle is arguably the, the map where it's hardest to these clutch plays because mm -hmm. they are the terrain and the map is just so well known that it's just going to be super hard. Well, we'll find out. Two more matches to play. It's PGC 2023. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this break. Unleash my shopping spree. Duty free from big brands. At all King Power stores. And King Power Online. It's possible. Enjoy great selections, promotions, and privileges. The power of possibilities. King Power. Autobots forces have set up their barrier. They are waiting for sunrise before they release their car. With my magic, the night will turn. Please beware, Mayara is coming for you. ไม่ง่ายแต่ไม่ยากที่จะทําแค่ตั้งใจและสนุกกับมันโทษการน้อยตอบโจทย์ทุกไลฟ์สไตล์แบรนด์สาหร่ายยอดขายอันดับหนึ
Hello, everybody. We are back once again to set you up for our final two games of the day on Home Sweet Home. Toby, it's Aaron Gold. It sure is. It sure is. And if the previous three maps we've gone over today, it's anything to go by. One thing's for sure. Sir, spicy, spicy, spicy circles are abound. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. We finally get to see a 17 gaming victory and what a definitive victory it was. Ty Lu, well, they did their or they did their best. Yeah. They did their best and uh, it just was not good enough. 17 just on another level right now at this competition. I feel like we're very lucky to have in one day of games a perfect showcase of how to engage when you're given the opportunity to. Yeah. We saw it in this game here. Yeah, as, soon as, they, as soon as they 180 to kill the snake, they know at least one guy's is back turned right now. Send it. They do it, they come out and win the game. Go back to the Miramar game earlier where you have New Happy against SSG. Yep. SSG see two knock players. They throw this they, they throw the stuns they need to in order to make the play. Uh, but they hesitate for the split second. Mm -hmm. That costs them the win. At this level of play, if you miss just a one second gap, that is your win taken away from you. Got to take those high risk, high reward opportunities every time they present themselves. Let's see how many will present themselves here on our final two matches on Erangel. We are getting into the game. Right there da, 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 is da, da, da. what everybody is fighting for, Toby. A beautiful trophy. I got to touch it. It really. You did? I mean. I wouldn't say I got to touch it more than <laughs> just like ran I up and slapped the trophy. I kind of snuck a touch on it, okay. but uh, right. but you know I'm not playing for it, so it's not like I have to worry about jinxing myself. No, I was anything, just gonna right? say how do I know I know this is the player curse thing, but how does that work with me and you working together here now? I don't know. Are you gonna like? Yeah, I don't know. Now I'm worried. Now I can't sit next. Like I gotta move further away now. I feel like you. <laughs> what are you, you talking you're about? You're somehow me? cursed. No. You touched the trophy. I don't know if I like that. Oh well, I liked it. Says the least superstitious guy in the world. It was very so. cold. And yeah. metal and I, I do like the simplicity of it. I feel like sometimes those trophies get way too, you know, over the top. This is simple, but it's really, really cool. Yes, indeed it I is. I like it a lot. It's, it's also design. extremely heavy. I found out because uh, yeah. uh, they, they used to, they had all the trophies uh, at the the PUBG headquarters in Santa Monica, where we did uh, have North American showcases. We we had a studio set up for a while there, so got to see those trophies. Got to touch the trophies. Got to lift. A trophy at one point, and yeah, that sucker is heavy. You don't want to, yeah. you don't want to have to be carrying that thing around. But you know what? That's enough about my experience with trophies. We've got 16 teams on the field right now, Toby, that are making their run of their own and for the trophy. And so far, we kind of mentioned in the previous one, but now they're still set in first place. So far, I'm not gonna lie, the team that I of these 16 probably had the least expectations for in the grand finals. Veronica 7 is still sat in first place. Yeah. Which to me is absolutely amazing. It goes to show again that there is that period of a grand finals or really any bracket in the tournament where it's anyone's game. Then we have those teams that are just better when it comes to day two, especially when I'm down now that we have a day three sure. here as well for the first time in this tournament. There are teams that I'm pretty sure will be able to catch up, but seeing Veronica 7 come off to such a strong start, I think is really, really great because I think had they not, it would be very hard for them to start making that run come day two, come day three, when some of these more, I'd say, experienced teams on a global scale uh, start getting their game going. Well, that's the name of the game. It's it's not only just to find yourself up at the top, because, uh, I mean, especially on first day, right? One game, yes. one good game gets you there, but you got to have the other games, right? The, exactly. the other ones where you're constantly collecting points, constantly progressing forward. You just can't uh, take those, uh, those zero-point goose egg games as exactly. they put you so behind the eight ball, especially, uh, especially in a lobby this freaking talented. I mean, look at this. First to 12th separated by 11 points. Mm -hmm. That's insane. It is actually insane. And it adds even more pressure, as you said, to being able to convert a zero-point game. Just, just two or three points. Because now that we That's, add that yeah. extra day, now that we go from 12 matches to 18, those really accumulate over yeah. time. I mean, and... Uh, and yeah, we've seen it time and time again where teams look completely beaten in matches and still the solo. Either he sneaks into placement points or he gets a perfect off angle and just finds those one or two points, then going down. But he found the points. He got something out of a tr uh, out of a tricky game. Yeah, even, I mean, look, even last game. Uh, yeah. Getting 7-7, uh, seven, seven. Seven, getting some more placement yep. points there for Tai Lu. Or uh, Tiamba, rather. Ooh. Donawa. Sharp shot getting a little bit close to the boys, and an yeah. Onyx not really excited about that as he's going to take the seat swap through the fields, not going to find 
the knock. He does do a little bit of damage, but that's about as far as he's willing to go and, uh, and take this chase. This is an interesting Space Station gaming split now that we look at it, because we're still very, very early on. And of course, Space Station, I mean, used to going Lipovka, used to going out on that eastern side, denied that access by Tyloo. I'm not sure if they weren't ready for that coming into it, but if we see when they're currently positioned, I mean, they were kind of all over the place looking for vehicles, contesting three different teams for their cars. Now they get shot at, and if you look at them on the map, they have two players in what we at least in the EMEA call Liquid Compound. They have one player up towards the yellows, and then Pixel is still kind of roaming around looking for a place to call home. I think Space Station Gaming weren't ready for the hot drop coming in, or at least didn't have an, like, an alternate plan to follow should that come through. Well, the good news for them at least is that they are still four up and that they're not getting pressed. So uh, at the moment, SSG still okay. But what are they going to come away with from here? I mean, yeah, yes, they're in we'll the circle, but they're going to have like there's still there's still plenty of VSS and Uzis at this point. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> it's uh, but we've seen hey, we've seen teams make it all the way to the true. end of the end game with true. M16s and scars. So uh, you know, it's it's what you can do with what you have. That Toby. is so true. And Space Station Gaming, as a matter of fact, won a game from Hall of Fame with an Uzi and one of the players. So you know what? I'm not going to take anything away from them. They could still <laughs> go out and have a phenomenal game regardless of the loot they have been able to get. In the meantime, up towards the northern side, Gen G. And again, a Gen G that we see, I would say, there go center earlier than we're used to. We are seeing only two of them here right now. It's Sean Young and DG98 scouting forward, not expecting, I think, for third and five to be in this area this early on, but we have Petrico Road in the 2-2 split hub here as well. It's actually surprisingly trafficked up on the northern side of the river. Yeah, not so much worried about uh, Song Jang and his uh, his teammate that made it to that, but more worried about Esther and Pio, yeah. who are still off to the north, and now they're uh, split off from the rest of the boys by the entirety of T5. So. Uh, you can see Ty Lue over on this eastern side. As you said, still kind of harassing uh, SSG, just kind of keeping track of where they are, hmm. scouting out, looking to see where SSG might have left open. But still, a 2-1-1 split from SSG. That's, if they were pushed up against the wall, they're not really act like, acting like it. They're still taking over a lot of real estate. Sure. I feel like Gen G lives off of the same buff with that Will Smith Superman movie where the further he is away from his former wife, the stronger he is. Like, the, the further apart they are, the stronger they are. I feel like that's the Gen G buff. If the they just Will keep Smith Superman Yeah, you know, movie. like, the one, the Superman movie where he's, like, the once a superhero and now he's not anymore because he's oh, just a homeless you're the guy. Hancock. Hancock, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That movie. Where like where the closer he is to his like they are attracted regardless, regardless. Boy, talk about what one I'm of the trying 50 to say here, people that actually I'm, watch that movie. <laughs> what Good I'm God. trying to say here is that Gen G usually <laughs> splits wide and that's where they have control. I like the idea of them going more aggressive, but the way they're going about it now, sending two guys in, keeping two guys out, I don't know if that's the play. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see if it ends up rewarding them. Well, I think I think more than anything, I mean, it's 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 Po and Esther knowing that they they can't really push to where their teammates are cleanly anyway. I mean, it's very very risky. Although they are holding down warehouse, this also could just be them saying, you know what. There's a high likelihood that this hard shifts up to the north and we could have warehouse for free. I mean, if there's two circles we've seen on this map so far throughout this tournament, it is like south of Severny endings and it's west endings. And considering the fact that we're not going to end this game on Everest, even though, yes, I know there's oh, a corner of it still inside the circle. Even though we're not going to go there, if Gen G is playing the odds on this one saying, how many times have we actually gone north? I feel like they're playing a pretty good game right now. Please, no more Everest. I've seen it enough of Everest in this tournament. There. I know, but God, <laughs> the so quadruple Western hardship. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? It, I, I wouldn't even be surprised at this point. Not gonna lie. Uh, fair. Well, speaking of uh, of teams that may be thinking this might shift north of the river, you just saw Ty Lu looking down at LG. LG in a two-two split. Ty Lu favoring a little bit more onto Stalber. Petrichor Road, meanwhile. Got a 2-2 uh, split. They've got two on the north side of the river and then two down in the boatyard. Uh, just kind of keeping eyes on Veronica 7 and Tianba. And now Tianba, yep, they are uh, committing north as well. So yep. that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six teams committing north of the river? Yep, it's yep. a, uh, I mean, usually how it would be even when we have 50 50 it's just because there's that much more to play on the southern side. It's yeah. uh, That's the main reason why teams usually don't tend to commit to the less. Uh, kind of compound heavy areas until they're absolutely forced to go there. So it makes perfect sense that we're seeing that split right now. But as you said too, I mean, Petrico 
I hope they're reading the Tiamba split, right? Because when they opt to group up, of course, they're not going to go through Rossock over that bridge. That'd be rather suicidal. Sure. Um, so hopefully they're aware of, of Tiamba's position. And also for Tiamba, I think they're well aware that somewhere towards their east, we have Petricol, the team they've played against 30 sometimes in their region just a couple of weeks back. Uh, they usually like to play this split. So setting up to potentially mm -hmm. ambush that. Getting very close here. Speaking of ambushing. Over on Potato. Oh, H, when you're in trouble, my friend. Sonic so close. High Mass and Solozzi just waiting for it. The spray comes through, and High Mass will find H win, and there will be no res. The rest of the Sonics boys just a little too far away. The damage coming through from Shrimzy will damage, uh, take pretty much almost take out Solozzi's yeah. helmet. Good headshots from Shrimzy. He's been feeling himself today. But uh, that is Sonic's now down to three. And we're already now starting to see this whole idea of, as we kind of alluded to earlier, how the teams that play better off of previous games having been played, being able to, you know, go back and watch bots and see yeah. what teams like yeah, to yeah. do. We're starting starting to see those things being ambushed now. Sonic's have played up into this hillside a lot of times before. We they saw them indeed. against Foot, um, Foot Esports twice in the uh, last chance qualifiers. Fight them here. They like to play up in Potato in these particular circles. Cerberus, of course, well aware of that. So they set up early. Wait for them to come through and punish them. Speaking thereof. Might be worth noting, though, that uh, those those times that Sonics came from there, they were also looting Pachinki. And now they're no longer looting Pachinki, but they still come up from the western side. So Cerberus gets away with it. Suju will get spotted out as well. Tosi will take that one eventually as the sea saw the smoke come in late. Yeah. But uh, so much for a northern shift, Toby. We are playing down south. Two IGLs eliminated in the early game. We'll see if Sonic's Ant-17 can, uh, can get things going regardless. And as you said, Circle has swung towards the south. There's still plenty of river in play, so it could still have an impact. But for now, those six teams you mentioned just before have to figure out how do we get down. Do we just stay on the northern side or do we do wide wraps around the edge? Well, Petrocor Road already on the move. They're going to pass by... Uh, Tiamba just on the outside of Boatyard. Now their northern duo is still in a little bit of trouble because mm -hmm. you do have uh, ZYY and 77 that are in position to do a little bit of camping here if they so choose. But it looks like the boys will get through. Day trade, meanwhile, 2-2 split. Nice little spot north of Pachinki. I think they may have just gotten a knock on a 17, but yep. that flush will not be coming through. Oh, no, but still a lot of info being fed across. They saw sure, Sushu get sure. flushed just before in the kill phase, so they now know if we get a knock there, that's a 4v2 pull up should the next circle go in their direction. So great info being fed across regardless of whether they get the flush or not. Absolutely. It's always good to know just how strong the teams around you are. LG making their way down from the north side. They find a free and clear Yasnaya bridge, but T5 just off to their west. I haven't shot over here just yet. They're also still trying to find a place. Where does mm. LG go from here, though? That's the question. There's just slow. not a lot available here. No, they play it slow. They scout forward. I think re the reason they're stopping here is because they're well aware this was the safe rotation. Everything from yeah. here forward yeah. is going to include fighting opponents. It's and that's why, that's why I love seeing them stop where they do. They could even have stopped earlier and scouted this. Like, they're playing cautious. They're playing smart. They're not leaving anything up for... What if there's no one there? They're saying, no, we know there's going to be no one here. Let's just be smart about it. And maybe, who knows, maybe a fight will pop off that we can then get to third party by just waiting. Right now, the blue is not forcing us to go anywhere. Exactly. Let's play it smart, play it slow, and see what happens over the next couple of minutes. Yeah, I mean, they, there's high risk, high reward, and then there's uh, high risk, just risk average management. reward. <laughs> yeah. Just like going any further onto the center of this, you just you know what you're getting into. And and it's just not worth it. Most likely, that would be a fight that they have to commit the entire team to, yeah, exactly. which also usually means means ending up in a position that you have to commit yourself to. So imagine them taking a fight to Danawa in the garden compound, and then all of a sudden the circle hard shifts southwest, and you're like, well, guess we shouldn't have gone there to begin with. And right now, they can sit and wait for exactly. that circle to pop. So no reason to stress about it, no reason to claim sender in a circle where they know everything sender is taken already. Commit that time, commit those resources, exactly. and then eventually you get third party by SSG. So <laughs> that's not <laughs> exactly. what you want to see, as we see exactly. Gen.G on that eastern shift. Now, correct C from FaZe. FaZe has been hugging the southern side down here, yeah. making sure that they don't get backfilled. Jeem's still down at Ferry Pier. Uh, Corexi uh, crept up here just far enough to know, or to, I guess to see Gen G making their way down. So he's going to go and join the rest of the boys. And uh, yep, Jeem's finally, it looks like, leaving. It. But Gyuming going to find out uh, Panapong as Razak mm -hmm. is getting a little bit close there. I'm curious to see if Veronica 7 is opting to aggress off of this. Again, Veronica 7 usually a team that will not take a fight until forced to. In the meantime, now in the exact same spot that H-Twin fell just minutes ago, 
December 12th is going to meet the same faith. Server is holding down the line on the eastern side of Potato as the circle will cut back towards the middle. So we'll still get school. We'll still get Razak. We still get Boatyard, Toby. We'll see if it <laughs> decides to hard shift over in that direction. But right now, Twisted Minds dead center in the school and uh, they might have company here shortly. Great read here by Luminosity. Again, don't go anywhere until Backfill. you're given opportunities to. They see the vehicles leave. They say, you know what, that's ours. We're still inside the circle. Now we wait for an opportunity once more. Donawa sending it up to the Razak Hill. Meanwhile, SSG tries to make the crash onto Twisted Minds, but Twisted Minds Ooh. is waiting and ready. They will find two with help from SSG and from Sonics. As now, SR, uh, from LG and Sonics, as Sharpshot and Pixel now suddenly the last two remaining players alive. The rest of Twisted Minds, though, are arriving to provide that support. That was such an awkward position to the way that the vehicle was parked. I think that's going to be Pixel down. No, Should maybe. Be. No, maybe not no. going to happen. But the way that the vehicle was Park denied for him to push forward, so I had to flush Roth in order to push up towards that wall. Never want to see it happen, but just a really awkward place to get knocked in because the action now commences. That allows for Sonics to pull up here, too. Heads up timing here from the Sonics. They did lose H win early, but the IGL still in comms, letting them know this is the time to go. Let's take over that pool area while Twisted Minds is busy. LG going to do the exact yep. same thing. Now they're playing the wall. They've got to be quick about this because you can see Donawa still up on that Razak Hill. And that is the danger of playing these high prior positions in the circle center. If you don't get rid of the team that pulls up fast, if anyone smells a third party opportunity, Another they will in. pull up. And here they all come. E pick up from Gen G. Hopefully for them, they don't jump out here. No, they continue going for a little while longer at least. So this fight will remain as just, I say, four teams alive. LG in a little bit of trouble, as we said. The smoke still keeping them alive on that wall's edge, but Donawa looking down with them. Now, meanwhile, Gen G has Ooh. sent it, and fortunately enough for them, with no scouting, they get this <laughs> south side compound all to themselves. Nine billion IQ read. You know that oftentimes the team will play the northern side, looking forward, trying to make some space for themselves. But the fact that they dare to go for that make a play is absolutely insane. Now, Ming Ming at a distance with the red dot finds Corexi, but there's still more face play to be dealt with. Phase on the hill. Fexi and Fexi, Corexi. Corexi will get flushed out. Jeans will get flushed out as well. Fexi now the last player up. Ming Ming and Nan may have lost track of him, though, as now they are trying to escape, trying to survive a little bit more here. As we see the kill feed absolutely yeah. lighting up. LG tried to push into the pool building. Phase Clan will get eliminated. LG now has, uh, they've got Mime knocked, but they've managed to make inroads here into the pool. Shrimzy, the last Sonic Rub. The school and Rossok are on fire as we see now the coat on the screen make sure to grab him got to be fast about it as fast as these guys have to be if they want to claim more space <gasps> in this circle that's that a, a really green. well thrown it should have a double kill on it we'll see no oh. i think it bounced down the stairs oh unfortunate there and really fortunate for sonics as they get that revive off just in the nick of time lg now four strong still twisted minds starting to creep over here but they don't want to commit too much they'll only peak angles that are safe Meanwhile, the circle does pop. It's going to go back towards waves, towards those wide open fields south of Razak and east of school or west of school. And this is where things are going to start slowing down. Now, there is that gap of chaos where everyone is pushing one another. Everyone is pulling up on the school. But now the teams are kind of settled. Now they're holding their corners, holding their angles. Now is when the hot drop turns cold drop. And we'll just see everyone here waiting until the circle is going to force them to leave. Got eyes on Razak right now. And that's where we're watching as we've got a number of teams having to make their way to that Razak Hill just to get inside the zone. Theraton 5 already taking some damage from Twisted Minds. V7 Fun Pin have made it to the south side of the road. They're joined by Tiamba. Pow Pow still holding a spot on the northern side, feeding information over to the rest of his squad, letting them know where Veronica 7 is. Meanwhile, school seems to have calmed down a little bit for now. Yep, it is. Uh, everyone knows that everyone sat in corners holding angles with yeah. shotguns, and that's a, that's a no-no. Don't push. Just wait this one out. Maybe we get the eastern heart shift. Maybe we get rewarded by something happening. That something could just be Therod on five joining the party in school as well, unless if Twisted Minds can stop them. Full send coming in. Twisted Minds will at least get one off of this as they make it to the wall, or at least Rossited and Patapong do. But good grenade placement so far. We'll get Rossited low. Won't find the knock just yet. Donawa wants to creep over and peek this, but they're getting uh, taken shots at by 17. So no free 
peaks here for anybody. Nope, things slowing down once more as New Happy will be eliminated again. Only two teams out. And we're almost in phase five. These teams really trying to play it smart and safe to the best of their ability. And then you have Tim G that just hot drops center and somehow gets an entire uh, yeah, comeback to themselves. But outside yourself. of that, outside of that, everyone <laughs> playing it slow right now because they know there are so many teams nearby. There's too much space in this circle that you literally cannot utilize at all. So teams are forced right next to each other in heaven. Spots Loki. Nobody wants to take that dead I mean there's plenty of space to play inside the dead center of the circle right now but nobody wants to take yeah. it yet yeah. because it's way too early there's will still too many sight lines available exactly. in there is now Tiamba they get pow pow on the other side of the street they've got v7 pin behind a tree but Veronica 7 taking the damage over to Donna well there you go Lynch <laughs> through the smoke will find human the spray comes through but he won't get the flush such a nice read on it too she's like these players know each other's muscle memory he knows that if he was in full sprint there he's gonna continue you around that tree, so he's pretty much just tracing him through the smoke. They're finding him absolutely nice, nice taps there coming through, uh, reading the movement of the opponent. Tosi trying to go for a flank. It hit the tree? Oh, it hit the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Tosi tried to go for a flank there on the Veronica 7, but ZYY had sniffed it out and was able to prevent him from taking any shots down there while the mortars still proving ineffective. They are still scary as hell if you're a V7 player. So while the North is going to blow up in just a short moment, because really only one or two teams can come out of there alive, yeah. the South is going to have to make moves to Cerberus has to make plays. They trade and Petrico has to as well. Speaking of Petrico, here's Pow Pow. He can, Pow Pow gets headshot and just continues to hold the angle. Does not care. He has three HP and still peaks Petrico. What a giga Chad. Okay, Tiamba still Holding the line here in Razak. Now, Chewy71 has managed to make his way up here, but nobody from Tiamva overpeaking. Meanwhile, on the south side of this zone, Server is going to try to hard crash into Genji's compound. They're going to lose Hisaki right off the bat. Let's see if they can make it over to the ridge lines here, and they're going to actually full send over to the warehouse where they have 17 Shao Bay ready and waiting, and he'll find Hymas, and that will be Cerberus dismantled. This play yield. We have one. One play that we're trying to pull off, get down to the wall of the compound. Then they get there, the one guy say, no, let's do something else, but they don't have the something else ready. Therefore, they scatter in all directions and they end up oh, falling Donald. a bit closer. But in the meantime, Rogue Oh man. my goodness. Perfect nade, lapped on over, takes out the entirety of Danawa. And that is why you don't want to take the low ground too early. When people still have access to the high ground, they can do things like that. Donawa summarily removed, and now Petricor, after fighting their way over from Boatyard, they have taken no knocks. They are cleaning up Tiamba. We said it, only two teams can get out of here alive right now. That's three, though, with Tosis still trying to make a play on this one. Issue is he's on foot, he's on his own, and he might just, I mean, he has two nades. If you see them now, he oh sees no. one, might see them both go through the spray as well. Do they see him? No, they don't. Tosi fights the first, fights the second as well. What a hero play from Veronica 7, and this is why they maintain their first place position, Toby. Even in the worst possible scenarios, they are managing to collect points. Absolutely insane individual performance. The Nate thrown down, but then reading exactly where he has them both. Even though there's a smoke deployed, still transfers over. Double headshot at that distance. Solid sprays coming through, and again, we talked about it. Turning salvage games into points. Tosi doing all of that right now. Yes, he falls. Doesn't matter. The damage has been done. Just Job done for Tosi as now we see New Happy. Well, this is what happened to them. They tried to make the push as well, and they were repelled just like the others before them. 17 Gaming working well on the north side. Gen G holding the south. And now Petricor Road, they have, uh, they have the northern side of the circle. They have waves to work around here. But Day Trade holding the line against Taddy Lou, and that is them gone down. And meanwhile, Mime finds Shrimzy and Kickstart the flush with the Panzer Faust. He got taken down by the pump action, but says, hey, I got something better. Blows them both up in the staircase, and they will get rewarded for it. In the meantime, now, Circle swings south, and Day Trade able to clear that fight as fast as they were. It's going to set them up for a really good opportunity here. We saw Churi get knocked just before, but Summer and Ixit are real, real close to Day Trade up north of the compound. It's an awful timing for Petricor Road as that knock came through right as they were making their push. Belmoth holding the line, looking on the edges. 
Grenades coming through. Ixleff will find Flash. Lots of utility being used, but good hold on the low side. Summer will get knocked by Norens. Ixleff, though, will find Belmont. He's going to find Norens as well. Norens with the trade. What a shot. Absolutely insane peak on over. Did not have that angle at all, but catches him with a flash in hand. Perfect play. Coming through from Norens, but they're not done yet. They still have yet to find a flush, and there's two players alive on the other side here. Joey peeking on over. He's going to try his time. Wait for the resins to come through. Nice that he's trying his time here. Do not aggress. Do not give Norens any sort of chance to get through oh, this one shoes. alive. New more utility being sent over there, Pushills. The shot will come just a oh. little bit shy. Chewy getting taken low by Nerds, but there you go. Pero will hold the line and they will collect a few more kills in their bag. What an attempt though for Day Trade. Solid sprays coming through, but falls just short on that one. Great play though in response from Petrico. And now the remaining players here from Luminosity trying to make something happen, but it is no man's land where they're going and Twisted Minds are finding a lot of points off of it. They will indeed. Snakers, the last one alive, and he is just <laughs> running around for as long as he can Ow! survive. Somehow still surviving. Song Jang actually going to find the knock on a Perfectix. So Twisted Minds, they tried to find this angle onto LG, and they pay the price. I've heard Trevor say it before, the coach from LG saying, Snakers, he's always coming out and saying, there's a skill to dodging bullets. Left, right, <laughs> up, time, prone, cow, like crouch jump, do whatever you want. LG, uh, once again, Snakers just turning into Neo from Matrix. A Skill on display right now for Snakers as he manages to keep LG in this game. Now Twisted Minds, they still have to find their way inside this zone. There's still one alive for T5. Patampong getting the cheers of the crowd to keep him supported. And now Sharp Shot, nobody aware of him, Toby. He has managed nope. to sneak into the south side of Genji's compound. Creeping further forward. We see Snakers jump there, found one, and then in the response. Hello, guys. How are we doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> Blows up all of them. That is the power oh, of Batu. their oh. Panzer Faust there. But Tulin's trying to creep further forward. Oh, you cannot prone down here, mate. You got to keep going. One HP. He does have a jammer pack, though. He does, he have, does a jammer have a jammer pack. pack. Okay, I was going to say, this man is playing with fire right now. But that uh, that jammer pack going to keep him alive as Gen G. They are just in perfect position. Yeah. There you go. Song Jong will be the one that picks him off. And now we are down to our top five. What will Sharp Shot do? The two snakes, Patampong and Sharp Shot, in perfect positions to wreck yep. people's games here. Three of our teams alive right now currently set in the bottom 12. Ah, Third and five will Patampong. fall again. It's an angle. When you see the car, you go, hmm, I wonder if there's a player next to it as well. But look at this 13, 14, 15th still in this match. We said the leaderboard was close, but if Space Station or Genji gets off to a good finish here, it's only going to be closer. I mean, Petrichor Road could jump, Genji could jump. There you go, Sharp Shot going to steal Swan. Esther away. The snake has bitten as Song Jang will come down to, uh, to the wall to try to find revenge for his fallen teammate. But Sharp Shot back on the move. He's got that M249, Toby. Yeah. That is terrifying stuff. Really great read from Sharp Shot and understanding where the pressure is coming through from as well. He finds Esther instantly 180, sent that smoke grenade in the opposite direction, completely isolating the angle. Unfortunately for him, Gen G still can afford to do a yeah, full yeah. wrap around on this south side without having to worry about anybody third partying them. So Sharp Shot, we'll see what else the he timing. can do from this high ground. He's gonna find another one. Pio is gonna go down. Sharp Shot, the hero plays for Space Station Gaming. Has some Nate, has some Molly using the oil can on top to try and grant himself some more cover from the other side, but the money oh! is through, but late, but it doesn't matter. Damage has been done once more, but this again, the blue is closing in slowly. You gotta send they this, will be able to reset, but 17, only three up. They have the circle. Do you make the play here knowing there are two knocks or do you wait for them? It's too dangerous with Petrico right behind you. I feel like they can't. Oh. It's too dangerous to make the play, especially now that they hear the vehicles. And the utility just falling yep. short here. Shabe going to be holding the line right now. He's got a very good fort built in front of him to prevent entry into that uh, warehouse. But Petrichor Road trying to find these angles. Shao Wu will find Summer, will force him back. Eight kills for Petrichor Road as they have shown up in a big oh way yeah. Oh here yeah. in game five. Off of an insane pull up on the ridge line there as well. Really, really great play. And also up on the northern side, up towards Razak. Having Chewie up close is kind of the surprise element and utilizing him absolutely perfectly. Solid game for Petrichor. What we expect to see from Petrichor. But again, this is the first time they make PGC Grand Finals. Glad to see them getting comfortable. And 
Gen G showing signs of life as well. Yeah, Seven yeah. kills. Now they lose Esther to the snake in the grass, but they are able to fully reset off of that, get back to the position that they wanted to play before. They managed to get across the road again as 17 was too concerned with keeping track of Petrichor Road, exactly what they should have been doing anyway. So Gen G taking advantage of that situation. The new circle does pop, and it is going to favor 17's compound. Again, I mean, the years and years of experience among these three teams left remaining. When they get those two second windows to make plays, all of them will execute when need be. So looking forward to what hopefully will be a very, very good finish to this match. Here's Gen G again spotted. Look at the angle oh, that Lil Ghost is holding. Xiao Wu and Lil Ghost just not going to allow for Gen G to wrap over and Xiao Wu again. Oh able to find God. one. Absolutely filthy shots <laughs> coming through as Xiao Wu will get the knock on her, or the flush on the PO rather as 17 gaming just the narrowest of sight lines and they make it work. Now Xiaobe having to pull back here. I think they're reading this knowing that they should be expecting the push from Petrichor Road. Right now Xiaobe holding the line as Petrichor Road comes through. He'll find the first knock on the main. Small mistakes being made here as there was no trade. The nade is there to follow though. They should be able to reset. They should be able to get the rest on up. But we're seeing so many. I mean, we always talk Gen about G. great rotations. But these are small individual mechanical up close plays that we've been blessed with. The Ike's left nade to instantly run into follow. Because you know that Xiaobe is going to fall back off of it. Make a play off of it. Yes, the trade there wasn't quite good, but they still keep four alive. Still alive is Gen G as they get the res back onto Song Jang. Now they do lose Pio down to two as Xiao still has that nasty angle from the roofs. But they have spotted him out. They know exactly where he is. Shots not coming through just yet. The smokes maybe a little bit too far here away from where they are as Xiao has a beautiful angle, but now he's got to worry. Oh, he spotted out Chewie. Did yep. he see him? I mean, whether he saw him or not, oh, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Chewie's gonna give up, the, give up this angle regardless of whether or not he knows he's there or not, because that is just too important. That's both holding him on the roof, but also not allowing for 17 to make a wrap on the western side. So very important that Chewie holds that contain. Okay, Gen G, they put the smoke wall down, and it looks like it's gonna get him to the wall, and the circle center dot is gonna fall right on top of Petrichor Road. I think 17 gaming trying to get a little bit closer. He's gonna flash himself. They go prone. He flashes himself again. Xiao Wu just peek around the side. He's going to find one. There's two right there, buddy. Go ahead and get your second piece. There it is. <laughs> Xiao Wu gets the sixth kill for 17. I feel like he was like he deserved the kill earlier because little goats flash over the top. Unluckily flashes Xiao Wu as well, but loving the attempt here of trying to make something happen like that. Flashing for each other. We see it in tag FPS games all the time. And here they're trying to set up plays for one another too. Absolutely phenomenal to see. 17, though, 2v4, do they go for it or do they deny? Petricor Road from last place to eighth in the span of 30 minutes. Oh. Can they get higher? Little Ghost will find Summer. He's got eyes on Ming as well. But he's only got nine rounds left in the magazine, Toby. That's the issue. That is the issue. We're reaching a point where as much as they probably want to take this fight, they literally have nothing left to work with. And the other guys do. Ike's left headshot to follow over the top. That's one down. Six bullets. Lil Ghost is not giving up on this. He wants to find the flush, wants to find anything to try and take them out. But I think even he is starting to realize, you know what? I literally have nothing <laughs> to work with. And that is going to be Patrickal with a 10 kill chicken dinner. That is what you call a glow up. Toby oh, from yeah. last place and now Petricor Road in the span of one game has hopped right back to the top of the leaderboard and boy don't they know it. Good work from them in a very, very difficult game. From start to finish, I mean they're 2-2 two, two split in and around Ross, like them even being able to regroup to then fight over the northern side and make their way down towards that compound. So great. Again, a Petricor that I feel like we have never seen at PGS before, a PGC before at this level. I'll tell you what, Petricor Road Obviously, the stars of this one. Big win from them. But Toby, 17 looks like they're warming up, man. That is terrifying stuff. Let's throw it over the desk to hear what they have to say about this last game.
Five games down and five chicken dinners to five different teams. Petrichor Gaming comes away with the most recent in a dominant play that started over there in the cat's house. And ultimately, like, they fought on that hill in a way I've never seen before. Yeah, and then managed to push impressive. over to the warehouse. Let's look at the highlights. There's the highlights, baby. Yeah. And but also, this case here, like, they took terrain away from other yes. teams that they were not, like, given easily, right? So it's a hard-fought win. So super impressive all, of course. But what an impressive game, right? Genji just e pick up straight into the southern part of the compound. And because 17 were only three guys at that point, they're playing only one side of the compound, right? So super well uh, executed by Genji. Of course, it's a little bit of a blind luck. V7, impressive amount of kills they're able to get yep. out of this. But again, it's super hard to get out of Rush Shock when you hit the circle shift mm -hmm. south, as the guys are pointing out during the disc or during the cast. Mime, nice. He's probably going to save that clip and put it here's into the, a Here's that play we were talking about. He should. This is where Petrichor just absolutely goes bananas. And they had to fight three teams and somehow managed to come away with four players alive. That's crazy. Which opens us up for the end game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you have a collapsible shield? Not anymore. And it comes down to the final three. Peros four wow. strong because of their ability to survive out on the ridges. They're able to push in. Genji distracts 17 long enough to allow that to happen. Right. And then, I mean, at that point, it's then like, what can you do? Then Lil six bullets left after the first spray down. And like, nothing in his DMR. They literally ran yep. through everything they had. So good game from Petrichor Road. I mean, that, and that's one of those two. Like, there's no, there's no sitting there and saying, oh, they caught circles or they didn't earn that. Like, these guys fought tooth and nail they in did. a spot that I don't like finding myself in personally over by those ridges. And they made the most of it and then actually took a super high value compound. So welcome back to Death. My name's Toffees. I'm joined by Avenger here as we break down the action. It was a very exciting game, and I was, dare I say, the start of some normal circles, hopefully. Yeah, uh, this was, of course, when you have such a center circle, you're expecting some of the teams that are looting center towards it is going to be doing extremely really. I actually have this going to be popping off. It's going to get five kills, 657 Shoo damage. So, very likely for the, to be the man of the match. Chewy also did good, for, of course. When he did 60 damage, you're more of a tank this round. Mm. You know, but sometimes you need the tank. You didn't even absorb that much, to be honest. He was just out there finishing the fights. I think that was the important thing is Ice Left was pretty wild up there on that line, and I think it was his team being able to sort of spread out and just make sure they were able to distract right, right. and keep eyes on them. Yeah, those riches north of the, of the package is, is a hard spot to mm -hmm. play, right? But they're able to get, like, the third party and the timing onto Day Trade, and also some of the missed utility on Day yeah. Trade a little bit uh, did, did definitely open the door for, for them to clutch it up. But he has a, they have two knocks. They survived mm -hmm. that. Get all four guys up, as you pointed out. Like, it's crazy. Two, 12, two teams on 12, 17 Gen G, but Pero on 20 after a somewhat rough start for, for them. Yeah, I, think, I mean, that's a very nice jump. Kill count, placement, huge points. Let's take a look at the overall leaderboard, though. 17 will grab, as they're in that 41 points, looking good, comfortable in first place. It is not a icon I am unaccustomed to seeing in first place. LG at four is going to be pretty happy, considering I think they've been a little bit, it felt almost not quiet, twisted right, minds right. as well. They've had a very median day, but they're making the most points when they get the chances. But, but still only 17 points True. from first place, 17 gaming, down to face on 20. 24 points, mm -hmm. so still it is super tight close. Again, no back to back, which have winners, it's like all not the sponging too much, yeah. but still the consistency, like the points per game is obviously, it's kind of leaning out a little bit. Now 17, they've put themselves there. And we even talked about sort of the bottom four needed to play a little more catch up. They're now within four points of moving up. So right, right. I think that that's, to me, the story of this lobby is while the other brackets we've run through ended up being kind of top heavy or some sponges that made it close, this is close because everybody is playing, honestly, at the top of their game. Also, really hot circus, right? You're not oh getting goodness, any back to true. back home turf circles. You're, of course, T5 had some kind of northern circles, but still it wasn't back to back. They had Mm. A really good game that they had to fight for that shifted out of the compound. An overall insane circle on Vikendi as well. Super hard to execute anything on that. It was difficult circles to lead up to that one. Then we go to school. Twisted Minds loved that spot. Gave him a little bit of a bolster. You saw him climb the leaderboard. But there's only one game left to play in three days of this grand final. It means one third of it is almost done. And it's time for a lot of our teams to get up and start to run. We talked a lot about the journey of a thousand miles starting with one step. This is when it's time to sprint. Let's sprint over to the final match of the day. It's a wrangle. Let's go. Thank you very much, Toppies, and yes, it is I, Porus Horus, and it is he, Toby, to bring you the final game of day one of these PG, uh, PGC Grand Finals. 
And uh, right now, 17 has taken the lead. I think uh, none of us would be very surprised to see them hold on to the lead at the end. But yeah. from there on down, it's still pretty close. Insanely close. Insane. Because loving the fact that no one's really been able to separate themselves so far. Curious now, though, to pa -pow. see... How to, pa -pow. Pa -pow. Curious now, though, to see what Space Station opts to do. We saw in the previous one maybe forced a little further west than what they were expected to be from Tai Lu. How do they adapt? Do they change anything up? I can tell you already now, easy to adapt because Tai Lu ain't here no more. They are not. And they are going down to Military Island. Yeah. And we'll see if our circle follows them. We're checking in with Ike's left there from Petrichor Road. Huge victory for them. Could not have come at a better time because their wheels were spinning I so mean, far through the first four games. I talked to Ike's left during the, um, during the losers break. I was like, how are you doing? Like, you guys obviously have never made PTC Grand Finals. Do you feel curious? What's going on? Mm -hmm. What are your expectations from this tournament, considering they always play oh, really no. well in China? As we see, pow, pow! Oh. Miss oh. Uh, it was only one pow, I suppose. Pow, pow! In any case, um, Ike's left just told me, Toby, we, we just want to make Grand Finals. Like, we've never gotten there. We feel like we're capable, but just mistakes on mistakes on mistakes cut off us short. Welcome to the first, I feel like one of the first, Eastern Circles on the regular in this tournament. Uh, but he said we just want to make Grand Finals, and I just looked at him, bro. <laughs> you guys are insane. <laughs> Don't sell yourselves short. And now I want to go talk to him again. Now you're here. Like, what are the expectations now, especially of what has now been a pretty good day today? Well, look, you, you got to you gotta just play the games that are in front of, uh, in of, front course, of you, right? Of you, have to, you have to take those baby steps. As Toffees has said uh, about four times now, I think the journey of a th um, thousand miles starts with one step. You, can, you can't start thinking about the grand finals when you haven't even made through the Berlin bracket true. yet. So it makes perfect sense that they would think that. But I guarantee you, these guys, they know that they're capable. They know that they belong in this lobby. And not only that, they know that they can win this lobby if they get they play their game and they get a little bit of luck on their side to go along with it. I feel like as much as all regions are capable of popping off, which we see time and time oh, again in yeah. this tournament, there is a thing to the majority of the Chinese teams that give them just a little bit of goodwill, give them just a little bit of space and momentum going their way, they will absolutely slaughter. Tianpa has done it in previous PTS tournaments. Obviously, 17, we don't even need to mention because, I mean, they're no, kind of... They're they're, they're, yeah. Their uh, resume kind of speaks for itself. Petrico has still yet to show that at global events, as good as they've been in China, haven't been able to show up globally. Now this might just be their time to shine. I mean, Ike's left is a superstar. Oh, oh, sharp shot. Oh, no. Getting close to Corexi, but the shots don't come through. And now, Corexi, you're in a little bit of trouble. Is the rest of phase already in vehicles on the way over? Yes, they are. SSG a little bit further but they also look like they are heading over in this direction as well. This is awkward because neither of these two guys can now get to their vehicles. I think yeah. they're both parked facing the other person's building. So yep. it's like, I don't want to be here anymore. Guys, come over. I need a pickup. And I think that's exactly why Gustav is getting in now. But he's approaching at the exact angle that Sharp has an angle from. This is dangerous driving, Ooh. Gustav. You get to stay alive. But that, I feel like, was unnecessarily dangerous. Yes, I get that he might want to like, bait the angle. Okay, but they're fully committing to this. They sure as heck are. Yeah, phase. <laughs> Effects very low as well as Pixel's trying to defend his teammate Sharpshot. I feel like that M249 might be the thing that is keeping him alive right now. He has done so much work from him, but now the rest of the boys have arrived. You can see James off in the distance. He's trying to make his way over here as well. So both teams fully committing to this fight in the final game of the day as Sharpshot will find Gustav. I don't like this at all. Finally, now that they do get Sharp shut down. That is the only real close threat, but I feel like damage has already been done. That That's ghost stuff down. I was just going to say this screams third party opportunity. They don't have the exact info of the whereabouts of the remaining Space Station gaming players. And honestly, I mean, the approach from Gustav on that one, there's literally only one spot from where Sharp can peek Gustav without Corexi being able to help out. And that is on the side of that balcony. So coming in from that angle when they have the entirety of Milford to wrap in from, I feel like that's, again, it's, it's it, on the grand scheme of things, I wouldn't, like, what do you say, like, go too hard down on these sort of things. But sure. we're at the Global Championship Finals. This is where microscopic mistakes are being punished. And I feel like that could have been one of them right there. 
Well, at the end of the day, it's a one-for-one -one trade, but now Space Station, they've got T5 on their south side. Rossidit gets knocked very low, and that could be the thing that saves SSG as the rest of Theraton 5 will pull away. Pat him oh, oh, oh. oh. He'll get 67 damage Take those. Uh, for his troubles as the T5 back on the move and trying to find a new place to play. Oh, that's the rest of the world would convert. It's 0 0.7 fantasy points. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There you go. That's a completely normal thing to <laughs> that's, think. That's how we math damage <laughs> in this world. That is how we math damage. Theraton 5 still, you can see here, driving around Ross. It's probably going to look for a new oh. helmet as James able to spot Xiao Yang on the rotation. And again, that's once more Tai Lu taking casualties in the early game. And once more, it's Xiao Yang that's on the receiving end of that damage. I like the fact that Tai Lu was taking their time, but of course, with the whole face and uh, space station fight, they would have seen it in the kill feed. They know where both teams loot, especially Tai Lu is aware of aware where space Should station be aware, is, because yeah. they have that same loot spot. And still, they uh, kind of force a rotation in, which I feel like it's maybe a little, a little too dangerous, knowing that they would have slowed down because the fight that had just happened. Especially by himself, right? I exactly. mean, you got the rest exactly. of the team. They're, they were still on Millie. I exactly. mean, that's uh, it's small things. That's maybe uh, being a little bit too aggressive on the part of Xiao Yang. Well, Tai Lu pays the price. They're going to play with three going forward here. So we check back in with 17. Very close to Cerberus over here near Death Road. Now, Cerberus has men to the east and men to the south of 17 right now, but no shots coming out just yet. So playing it close to the vest for the time being. I would be surprised if either of the two seems pretty fancy a fight here, mainly because, again, so third-party a bull. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, you're yeah. just asking to get shot in the back if you start fighting here in the early game. So I assume that if they do spot one another, then fall back, make space for the opponents. And here you see Xiaoyan again just slowly creeping on up. But again, I feel like, I mean, yes, he dies, and that is a mistake in and of itself, but avoidable death, especially that you've just seen facing the, in the kill feed. James with the Ace 32, making that thing do work. Okay, mm -hmm. that, uh, that feels unintentional. Correct, so you're going to take another knock here to Snakers, but fortunately enough for him, is able to get back into hard cover and get revived and back on his feet once again as Snakers just Taking out tires in his anger, Toby. You know what? I mean, doing that, but also causing a lot of issues for face should the circle go anywhere but where they currently are. In the meantime, now Pentacle oh, on the hunt here, but it's a full-on vehicle fight going through, and so far knocks from both sides. Petricor rode once again in the vehicle fight. Now, they did wipe Space Station on Vikendi by doing this. They're going to find one. Heaven just gets out of the vehicle. Glaz going to find me. What? Glaz going to find Ike's left, and Petricor rode after getting a much-needed victory in the last game, now finds themselves in danger of going out in 16th place. We talk about teams being rewarded for early game shenaniganry and chaos. Well, there they are once more. Veronica 7, whenever it seems like they're about to fall apart, they turn around to make plays like this. Solid wrap of three points there. Yes, they lose players, but they stay up. And now, again, I mean, of course, face, they are aware of Space Station split. And they know there's a solo set upstairs. Indeed they do. Roth holding the line here. While the rest of the boys, they tried to hold that 2-1 split after losing sharp shot. Roth going to take that high ground, try to oh. avoid <laughs> the flames and the fire and the fury. Oh, as, no. oh no, Paige was trying to go and provide support. Yep. And Hisaki, we talked about Cerberus being right there on death road. Roth will find Jeems, but Corexi going to be in the right place at the right time. Now FaZe, despite taking about five, six knocks at this point, find themselves with three kills. Yeah, and three alive as well again. I mean, the first one, unfortunate, but still able to uh, get through with a nice trade there, realizing very quickly that it was the double uh, double barrel shotgun. Once you hear the boom, boom, you just instantly peek because you know you have at least the weapon swap to get free damage in. And uh, very luckily for them, uh, Paige gets found in the open. You see Snake is there, nice tracing. Like just following his movement, been able to take him out. And then, speaking of following movement, <laughs> Wild Wild West. Seat swapping. It's great. It is great. <laughs> well, Petricor Road, uh, they, we remember the result from that. They were down to just one, but it looks like Chewy 71 still alive. So Perro still in this, not out in 16th place just yet. Aizaki going to take a little bit of damage as Sonic's starting to creep back into that western side of Potato Hill, which we've seen them play many times before. 17 already looking over in that direction, though. They are expecting 
an inevitable flank from their uh, their their backsides here. They've got to make sure they know Cerberus is ahead of them on the east. They just got to clear their west. I feel like a lumber yard ending is long overdue you think? in this tournament. I like. It. I mean, those those kind of open hillside fights where you really get to see the individual mechanical skill come to fruition. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love big rotations and all that, but seeing teams try and play close quarters in areas with yeah. not a lot of cover to work with, but everyone on foot and no one in hard cover that can just defend their way through. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. So take those. <laughs> I guess. Uh, now we just have to swing towards the northeast, and I'm very satisfied. There you go. Just call it a blessing here. Is LG <laughs> inside logging camp already now? T5 in prison already making their way down south. Server is going to leave Death Road. They're going to send it down south, but they're going to find FaZe and well, what's left of FaZe, and then New Happy over by Farm, and Tai Lu also making rotations right in front of them. So, so far, so good for Cerberus, but it is about to get, I mean, look at that mini-map, Toby. Yep. That is that is. Danger. With a shift coming this hard down towards the southeast, everyone knows there's free real free. estate available. But that real estate is only going to be available for the next 20 seconds time. Everyone is wrapping in. As you said, Gen G with Danawa right behind him. You have Face Clan full speed forward into the city. They go now as well, right behind uh, Tai Lu, who just managed to group up. Speaking Ooh. of Tai Lu, one knock comes in, but again, it's compound to compound, so probably not going to be any flushes to follow. Well, I don't think it's going to matter because LZ is by oh, himself. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. I misread that completely. Two one split there from Tai Lu, and that might be them now down to two players as FaZe Clan. It looked like they might have been sending it to that same compound that Cerberus was looking at, and yeah. they end up going into the western, uh, the western side of Milta, so that'll be safe for them for right now, but we got to see where it's going to leave them uh, in the next, in the upcoming circles here is Flood. Ooh, we've seen him. He was on earlier, about as on as you've ever seen a player in uh, Ontago. So he is feeling himself right now. We got to be careful. Here comes Veronica Seven. We know they, they like. Come. We know they like the e pickups. Will Still. they be rewarded though, or will they be shut out of the sky? We're just seconds away from finding out. You could only imagine oh that they're going Milta. That's the only place where they go. Their space now. As I say that though, they're already out in the sky, going straight down towards and maybe. Potentially could punish this luminosity split. It's a possibility. Mime and Snakers already looking over in that direction. The shots coming through from Snakers will at least turn their parachutes off to the north, so that it's going to push them a little bit closer to Twisted Minds. Snakers has seen them hit the ground. That's but dangerous. They lose the angle. Is LZQQ? Oh no! The Tom Mu came over here to res his fallen teammate, and Shen got shot out of the vehicle. So you you, you save one, and you end up losing the other. In the end, it's a wash here for Tyloo. Yeah, it's He's not like, good wait, for He lost them. him too. He's like, wait, where are you? It was kind of a weird rotation too, because I mean, the previous one I would say, because you actually saw LZQQ leave that position to go over and regroup with the teammates, but he timed that right with face driving around. And it was like, you know what? I cannot be part of this uh, kind of yeah. half rotation. I cannot cut across it. I just got to wait it out. And by waiting it out, as you said, they end up losing a player because of it. Yeah, just get picked apart here. Now down to two, but they've got hard cover. They've got a compound. Yeah. We'll yeah. see what the circle uh, gods decide to favor them. Checked in with 17. They are on that southern coast still. Uh, pretty clear and free. Gen G, meanwhile, P.O., Working his way up north here, he's right on the doorstep of T5, and in particular, Hatsawat. Yeah, I mean, you, I know I said Lumbaya, but maybe New Milta in they could also be kind of interesting. That could be fun, and too. New, new Milta, we haven't really gotten to showcase it too much here at PGC, so who yeah. knows? Who knows? Maybe we get a little a little city ending down towards the south. We are just about 15 seconds, I think, left from finding out there's plenty enough water in that should there be water in the next circle, we can pretty much guarantee where Phase 4 will take us. Oh, man, Peel with his Groza. Mm -hmm. Now, the, you, you see he's got Esther that's kind of creeping up there, and I think they were maybe looking to see if they could bait one of the T5. Okay. What? Really? <laughs> that is well, you want new Milta? Let's get I, it. This is as Milta as can be. And you know what? We always look at those field endings east of Milta. That is way more playable now. I don't we don't like it we is. don't get a big drone shot of the CD proper, but there's way more trees, there's way more riches, there's way more cover to utilize. So even if you don't get into the city proper, you can still play more easily in and around the open. That is once the hill shifts out. So hopefully we're going straight north on this one. We should go straight north. And there we all get to see what new Milta can do for us in an end game. Here we go. You see the city right there. Look at that. So 17 tries to send it on the beach. They oh, find a compound oh, oh, oh. free and clear. Tiamba, meanwhile, they try to come in from the air. They will lose ZYY. They almost lose Lin Xu as FaZe now gets up to five kills. And now Lin Xu 
all by himself in a compound was LG spying that. Did they see him fall by himself there, crashing have, right have. on top of him? And the damage is coming through. Lin Shu, can you hold the line? He's going to find no nobody. Oh, Loki able to find Mime at a distance, though. So some damage done. He's knocked outside as well. This uh, Dano, a kind of shoreline position to the southeast. Again, they're trying to eye an opportunity to wrap for the west. Another they know the next is going to go. And now B7 again with e pickups. The paratroopers of PGC. <laughs> V7, they lose another one for their trouble. But they do manage to keep one alive. I believe it's Tosi. Yep. Or no, Glaz, rather. There you go. Glaz has a spot he can at least hide out in these buildings and play for late game because look at the mini map around him. Mm -hmm. He has got all types of protection, Toby. Sure does. Sure does. And again, just to mention it, I mean, this new Milta where LG current is, that was a big open field in the past. And now there's cover where previously there was none. Okay. Well, LG did manage to get their knock revived, so they're back up to four strong. Dead center in the fields around Milta. Sonics, meanwhile, still playing from that south side. Nobody really any farther south of them as we get to see what happened to V7 here. Spiro, actually, it's going to be wow. Cuban then. Yeah, can't take some down. Good stuff there. And, uh, yep, Sonics have the south side. Twisted Minds holding the logging camp still. So there are northernmost team. And then on the west side in farm, New Happy. Still four strong. Everybody else, though, pretty much inside Milta. I mean, go back to what I was saying about them when they played into Dino Land and McKenzie just two games oh, ago. No. They want to play with the blue on their back. They don't want to have people backstab them, but they also know they got to clear this position. Two guys pushing in. I saw a shotgun, and I think Lou, are they ready for this one, though? Chewie is holding the angle. Oh, my God. They're so <laughs> sneaky. Oh, that was such... that 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 is just brilliant stuff from Twisted Minds. Yeah. I mean, that is so damn disciplined to make sure that they don't lose one for free to Chewie, but it might not matter. Okay, Spiro, head on a swivel. Good snap stuff from him. Again, I mean, this is just Twisted Minds in a nutshell, never taking any chances when they don't have to. They know this next circle is going to swing north. There it now is. Now they're set inside, and you know what? There might just be a blessing in circles are continuing oh, to go north towards him, but Pio is alone, and he should not be allowed to get this close to Twisted Minds without paying for it. And... Ooh. Oh, he's dead. There's no way. He's got a Groza. There's he could no make way. things work. He lays the smoke down. The grenades are coming <laughs> in, but he's already <laughs> dipped on out. There you go. Perfectix will finish him off as, well, Pio doing Pio yeah. things ends up biting him in the butt once again. It's... He heard the shots in the compound. Maybe he thought they all were in the compound. Possibly, he get it off yeah. angle in time, but little did he know it was only two players there and they were split wide. The issue is Twisted Minds. I mean, they're just, they, they are literally just the team that somehow magnetizes snakes towards them. We saw it on uh, Tego in the winner's bracket on the last chance, I should say. And now they're finding themselves with Pixel alone, too. Yep, Sonics, they make their way into the city as well. As you see a lot of shots being traded back and forth, but. I mean, this is just hard city ending, mm -hmm. Toby. For now. Uh, for now. For now. Now, we do have New Happy on the West that need to make their way in. Theraton 5 trying to send it in, but they've got Donawa very wide split and kind of protecting that yeah. eastern side, and they are going to find themselves losing Rossited. Will Esther find a knock here as well? No, just shy. They got to find the damage, though. They got to find the final kills. There's still, still two players alive. Hatsawat is coming in here as well. Pixel back. He finds two from Twisted oh, Minds. No. That's elsewhere on the map. We'll go back to that in just a second as Anonix now try to push on in. Thanadol proned on down. Double headshot connected. Big stuff from Thanadol here as T5 are taking a lot of damage. He's the last player up Flush. as Hatsawat will find his way into his compound. Soul trying to find the grenade placement, but it's just not happening. As now, Cell, it's, uh, they've got to, they've got to collapse on this, don't they? They can't leave this it's, guy alive. It's just such an awkward angle. You have Tayamba looking. You have Genji now looking as well. They can't do anything about it. And as I said before, the damage up towards the north that is twisted, split to two. Not at all expecting Pixel to come creeping in from behind, finding a double. Oh, and now with okay. space to play, but so lops the nade on over, and finally Danawa rewarded for those kills. And credit due to Soul, fantastic play, but this is what I've been keeping my eye on yeah. here on the map stream. Pixel managed to find two knocks, got another knock onto Lou, 
and now is uh, finishing off his kills there. Lou and Spiro getting the information fed over to them from Batulans probably that this That's is just a solo player. Yeah. But man, Pixel is dangerous right now. And yet Twisted Mind is just going to let him on to his own devices. There's nothing you can do about it. I think the fact that he didn't flush Batulans earlier was, wait, maybe he left. Maybe he, he went somewhere yeah. else. Maybe I can still go out and do something. But I think also for Pixel, once he hears those car come th cars come forward, get the flush. Secure the kill, force them away. Maybe again, 100%. if this circle swings north, there might just be placement points for you to grab. All right, let's see where it goes. And it is going to favor off to the north here a little bit. Now, Gen G, they've got some decision making to do as they've got to figure out where they want to play. 17 already have a spot inside the zone. Now, Lil Ghost has been knocked, and they've got to try to get over to him. But uh, again, most of the city still in Gen G, Donawa, really the only ones that have to find somewhere to play. Found the first one with three X A oh spray from K. Wow, Pixel just, I mean, again, absolutely phenomenal player. Not usually the one you see with the highest kill numbers on Space Station because the team doesn't really utilize him in a, like, you know, a spearhead fracking way. But when, the it's, kid is uh, when it's his time to shine, he will do so. Okay, day trade. Getting the camera time right now, and that's giving the fans something to cheer about as they have pretty much complete control over the southwestern <laughs> side of this circle right now is LZ going to get spotted out from range. Now LZ and Etong Mu still alive for Tai Lu, but they are outside of zone in that little compound here. They've got to find a way someplace to, to kind of make their way inside this zone. I mean, you think that coming into Grand Finals, all these teams are a little nervous, the jitters are there, but I'm telling you, everyone is dialed in today. Headshots pretty they much sure non-stop at any distance. Norrens caught LC mid-air there, able to get a good one in, and I'm loving the fact that they're setting up Pushils on the other side here. They're waiting for Tai Lu to make a play. They already have a guy safe inside the circle. They just have to clear their side of the circle first. So if they can deal with Tai Lu um, altogether, that will be, I mean, now they trade with plenty of space to maneuver. We'll see if Ty Lu can get across here. We'll see if Gen G can find mm -hmm. somewhere to play. They've sent three in the vehicle. Donawa doing the exact same thing at the exact same time, and they are getting lit up here. Gen G will find just the smallest of ridge lines to play here. They've got a crate. They've got a vehicle. <laughs> That's all they need. They feel comfy. There's no way they saw the crate. It was like, ooh, cover in the open. Let's go. <laughs> we got one US boy. Oh, Pixel. In the meantime, oh! Pixel with the triple coming through. Danawa did not see him at all. And down they go. Hold your hand up high, Pixel. You just earned your team five, four more points. SSG goes out in 13th, but not before a highlight real play from their fragger. Holy moly. They were down instantly. That was like nonstop headshots all the way from start to finish. Filthy, filthy stuff from Pixel. And now Genji has... Actually, oh. that, that actually does a lot of good for Gen.G as oh, well. Time, now, Pixel time. does go down, but Gen.G now have this whole spot over here on the northern, uh, the northeastern side of the zone that they can play with. Don't have to worry about Donawa on their uh, up, uphill from them. Now, Twisted Minds still have a duo, mm -hmm. uh, but those, those guys most likely aren't going to go anywhere anytime soon, I wouldn't think. We're in a case right now where everyone is waiting six seconds to see yep. the next circle pop. Everyone right now are sat very comfortably. Some more than others, sure, but sometimes you just get that shift. Okay. Right now, that is into the city. 17 crossing the street instantly when they see the new circle pop. I mean, they were leaving before that thing even popped, and they managed to get everybody across. But Tickleton will get the knock on Xiao Bay. The follow-up grenades coming through. Won't find the flush. Actually, Gla is going to be the one that gets them. As somehow, Veronica 7 right on top of him. The double blue will finish off Little Ghost as well. And Xiao Wu, the last one alive for 17. But he can probably make it pretty late here. LG, meanwhile, they take a fight Ooh. with Gen G in the middle of the open field. Snakers down, Flood down, Mine down, Rello, the last one alive. The grenade, will it find its home? It does, but DG98 has the happy feet. Second one comes over, though. The flush will be found. You can see Rello is running around and picking up nades from his knock teammates doesn't have time to rest he knows he has them right up over on the other side in those smokes he just got to find the perfect nade if dg falls here that is reses up to at least snakers oh they're they're falling so far behind but dg 98 he's got that p90 he's got the happy feet rello's gonna get spotted out by pow pow and now dg 98 knows he is free and clear but well I don't know how free and clear you are. You're in the middle of no man's land, and you are a long way from the new zone as New Happy will finish off Ty Lu 
What does they trade do off of this though? They know there's knock plays in the sub you see. Look at this yeah, again. Look at the oh. amount of damage coming through. And he's still Dirty. he still look at had Roth, he he, even knows. He still had 17 bullets in the chamber. That was a half max spray, found three kills, wouldn't have it any other way. Great work on the part of Pixel. As now FaZe slowly moving their way in the city. They are pretty clear up to the north. They know yep. that they've yep. got DG98 trapped in the fields. But they are already looking towards the next compound as they work a little bit closer towards center circle. New Happy, meanwhile, they've cleared up Tai Lu, but they've got nowhere really to play here as Day Trade has them spotted. Yeah, well, how does New Happy wrap into this? As soon as you, you, essentially, as soon as you're inside the circle, you're exposed to the entire city. And as long as they're not fighting up close, since they're all now inside the next circle, you can be pretty sure that as soon as you creep just those 10 meters further forward, there's at least got to be like five, six people looking your way. Trying to slow play it with three as DG98. Well, it's going to bounce between, what are those, pineapple bushes? I don't know. Pineapples grow on trees, don't they? I don't know what grows in bushes like that that look like pineapples. We'll call it hay. They used to be hay bales, so we'll call them hay bales. Corexi's got him pretty much pinned down, though. And uh, if it's not Corexi, well, you got Tiamba, Pow Pow, and 77 also have an angle on this. DG98 tries to dodge, but nope. Oh, 77. Going to steal it away from FaZe, and now Day Trade taking the action right to the jaw of New Happy. So smart, so smart plays coming through here from Day Trade, especially now that they know they have to make this play. There are two men pushing up and over, but they have Belmont and Flash on the off angle trying to fend off. They find the two confirmed, but they still have one more to deal with. Doesn't matter, Vex is there to claim it, and more space now being made from Day Trade Gaming. Really smart plays coming through, leaving two behind in the city to kind of play that over the shoulder protector. Did their best to try to clean those kills and get as many points off it as they could. And now they've got a little bit of work to do as they do have two north of the road. You saw Pushu's and Nurin's making that push into New Happy. Yeah. And they've got Flash and Belmoth on the south side of the road. But Cerberus is looking over there. Sonics is looking over there. It's going to be really rough sledding here for the next zone here for day trade. This is where you're hoping for Nock to make some sort of entry off of. It. But as you can see, the way that Cerberus is currently playing this, they're not allowing that to happen. They're holding angles, they're waiting rather than aggressively peeking out because they too know that Got one vehicles, of us gets though. knocked. That's a pull up coming through. And oh. Tycon peeking, actually, regardless. Peeks on out, finds Belmuth. The rest you'd imagine, though, is going to be committed to us. I say that, though. Puchil Sonorans are pushing on forward. They find themselves right on the wall. That could be a good... Oh, nope, that's not going to be a good bounce. Instead, it falls out harmlessly into the street, but Pushu's does get spotted out by High Mass as Solozzi and the rest of the Cerberus boys trying to hold the line here. They will get a knock on both of the men that have made it over to the side of the street. Now Flash and Nurens will both be dismantled as well. Day trade going out in seventh place. Contest Cerberus up close, that usually spells disaster, and this time it's no different. And here we go, full Milta proper ending. Again, keep in mind, face loss goes stuff very early on in this match. They're gonna be playing this one as three. The rest of them as three or less as well. Nope. So we'll Nobody see. Nobody full strength. Nope, no one at all. Just caught my eye now. I thought there was actually gonna be a couple of teams with four, but not quite the case. Everyone is three or fewer. And we've got two snakes, but fortunately both of those snakes are right next to each other. <laughs> and of course, Toby, they're both orange, yep. so it made me think that they were on the same team at the same time. But we've got Glaz up from Veronica 7. you got Shawood still up from 17. They are on the south side of this circle uh, towards the middle, not really getting any close to anybody. But this is uh, most likely going to be slow played out, you have to imagine. Here. And it's again V7 able to salvage points here. It's Indeed. a game where they come flying on in first up in the hillsides, almost dying because of it. Then full the speed eating man. into Milta and now gets to keep one alive as we see the highlights there from the previous fight. Oh class. no! Peaks on out, says welcome, welcome, Pow Pow. I got a shotgun and I'll take you down. Oh my god, I was scared for <laughs> Pow Pow right there. As he was looking out in the distance, saw FaZe and tried to go immediately into the corner. He just saw a man with a shotgun staring right at him. As now Shawu will take out 77. And now Solozzi finding a knock on a Sonics. That might open the door for Cerberus to make a push into Sonics. Sure could. And they know they have to make the play now if they don't want to get third party on the other side. It's a fight for this warehouse. And Tycon with the DBS up close. Big grenade from H-Wing. Could do some damage. H-Wing. Is he? 
Is he trapped? No, he's going to find the knock on a Solozzi, though. H-Win basically holding Cerberus at bay by himself while Shrimzy went for the res on a Tiggleton. Shaowu will find a re-knock on a Shrimzy, but Shrimzy's going to find Tycon, and now it's a 1v1. H-Win versus the last player up for Cerberus. Such a nice angle from Shrimzy up on the second floor. Unfortunately, he got mollied after the knock, so he is going to be taken down. Himas now trying to get Tycon back on his feet. Will they allow it on the side of Sonic? though? Himas trying to go for the first one. It's going to be Tycon reward with the kill, though. Got the DBS. And H Win still trying to hold that high sight line. Will spot out High Mass. Do they know? He's not peeking it though. Oh, he's got to spot him. Oh, wow, oh, oh. High Mass wins the 1v1 with the headshot. To expect that angle too. There are so many areas from where they could be peeking. That one arguably being the least expected and still able to double headshot him. Such insane awareness from Tycon and Himes. Beautiful play coming out from Cerberus as they keep two alive. And all just like that, it's three up for FaZe. They are in a beautiful position here to try to secure a higher leaderboard. So can they even get first place? Veronica 7, Glass still alive. Mm -hmm. Still in this. Five, Five kills. kills. Somehow, I don't know <laughs> how Veronica 7 keeps getting away with this, Toby. They keep, that's twice in this game yeah. that they tried to send it dead center using E pickups. They lose all their players except for one, and he's collecting points like left and right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unfortunately, oh. his head is now <laughs> broke as Corexi tore his helmet off, tore his brains out. And that's going to be Veronica 7 down in third. But again, did what they had to salvage way more than what anyone would have expected. Absolutely. Well, the crowd liked that, Bolty. Let's see if they like this end game as the circle is, the. I think, the dot going to fall right in front right of FaZe yep. as Cerberus trying to go for a little bit of a reposition here. I'm not sure what utility they've got left, but it looks like Tycon, they are still holding on to the DBS. They want this up close and personal fight. I was just going to say, I know that they only get 30% on this one, but I think the DPS is not really being accounted for now. I'm seeing though James has one as well. So the they gun might just be put to full use here. They're trying to nade on over again. Cerberus, this is the first time they come into this area of the map. They have literally got no idea of where FaZe is currently positioned. They've been playing the western side, holding west for the whole time. So have to check every single possible oh. corner. But now Correct, he's been seen. They've spotted him out. High mass will do a little bit of damage there and force so the open. bolter to back down just a little bit. Jeems, though, grenade in hand. Oh. That might be on time. It is. Fex actually going to be the one that gets it, and that's going to be the signal to go. Jeems with DBS in hand <laughs> doesn't even need it. Fex will follow it up with a grenade, and that's a win for FaZe. Insane finish on that one as the fans rejoice. I think I saw Fex with over 1,000 damage at the end of that game, too. So, yes, they loot mills, so yes, they're around, but they came off to a shaky start, and still, while the city was being hectic and fought in, they came out on top. Flex on them, old man. You know you've been around the block a few times, but you still have the goods. You still got the ability to win these tight games. And FaZe Clan, I don't know if it's going to be enough to put them in first, Toby, but they're right there. It's for sure a good way to finish off day one. FaZe usually the team that comes climbing up at the end of tournaments here, off to a solid beginning of the grand finals. Love to see it. Let's throw it over to the analyst desk to wrap up day number one. The last match is done, and a new chicken dinner winner rises to the top. FaZe Clan comes out with the final chicken of the day as we take a look back at the highlights. And what a fantastic urban ending we get right. here. And an insane amount of varied circles, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just super happy that we're able to see some of these like crazy games and also how close it's been. FaZe to be able to set up. Yeah. It is home turf circle for them. They loot Milta. Yep. But to be able to walk out with that amount of kills, that amount of points, that amount of confidence for these guys here, they're playing it super smart. And may I remind you, 
this entire match started with FaZe in a kerfuffle with Sharp Shot in a compound that yep. cost both teams. Like, they somehow still managed to come out of this thing and find themselves a win. I do think part of that was the fact that Milta pulled this crazy circle magnetism. The the, the third circle is just going that, that much water is like, yep. okay, that means we're going to have an urban ending there. Yep. And that, yeah, it was crazy. And it's good. It's a good way to also showcase the new Milta, right? Yes. Because it is way bigger, way like more compact, and that's why you have so many teams that are able to to live next door, next door to each other, and we are going to have these many crashes, Ooh. right? Cerberus try to make a run for it. They got a, a lot of like a lot of amount of kills there, yep. but there are so many solos and so many kind of angles that's going to be held. Nice and to it, see correction in the bolt too. It's because that new Milta there, it's a lot more compressed. You can't fight through. We saw the push by Cerberus, but FaZe absolutely perfectly coordinated the defense there. He did. Multiple grenades right on top yeah, of each oh other. Wow. Absolutely nailed it. Uh, so congratulations to FaZe as they apparently proved they don't have to wait for Sunday to put up those chicken dinners and they're going to come out to a really nice point total at the end of day one. Welcome back to the desk for the last time. My name's Toppies. I'm joined here by Avenger. One day done. A third yep. of the road is traveled. Six games in. Yeah. Out of the 1,000 steps? So no, I'm saying out of the 18 three, games that we're 3, playing 000, here. 300 for the finals. No, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's it's uh, good. But also, with with we don't have one repeat winner, right? We mm. don't have... FaZe could have done it. Yeah. They had a books on Saw home, home circle, but they got destroyed there. But they're able to step up, and that's going to yeah. put them in to a decent amount of points here. But again, as you said here, no repeat winner. No nope. sponging. No, like, of, of course, the points per game mm -hmm. is going to be your thing, right? But, oh, my God, 1,000 damage, Shoo! 120 for fix, and five kills. That's crazy. Well, and again, obviously, Gustav ran into some trouble early on. Uh, Fex, though, the Dragon, has been absolutely unstoppable in this event. His valuations on Fantasy have been right. huge and not overinflated because his performance has been, he's been, it's like, been the there. rock for this team, it yeah. feels like. Um, and not just Dwayne. the only... What? Dwayne? Dwayne. Not Dwayne. I mean, they got their fans got them, you know, some Thai kickboxing shorts, nice, and, yeah, and the rest yeah. of his team was like, "You should see Fex in those shorts." He looks like a monster. He is a monster, but he plays like a monster, and that's what I love about it. He's the man of the match. Well, no sir. argument whatsoever. And the MVP. And our, the, MVP. the desk MVP. Yeah, he's our desk MVP and the man of the match. Five kills, huge damage count. Wow. Let's look at the match leaderboard. Twenty-two points. Cerberus though, finally up and up and pushing with that yeah. twelve. And uh, Veronica Seven. I'm not gonna lie to you. My bingo card for today did not have Veronica Seven Fun Pin as a top three team. They're a fighting team, man. They're, they're number they one. They can hit stuff, and they're number one. Forty. Nine to go there, right? Yeah. A little bit, a little bit of top heaviness hop happening here mm -hmm. with the points per game leaning out a little bit. But V7, yeah, it's good to see. Yep, uh, V7 has been playing well. I don't know, they'd be comfortable with the 101st. These guys are carrying Damn. emergency pickups on emergency pickups as they continue to get to the middle. 17, they had multiple close wins as well as a win. Phase multiple times that they got there. What I love is Twisted and LG's kind of grind to this right. position. Yeah, but also like the Twisted, of course, only nine placement points. They're able to still right. have 32 kills. And and like only five points behind the server yeah. is on 36, but they have 20 placement points, mm -hmm. right? So there, it's the opposite side of the coin. But yeah, overall, insane day. We're going to be starting off with a wrangle. Speaking I'm going to be the opposite. Yeah, looking <laughs> exactly opposite. And so we'll end on Miramar. It's going to be nice, chaotic, a lot of fun. And I'm excited about that. It was a wild day, and perhaps one of the closer scoreboards. I think oh, yeah. maybe. After that last game, seeing the rich get richer, it's not going to be as close as it was going into five. But I'm very impressed with how tight this has been. And I'm super excited to see, like, we're going to have these five, six, seven teams. They're going to be cleaning out things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that could end up continuing. Like, the same, we're not going to see the back to backs. We're not going to see the sponges. But yeah, let's see. Well, you know what we will see is some On Deceit, the official gaming chair partner of PGC, the chair that elevates the gaming experience with ultimate comfort and exceptional performance. Choose On Deceit, choose the seat of victors. We're also sponsored by the King Power Group, leader in the travel retail industry. King Power, the power of possibilities. Logo Pro Esports grade gaming gear made with a unique design. As a world leading gaming brand, MSI stands out as the most trusted brand in gaming and esports. MSI is the official gaming partner of the PUBG Global Championships 2023, providing PC hardware, monitors, and laptops as the designated hardware provider for this event. Taukanoi, live deliciously. And finally, the number one fast and reliable fiber internet true online that keeps you connected when you get the most. Exciting games, wild For day, sure. no repeat winners. If Crazy I, circles. Right, if I had to pick away who were the grand finals yeah. to start, <laughs> this was it. No runaways. No, no runaways, insane circles, curveballs for all the teams. Mm -hmm. 
hard circles and hard games for teams that yeah. are like, okay, this is uh, this is going to be an easy game for us. But nope, then somebody else comes yep. in sweeping, doing extremely well. So yeah, but again, the consistency and the teams that we expect to do well is still in there. So that's kind of what we're going to yes. be looking at, of course. The Danawa, your 17. Big, huge splash in the water for me, though. V7 fun pin. Super impressive. Wild. I did not expect to see them do so well. I'm proud of them. You love to see that. I hope that they can hold on to it tomorrow. It was a crazy day of circles and maps, so we're going to see exactly how tomorrow goes when the teams get back and have a little more rhyme and reason, perhaps, to how these circles play out. Uh, but that said, only 12 games left to play. We're going to be back with day two of PGC 2023. But first, let's check in with Pan as she talks to some of our players. Welcome back to the stage! Woo so, who is the top rank today? Who is the top rank? That is V7! Let's go, Tosi! Hi! Welcome on stage! Hello, Okay, so for the first question, you played through the loser bracket, the last chance, and now day one of the grand finals. There are like over 40 matches, like a lot of it of PUBG. So do you feel you have grown as a team over this tournament? Is a V7 is the loser's bracket, last chance, and the grand final. Grand final is a great point. Grand final is a great point. So for the last chance stage, um, I think I made a lot of mistakes. So what I focus on is to to improve those mistakes, and then I think that would uh, definitely be really helpful to the teams as a development. Wow. Okay. คำถามแรกนะคะได้ถามไปว่าคือต้องบอกว่าเขาเล่นทั้งในรอบลูซิเบรกเกอร์ลาสต์แชนซ์ด้วยเนี่ยแล้วก็วันนี้เนี่ย
from a long ways to Thailand to Bangkok. Wow. And we want uh, we will try our best to the upcoming tournaments. Ah, okay. ค่ะก็ฝากดูแฟนขอบคุณมากๆเนาะบางคนก็คือบินจากที่เกาหลีนะคะมาเชียร์ที่นี่นะคะหรือไม่ก็อาจจะมาจากต่างประเทศก็คือมาเชียร์กันที่นี่เลยที่กรุงเทพนะคะยังไงเขาก็จะทําให้ดีที่สุดนะคะ Thank you very much V7 Chelsea. Bye bye. Thank you. And next, let's meet. Seventy gaming. Xiao <laughs> Didi, hi. Hello, welcome. And the same translator. Wow, you're so talented. Okay, so for the first question is like about you had a bit of slow start through the first game, uh, the first three game, and before claiming the chicken dinner in match four. So did you make any adjustment? 哦，就是你们在前三把上面都没有特别突出的表现，但是在第四把就吃了一把鸡，然后感觉队内里面回到了状态。请问在当中做出了什么样的调整呢？嗯，最主要的还是调整心态吧。心态好，心态好的话，干啥啥都成。I think we fix our mentality during the failure, and then we believe that. If we fix the mentality, we will win the upcoming games. Ah, oh, okay. Then, ค่ะก็ถามเข้าไปนะคะในคำถามแรกนะคะว่าใน3เกมแรกเนี่ยคือค่อนข้างช้าพอสมควรเลยเนาะสำหรับ Seventeen Gaming นะคะแต่ว่าก็ได้มากินไก่ในเกมที่4หรือว่าแมชที่4นั่นเองค่ะก็เลยถามว่ามีการปรับอะไรไหมก็ต้องบอกว่ามีในเรื่องของ mentality นะคะที่เขาได้มีการปรับเนาะในเรื่องของการเล่นเกม mentality ก็เหมือนแบบเป็นสภาวะอารมณ์เป็นสภาวะจิตใจอะไรเงี้ยนะคะที่ได้ปรับขึ้นมาก็เลยทําให้เกมที่4เนี่ยได้กินไก่ขึ้นมาทันทีเลยนะคะ and Last year at the PGC Grand Finals, you ended the day in first. So this year you're off to a similar start. So what can you expect over the next two days? 就在去年 PGC 的时候，十七 Gaming 也是以第一名的成绩结束了第一天的 Grand Finals 嘛？那请问，作为今年，你会对接下来那两天作为呃什么一样的期待呢？我就想说，上次很遗憾。很遗憾拿到了第二，然后这次希望能拿第一。Ah,、uh, we feel a lot of regretful because we missed the championship last year, so we we absolutely not to miss the championship for this year. Wow. Okay. ก็ถามไปนะคะว่าต้องบอกว่าในปีที่แล้วนะคะกับ PGC ในรอบ Grand Finals นะคะก็คือต้องบอกว่าเขาก็ miss ไปหมายถึงว่าไม่ได้คว้าชัยชนะนะคะในปีที่แล้วมานะคะก็เลยอยากจะถามว่าเราเขา expect อะไรเนาะกับ2วันที่อยู่ข้างหน้านี้นะคะเขาบอกว่าเขาจะคว้าแชมป์มาให้ได้ค่ะทุกคนดังนั้นก็ส่งกำลังใจนะคะให้กับ Seventeen Gaming นะคะ anything to say to your fans ถึงมันตัวเองเป็นสู้ชัวร์ด้วยจิ๋วเอ相信我们相信我们 we just wanted to say please believe in us oh okay thank you very much Seventeen Gaming ก็ให้เชื่อในตัวเขานะคะเขาบอกเลยว่าให้เชื่อในตัวเขาวันนี้ต้องขอบคุณมากๆนะคะโอ้โหการแข่งขันของเราสนุกมากๆในวันแรกนะคะกับรอบ Grand Finals ค่ะยังเหลืออีก2วันนะคะที่เราจะได้รู้ผลกันว่าใครจะเป็นแชมป์นะคะแล้วก็ได้คว้าถ้วยรางวัลในการแข่งขันกับ PGC ในปี2023ค่ะส่วนในวันนี้ขอบคุณทุกคนมากๆแล้วพบกันใหม่ในวันพรุ่งนี้นะคะสวัสดีค่ะ
Not enough to run and trust in yourself at the end. 